All right, good morning. Good morning, the City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeals hearing for January 31st is now in session. This hearing is January 31st, 2023. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature regarding virtual hearings. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings through March 2023. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public this may access this hearing recorded. through telephone and video conferencing. The information, the information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as followed. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project, that is those individuals who live closest to the project. <clears throat> if you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes, and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first before they <clears throat> provide their comment. <clears throat> In the interest of time, and to ensure that you will have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Ms. Wewell reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. Okay, roll call. Um, Ms. Wewell. Yeah, you're good. The board yeah, she's she's calling. She's asking for you. Oh yes, I'm here. Roll call. Here. Ms. Better Peraza. Present. Good Madam Chair. Good morning. Mr. Shepherd. Good morning, Madam Chair. Present. Thank you. Mr. Valencia. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm here. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Langham. Good morning. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stembridge. Good morning, Madam Chair of the Board. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. Ms. Weibo? Sorry, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, so the first item we have is the approval of the hearing minutes from December 8, 2022 and December 13, 2022. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Mr. Shepherd? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes, Madam Chair. Excellent. Thank you. So moved. <clears throat> Next, do we have extensions? Yes, we have a few extensions. Um, the first is COA 
Jeffrey Drago is the applicant. Is Mr. Drago here? Yes, how are you? Ms. Wee, well, turn Jeff Drago. Good morning. Can you uh, yeah. explain the reason for your extension? Yes, well, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago from Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. I'm here on behalf of my client, the Neighborhood of Affordable Housing. Um, we are seeking a one-year extension for a project at 141-151 Condor Street in East Boston. This project, just by way of background, is part of a large, uh, larger Article 80 project that was approved back in 2019. Um, due to the pandemic and the need for uh, delays on funding from the Department of Housing and Community Development, um, only part of the project, which is the uh, condo side, not the rental project with a different address, uh, a permit was pulled. So we are seeking the extension for this part of the project. Okay, and when are you seeking an extension until? Um, normally it's a, a, the, the board would agree, so only a one year. Uh, okay, extension. thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? I make a motion. I make a motion to approve the extension for one year. To, okay, from one year from today. From today. Thank you. Second. Uh, second. Okay, thank you. Ms. Barraza. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next extension is BOA 1102209 for 91-105 Fairmount Ave. The applicant is John Fulgini. Is Mr. Fulgini here? Uh, yes. Um, good morning, uh, Ms. Wewell. Attorney John Fulgini. Good ma morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney John Fulgini. Uh, with a business address at 10 Forbes Road uh, in Braintree. Good morning. Good morning. Can you uh, explain the reason for the extension? Sure. Um, this extension is really coming as a result of financing delays. Initially, this project was an Article 80 that was approved for uh, rental housing. Um, due to the uh, recession and where the interest rates are now, it doesn't pencil out as that. So it looks like we may have to go back to the PDA. Or which is not a bad thing, but home ownership rather than um, apartments because it, it just pencils out that way. Uh, so due to that fact, we're requesting one year extension. Great, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? I make a motion to grant the extension. For one year? For one year, I'm sorry, for one year. Okay, uh, may I have a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Chair votes yes. Uh, motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Good luck. Now we have BOA-979536, 346-348 West Broadway. Applicant is George Marancy. Is Mr. Marancy here? Yes, I am. Thank you. Mr. Marancy, can you uh, walk us through the extension? Certainly. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Marancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Uh, this is a first extension request. This matter, uh, which is an appeal associated with the new mixed-use building, contained one commercial unit and three dwelling units, was approved by the board uh, on September 10, 2019. Owing to the tolling period, uh, which ran contingent with the governor's executive order number 42, the actual date of expiration of this decision has extended to February 6, 2023. My client, uh, because this would require knocking down an existing building with both the commercial and residential tenants, did not want to uh, expel anybody from the property, of course, during the COVID pandemic, uh, hence the delay in getting started. He does intend to start the project in uh, this calendar year, however, therefore would request a one-year extension to allow for the project to commence this year. Great, one year from February 6th? Uh, that would be ideal, yes. Okay, may, may I have a motion? 
motion to grant the extension for February 6, 2023. Until the 20, 2024, you mean? Yes, great. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Excellent. Uh, Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we have BOA 833835 for six, General William H. Devine Way. The applicant is Patrick Mahoney. We do have some information on this one. The board has granted three extensions of this relief with the most recent expiring March 1st, 2023. Uh, this is the applicant's fourth request for a one-year extension, um, but we do have a recommendation that the board grants it if appropriate. May I hear from the applicant? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Attorney Patrick Mahoney. I'm representing William Smith at 6 William Divine Way. Uh, we are seeking a one-year extension. The relief expires on March 1st, 2023. Uh, currently, the applicant is a you know owner-operator applicant who operates the auto garage. He's hired Tim Johnson to the architect to take him through and help him with the building permit process. Uh, Mr. Johnson has confirmed to me that all of the items are in ISD. However, the uh, plans examiner that was working on the project has recently been promoted within the administration, so a new one will be scheduled, as well as uh, they're completing the Article 85 demo delay, which is uh, just it's a single story garage in a residential area, so it's not of historical significance. but. Um, you know, it'd be unlikely that the permit would be issued within the next 30 days. And for that reason, we are seeking a one-year extension, although the permit should be issued far before that. Okay, great. Yeah, because that would be your fourth request. So, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? I make a motion to grant the extension for one year. From March 1st, 2023? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Better Peraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Have a good day. Next is BOA 450351 at 1181-1183 Bennington Street, the applicant's Richard Lins. Um, the board has granted four extensions of this relief with the most recent expiring March 25th, 2023. This is now the applicant's fifth request for a one-year extension. We do have a recommendation that the board grant it if we find appropriate to do so. May I hear from Mr. Lins? Yes, good morning. Thank you, Ms. Wewell and Madam Chair, and through to the members. Uh, Richard Lins, on behalf of the applicant, with a business address of 245 Sumner Street, East Boston. Uh, Madam Chair, by way of very brief history for this project, uh, this was an Article 80 project uh, approved by this board and the BPDA back in 2016 uh, that will allow for a, a transit oriented multifamily 44 unit uh, dwelling to be built upon the site. Uh, it will also involve uh, the cleanup of a contaminated site that has been used uh, for many years as a uh, auto repair facility, and it's located uh, precisely between uh, both the Suffolk Downs and Orient Heights T, -T stations. Uh, the reason for the delay and the reason for the request, I should say, is with good cause. Uh, after the approvals, but prior to our acquisition, uh, this project was subject to a seizure by the Department of Justice for the prior owner. Uh, it was my client actually was required to litigate uh, the seizure in order to acquire the premises. Uh, we ultimately prevailed and uh, have acquired the title to the premises. Uh, however, in addition to this project, the Boston Planning and Development Agency uh, has also uh, 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 conducted a taking with respect to a portion of property uh, that my client must also acquire uh, in connection with this development. Uh, my client has completed all of the prerequisites in order to acquire the parcel. Uh, including the relocation of utilities, 
uh, and a number of um, items uh, that were uh, handled through the Public Improvement Commission for the site. Um, so we are uh, ready to pr proceed with respect to the final step in this process, which is to acquire the site from the BPDA uh, and to proceed with construction as soon as practical. Uh, so we are requesting a one-year extension, and we anticipate we should be able to finalize our building permit within that time uh, and proceed with this project. All right, excellent, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? Motion to extend one year until March 5th, 2024. March 25th? Point. Yes, Point. thank you. Uh, may I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Great. Uh, chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck, Mr. Lindsay. Thank you very much. Next, we have BOA 1050291 for 32 Orleans Street. Uh, the applicant is Richard Lins. Uh, the board originally granted this relief on March 10th, 2021. So the relief is valid until March 10th, 2023. This is the applicant's first request for an extension. Uh, we have a recommendation to grant it if we find appropriate. Thank you again, Ms. Wewell. Um, for the chair, uh, Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, on um, behalf of the applicant. Uh, as uh, Ms. Wewell indicated, this is our first request for extension. Uh, this project involves the uh, construction of a new six unit multifamily dwelling just outside of Maverick Square. Uh, our client has completed all filings with inspectional services for the building permit. The only uh, remaining item involves uh, conservation commission because this is located within a flood zone. So we are finalizing the uh, conservation uh, issues um, uh, as we speak. We anticipate this should be resolved uh, within the next few months. However, we think it's best to ask for one year extension and respectfully request it. Thank you. May I have a motion? I make a motion to grant for grant the extension for one year. Until March 10, 2024? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Better, uh, Ms. Betterbraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Oh, yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stanbridge. Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have uh, BOA 11. 30385, 33 to 35 Maverick Square. The applicant is uh, Richard Lins. Is Mr. Lins here? Yes, thank you again, Ms. Wewell. Uh, yeah. Madam Chair, good morning. Uh, for the record, Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, uh, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, this is our first request. This involves the um, uh, renovation of an existing uh, building, uh, mixed use, ground level retail with residential. Uh, it actually involved uh, the change in the occupancy to add an additional dwelling unit. Uh, the uh, applicant is in the process of finalizing the uh, permits for this. Uh, and we anticipate to have this completed uh, relatively soon. So requesting a one year extension. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to extend relief till February 26, 2024. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Bedapraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck. Next, we have BOA 1085883, 197 Chelsea Street with Mr. Lins. Thank you again uh, for the record, Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is our first request with respect to 197 Chelsea Street. Uh, this involves the complete renovation of an existing mixed use building uh, with an addition. 
Uh, our client is in the process of finalizing a BPD design review, which is a proviso with this board, uh, and expects to have that completed uh, within the next uh, three to four months. Uh, upon completion of that, we'll pull the permit immediately and proceed. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? I'll make, uh, I'll make a motion to approve for, uh, an extension for one year from February 26, 2023. Until 2024, you mean? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Ben Barraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. All right. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have BOA 967-386 for 95-101 Queensbury Street. Um, the applicant is Jessica Camano. Is Ms. Camano here? I believe I saw her on here. You want to I will stand here. Yep, one second. Okay, she's been unmuted. Thank you. Great. Hello there, Madam Chair, members of the board. Are you able to hear me? I don't see an option to turn on my video. Yes, we can I'll, hear you. I'll make you a panelist, Jessica. One second. It'll unmute you for a second, but then you can unmute yourself once you're a panelist. Thanks. Katie, do you want to read the yes. portion um, about the tolling and uh, litigation? Yes. Yep, we have a little bit of information on this one. The board previously determined that the relief is valid until February 6, 2023, including all COVID tolling. However, the board was not made aware of prior litigation in this matter. That litigation was pending for 680 days, so the relief is tolled for that time period. Including litigation to tolling, this relief remains valid until September 12, 2023. Um, the applicant is now requesting a one-year extension to expire September 12, 2024. Thank you. Jessica? Sure. I mean, absolutely. Yes. Madam Board Members of the Chair, my name is Jessica Camano. I have a business address of 400 Atlantic Avenue, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm here today to explain our request for a one-year extension until September 12, 2024. So as some background on this project, um, it proposes a building with approximately 75 residential units, some associated amenities and underground parking. It was originally approved by the board in conjunction with a companion project that's located right across Kilmarnock Street. Um, for ease of reference, I'll refer to this project as the West Site Project and that uh, companion project as the East Site Project. So that East Site Project is currently under construction and is anticipated to be completed in late summer of 2024. We're here today making this request for an extension um, because there's a number of relationships between those two projects that makes commencing construction on the west site while the east site is under construction quite difficult. So currently, while the east site is under construction, there is a good amount of construction staging and logistics that are taking place on the west site to allow for the most efficient construction of the east site project. Um, additionally, there was a not-for-profit not tenant that was operating out of the East Site project that at the request of the BPDA, when going through Article 80, the appellant has rehomed to the West Site project while the East Site is under construction. The intention is to keep that tenant at the West Site project throughout construction of the East Site so as to minimize any disruption in their operation. And then once the East Site project is completed, that tenant will be moved back to the East Site project. Um, finally, the appellant has had some difficulty finalizing design um, and construction plans for the West site in light of lingering effects of COVID on the real estate industry and most recently, um, you know, very high construction costs and financing issues with higher interest rates. So in light of all of this, we are requesting today that the board requests that the board grant an extension of that September 12th, 2023 date out to September 12th, 2024, at which point we think the appellant will be in very good shape to have started construction on this West site project in light of the East site project being completed ideally in late summer of 2024. Happy to answer any other questions you have and thank you so much for your time. Of course, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? Motion. And make a motion to grant the extension for one year, September 2024. Thank you. May I have a second? 
Second. Thank you. Ms. Bettebraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? No. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Sembridge? Yes. V Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. And next we have uh, BOA 1093724 for 85 Regent Street. The applicant is Thomas Miller. Is Mr. Miller here? I am. Good morning, Madam Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Tom Miller from McDermott, Colty & Miller with a business address at 28 State Street in Boston on behalf of uh, John Cochran, the homeowner and uh, resident of 85 Regent Street. Can you uh, explain the need for the extension? I can. Um, as you're aware, the board granted uh, the relief for this project during the height of the pandemic um, to complete the repairs started and the renovations begun on his home. Um, this is our first request for an extension from that time period. Uh, since the um, grant of relief, Mr. Cochran has been working to overcome the issues related to the pandemic, um, both in um, locating financing um, and locating a, uh, a quality contractor to complete the work, which is one of the reasons we were originally here, is uh, not locating a, a uh, not originally employing a um, reputable contractor. So we're here today to ask for an extension so he can complete the work uh, and finalize his financing. Uh, he is close to uh, being able to move forward with this project, and because of that, we are um, requesting a, an extension uh, of the relief for one year. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve for uh, one year until January 29, 2024. Can we give them until the 31st? So it's a, oh, a oh sorry. Yes. Uh, may I have a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Bedbraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Vote. Uh, Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. So we have, just read these together. Yeah. Okay. So BOA 941393, BOA 94. 1394 25 and 27 Garris Street. Uh, the applicant is Nicholas Zazula. Is Mr. Zazula here? Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, Miss Wewell. Good job on the pronunciation. I'm sure it's oh. not easy. <laughs> uh, attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Colty, and Miller, uh, 28 State Street in Boston, here on behalf of uh, Jerry and Francie McGath, who are the new owners of 27 Garris Street in Brighton. Right. Um, Can you explain the need for the extension? Absolutely, Madam Chair, yes. So uh, Jerry and Francie, they live uh, at 4 Garris Street, so they actually live on the same street as this project. It's a, a new single-family home. Um, they recently purchased the property and the project um, on the street from the original homeowner who went through the process with the zoning board. And so they're requesting a one-year extension of the zoning relief uh, in order to finalize the building permit with ISD. Uh, to construct a single family home. Uh, this is the first zoning extension request uh, for the project. Um, they do have all other permits and approvals in place, Madam Chair, including BPDA design review stamped plans uh, as required under the zoning decision. So they're ready and uh, willing and able to perform on the approvals. Um, they just need the extension in order to go ahead and, um, and file uh, with ISD, um, which you. You know, may take 30 days for the building permit. Sorry, Madam Chair, go ahead. That's okay. Uh, are you looking for a new extension just until October of this year or the one full one year? Uh, it, uh, until October 3rd, 2023 would be more than would be more than enough. I mean, uh, Mr. Great. McGath, I think, is ready to go down as soon as possible to file for the building permit. So we should not Excellent. be longer than that. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion? Well, should we grant the extension until October 23rd of this year? October 3rd, 2023. May I have a second? I'll second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Bettebraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? 
Thanks. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Thank you. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. the extensions, we can now move on to board final arbiter. Uh, we have BOA 1295572 for 72 High Street. The applicant is Ryan and Tiffany Gavin. Hello, Madam Chair and board. Thanks for your time. I'm Ryan Gavin, the homeowner at 72 High. Um, our architect highlighted and read some changes and we've submitted those. There's kind of two pieces. One, there's some small points because we went through the BPDA design review on the roof deck, so that moved around a little bit. That's what's going on on the top. Our request today, I think, is really we'd like to add a small deck on the back of the house on the third floor, and there's a deck there today, but we were initially going to take it off, um, but we wanted to provide some outdoor space for some grandparents who are moving in there, in our house, uh, away from the kids. And so we try to add a small deck back there, but basically slide out the one that is there today as we add the bedroom. Are there any questions from the board? Madam Chair, no, I had the chance to review the drawings. Um, the changes are minor and there's no additional zoning uh, violations. Thank you. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of a vote. Do I have a second? I second. second. Thank you. Ms. Bedebraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Thank you. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. So now we can move on to building code um, only. We have BOA 1421197204-206 Cambridge Street. The applicant is Manaz Sheikh. Is the applicant here? Mr. Sheikh. Hi, he's not. I just um, sent a request to make him a panelist. It opens up even so. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Ms. Wewell, well, were you about to say Hello. something? I could read out the violations. If... Uh, uh, yeah. So violation 1208.2, uh, minimum ceiling height. Okay. Tom, does she need to read the whole thing or is that fine? Uh, if you want to read the description of what the issue is, that'd be fine as well. Okay. Yeah, the comments there. Okay. Uh, minimum ceiling heights, occupiable spaces, habitable spaces, and corridors shall have a ceiling height of not less than seven feet six inches. Uh, bathrooms, toilet rooms, kitchens, storage rooms, and laundry rooms shall have a ceiling height of not less than seven feet. The prep area in the basement only has a height of six feet and two inches. Thank you. Is the applicant ready? Yes, hi, can, can everybody hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Mona Sheikh, and the address is 20426 Cambridge Street, Boston, MA. The case number is BOA 1421197. I'm, uh, I'm here to seek relief from the building code for a ceiling height in the food prep area in the basement. Uh, Mr. James Kennedy, on 427 of 2022, he issued our permits and approved our um, amendment for the long form uh, for the basement to be uh, used as a prep area. Um, even though the architectural stamped drawings were um, stated that the, um, that the ceiling height um, was under the proper height, um, it was still not picked up during the review process. And uh, we had a final, um, final building inspector, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Martin Dunlap, building inspector, he come 
on August uh, 3rd and um, he found the ceiling height to be lowered and then um, on August 4th he advised us that we can only receive a temp seal uh, due to all this and that I would have to go through the appeal and um, um, Ms. Jill Fox, I'm sorry, Ms. Jill Cox, um, Assistant Commissioner, and Mr. James Kennedy, they supported me to go through this appeal um, so that um, you know we can make sure we can get a relief from this code. Um, and we'll make sure that there is a limited one or two employees uh, doing only prep in the basement area. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Betabraza? Yes. I do have, I have a couple of questions. Um, so uh, is there egress, direct egress to a public way? Is it on, um, on Russell Street? Yes, so it's on um, 204 Cambridge Street. Um, uh, yes, the, um, the other street is Russell Street. Okay, so I'm not seeing a site plan that shows uh, egress, just wanted to point to that. Uh, is it sprinklered? Uh, no, the building is not sprinkled. We do have a fire station right next to us, right next door. No, I, I saw that. I saw that you have a fire um, station next door. Is, does it have a fire alarm system? Yes. Are In there, the prep area. As okay. Are there yes. any obstructions um, below the ceiling, the existing ceiling? Uh, no. Like, are so, there any uh, pipes, you know, within yeah. the six foot two? Yeah, I, so I don't have photos to see the space. Yeah, yeah, no, no, there is none. Um, so because it was approved on 427, 2022, uh, we had done much of, um, you know, we sp I, I have, this is my first restaurant and I have spent a lot of money fixing everything in the basement for the prep area, including, but not limited to a grease trap, a floor drain, you know, the ceilings, um, making sure the uh, the floors are done correctly for with polycrete. Um, um, I've spoken to the health department and enclosed everything um, in the ceiling, even like little gaps and stuff, just so that it can be okay for the prep area. And this is the reason I'm here today, as I've done a lot in there um, after the approval, which again, Again, I guess it was um, by mistake. It was approved. Okay, so um, I don't have um, drawings in regards to whether you have, um, you know, the fire s uh, system installed. Whether you have mm -hmm. smoke detectors, I I can't assess whether you have obstructions. I find um, that you're lacking just photographs for me to understand this. Okay. So I would like to put forward uh, a motion to defer uh, until you provide documentation that the condition is unobstructed and it's safe. Okay, thank you. So Ms. that's the motion. Tom, do we usually have to, can, can I bring forth the comment about the state building code? No, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, sorry? Just, Madam Chair, I'm happy to discuss it if you have any questions. Um, Yes, I think that would be helpful for for the board members to understand uh, the, so we, versus the state building code appeal board. Right. So one, one other thing I want to just point out is, um, you know, if it was two inches, you know, I, it's fine, right? Like one can almost say there's only two inches from the seven feet of building code, but this is almost a full 12 inches. So I just, I don't have enough information in front of me to ensure that it, it is uh, in safe conditions for a one or two person to be in the basement. Yes, Tom, would you like to weigh in? Yeah, Madam Chair, so typically, you know, there, people can appeal these building code cases to the zoning board. Um, the board does sometimes grant building code relief um, instances where it's familiar and can like understand the cases, you know, like with our uh, the, the hatches for roof deck access that the board routinely does. Um, this is a little bit different. Uh, I would just recommend uh, that the board deny this and then have the applicant seek relief from the building code appeal board um, so that they have a chance to weigh in and offer their recommendations. I think that uh, uh, Madam Architect is certainly qualified to do that, uh, but I don't know if the rest of the board members can have the kind of expertise to do that. But the building code appeal board does have that expertise. So then, can I take back my motion then? Yes. And put a new motion forward, just listening to Tom's 
Yes, thank you. Okay, I'd like to put a, a motion to um, deny. Uh, I will second. I'll second um, that, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Bedebraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Um, Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. We recommend uh, to the applicant that you file an appeal with the uh, <clears throat> State Board Code, uh, uh, Building Code Appeal Board uh, for this case. Thank you. Next. Okay, so that concludes building code only. We can move on to the 9.30 a.m. scheduled hearings. The first we have is BOA 137-8873 for 24 West Tremlett Street, and the applicant is Michael Cohen. Hey. Um, so Mr. Cohen. Hi, everyone. My camera's looks like no change in a moment, so you can see my face. I do apologize. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention today, hearing our appeal. We are asking the board to approve legalizing a basement apartment that was built more than 30 years ago and to allow its longtime occupant, Willie Castro, to remain in his home. We're not seeking to change how the property or unit have been used for the past 30 plus years. Uh, we've spoken about our project with the West of Washington Coalition together with our neighbors on West Tremlett Street, all of whom have indicated their support. With respect to the unit itself, um, I spoke with Lionel Gonclaves, who purchased the building in the early 1990s and sold it to another party in um, the late 20-teens. And he told me that this unit was present in the building when he bought the house. At the time, uh, it was extremely dated, so he updated it and then continued to rent it. The earliest documented use of the building that I, of the unit, excuse me, that I could find in city records is a 1997 uh, violation from ISD. And starting five years ago, the city assessor's office began taxing the building as a four-unit property. Um, turning to the specifics of our project, what we're seeking to do is make changes to the unit so that it's in compliance with building codes, particularly with respect to fire and sanitary uh, needs by adding an egress window and increasing the height of the entry door from 78 to 80 inches. And um, you know, I just want to emphasize we're not seeking to change the unit or how the property has been used. I held multiple meetings with the West of Washington Coalition um, and their directors, Lakeisha Burke and Warren. Washkun, who's also our neighbor on West Tremont Street. Both of them were supportive of our project and um, have submitted letters on behalf of WOW. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Ms. Barbaraza, do you have any questions? Uh, have you reviewed the plans? I, I have, Madam Chair, I reviewed the plans. The plans are adequate. I just have one question in terms of your egress. From unit one, am I allowed to go through the common basement to get through the second means of egress? Yes. Yes, okay, no no further question, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Mr. Hampton, can you provide your recommendation? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. We recommended approval. Uh, the only proviso that we wanted was uh, that there be no building code relief. We didn't see any building code issues and I, According to the appellant, they've updated it, but that's our only concern is uh, no building code. Thank you. Uh, may I take public testimony? Is there public testimony? We do have one raised right hand. One second, let me just see. That is Ashley. Um, are you here to give testimony for this project? Yes, good morning, all um, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, this is Ashley Gold from Neighborhood Services on behalf of the mayor and office. Well, I would like to defer the judgment of the board at this time. Um, so if the numbers really have been done, um, no letters of opposition um, during this time. Thank you. And then, Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Um, Chair, it's Lindsay. Can I go? Oh, absolutely. Yep. 
Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Office of Councilor Worrell. The applicant received the support of the West of Washington Coalition and has worked with the Butters to address concerns. So the councilor would like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Any other questions from the board? May I have a motion? I make a motion. I make a motion to approve uh, to approve the project with proviso that no building code will be granted. Thank you. May I have a second? So okay. second. Ms. Barbaraza. Yes. Mr. Shepherd. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries, good luck. Thank you so much to the board. Thank you. Uh, should we ask for any deferrals for the 930s before we continue? Are there, sorry, are there any deferrals for the 930 cases? 85 okay. Beacon Street. 85 what? I'm sorry, uh, 1 Everett Street, I apologize. 1 Everett Street. One Everett Street. Okay. I forgot which one I was here for. Uh, <laughs> here. Okay. So, yeah. one Everett, uh, BOA 1309297, one Everett Street, the applicant is Everett Development Partners, um, LLC. Uh, to, do I okay. All right. um, can you um, tell us about why you want a deferral? Thank you, Madam Secretary, Madam Chair, members. Uh, again, Tom Miller from McDermott Quotley Miller of 28 State Street in Boston. Uh, here on behalf of the applicant. Um, we are here requesting a deferral um, as this project has wound its way through the process. Uh, we have engaged in an extensive community process so far, but we are requesting a deferral at the request of uh, ONS and uh, City Council Coletta's office um, to finalize uh, our discussions with the local neighborhood association, the JPNA, um, so that we can uh, answer their final questions and uh, discuss the final iteration of this project. Um, we're asking for a quick deferral uh, as we're hopefully going to be back to them within uh, the next six weeks. Thank you, Mr. Miller. May I have a motion? I make a motion to grant the deferral. Second. Thank you. Ms. Barbaraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Do you have a, a date for them as well? Uh, we do. Uh, March 14th, uh, 1130. Thank you very much. Thank you. 8 Sawyer Avenue. I'm sorry, can you say that again? There are 8 Sawyer Avenue. Okay. Um, uh, BOA 1394043, 8 Sawyer Avenue. The applicant is James Christopher. Mr. Christopher, can you walk us through? It's, I, it's Attorney John Pulgini. I can, I'll, I'll walk us through this. Yeah, that's deferral. I'll just explain the yep. of the deferral. So this is a, a plan. Um, we have unanimous community support, except some plans were revised and those were filed with ISD, and we haven't received those back yet. We should get them any day. So if we could get a short deferral, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion for the deferral. May I have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Pettibraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. I'm sorry, Mr. Shepard? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Do you have a date for them as well? Yes, March 14th at 1130 as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 930? All right, hearing none, shall we move on? So next we have BLA 
9039-40 Elmont Street. Uh, the applicant is Eric Zacherson. He is seeking to build a new two-family building um, with violations for off-street parking, law area, floor area ratio, building height, usable open space, uh, front yard insufficient, side yard insufficient, and rear yard insufficient. Zacherson, are you here to... I'm bit, sorry, Madam Chair, this is Attorney Jeff Drago. Oh, thank you. Scano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, here on behalf of the applicant, Joni and Ennis Sihu, and I also have Eric Zacherson from Context Design, who's the architect. Uh, in this uh, rendering, you're looking at, um, this is a proposed two-family dwelling that we're proposing to build on a vacant lot. We are also creating two parking spaces uh, in the rear through a curb cut driveway that's shown in this uh, rendering here. You can go on to the next slide, thank you. Um, just to go over the uh, floor plans, if you go on to the next slide, and this is just an aerial view, I can stop here for a moment. You can see our rendering, tried to blend this building in with the context of the other buildings in the area. We have uh, to the right, uh, to the left, to the right of us, we have two family buildings. To the left of us is a one family behind us are threes and across the street are all twos. And this is a 2F 5,000 square foot district. So next slide, please, Madam Ambassador. Uh, this just shows our site plan. So you can see our 13 foot curb cut that enters the parking. Uh, so we'd be creating those two full parking spaces that are eight foot and a half by 20. Uh, next slide, please. And now we get into the, the, the plans for the project. Um, these are two bedroom unit, two three bedroom units. Um, these would be condo units. In the basement would just be used for common storage and mechanical room. We then go up uh, to the first floor. Uh, this is a bi-level unit, so it has a first level and then an upper level on the second floor. This unit is 1140 square feet. On the first floor, it has one bedroom, two baths, and a living area. And then as we go up to the second floor, the upper level has an additional bedroom, an additional bath. This second floor also houses the lower level of the uh, second unit. And that's 1,570 square, 75 square foot, three bedroom unit as well. And on that second floor, that would house the living space and one bath. And then finally, as we go up to the third floor, that is the upper level, you can see that here, um, and that would house the additional two bedrooms and two baths. And this picture and this rendering, you can see the elevations. Um, we are at uh, 37 feet, eight inches, which blends into the context of this neighborhood. We only have rear egress stairs that then lead into a rear yard in the back. Just to go over the, the violations that were mentioned, it is a 5,000 uh, minimum lot area. We're at 2,925 square feet, although the two family buildings that I mentioned are all within that 2,300 to 2,400 range, which is what we are in as well, a little bit bigger than that. Um, we uh, also got cited for FAR 1.19. 0.5 is what the requirement is. Um, we're at three stories, 37 feet. Um, and so that, that is, um, if you look at the context, that does uh, that is prevalent in this neighborhood, but the height allows two and a half and 35 feet. Uh, our open space is 490. So we're under the requirement of 750. And then our side yard is three feet um, on the right hand side, although there's a large a side yard next to us and then uh, we meet the requirement with 13 feet on the left side 10 is what would be required and then in our rear yard we do have 10 feet alongside of our parking the 20 would be required uh, and as i had mentioned these are a condo units for sale proposed uh, i can pause and answer any questions that the board may have you say there was parking or no parking there are two parking spaces madam chair it's shown in one of the earlier plans, and they are full-size spaces that would go along with those units. Just in one of the, in some of the pictures, they show a white fence 
to your right. Is that part of your property or an adjacent property? No, that's the adjacent property to the right of us, and that's an open lot area. Okay, thank you. Ms. Better Braza, have you reviewed the plans? Um, I have. I have reviewed the plans there. It's adequate and uh, for a 2F 5,000 subdistrict, um, the proposal, it seems reasonable. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Mr. Hampton, uh, do you have a recommendation? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Actually, we do not have a formal recommendation, but I'd like to echo Ms. Bedevaraz's comments that a two-family uh, dwelling in a two-family district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I hear a public testimony? Morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ashley going to my board services. Um, on behalf of Mayor, the office would like to defer the judgment to the board at this time. Significant but our meetings have been done. We do have a letter of opposition from Harvard Washington Normal Neighborhood Association um, indicating the space would be better served um, as a one family instead of a two family. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other? Sorry. Hi, Chair. Jessica. Yes, Lindsay. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Lindsay Santana from the Office of Councilor Brian Rowe. I would like to echo um, what Ashley just said. We would like to defer to the board for judgment. We do have a letter of opposition and non-opposition from Harvard Washington Norwell Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, are there any other raised hands? No other raised hands. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion from the board? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with um, two proviso that it goes under BPDA design review and the second is to provide um, pervious surface to offset heat island effect. Thank you. Do I, may I have a second? I second. Thank you. Ms. Barbarossa? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, this is Tom. Can I just ask Ms. Uh, yes. Raza, is that pervious surface just for the parking area? Just for the parking, just for the parking area because there's, there's kind of minimum open space. So to kind okay. of just maximize that, it's better to have a permeable driveway. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next case. So next we have VOA 1285663, um, 84 West Cottage Street. The applicant is Paul Yu seeking to erect new construction of a multifamily dwelling with seven units and seven parking spaces. Uh, the violations are use regulations, the law area insufficient, additional law area insufficient, floor area ratio excessive, building height excessive, um, stories and feet, usable open space insufficient, front yard side and rear yard setbacks are insufficient. Yes, and, and this is Sean Taylor. I'm the owner. I'll be presenting. Okay, you'll be presenting. Can you walk us through the plans and uh, let us know how many bedrooms there are as well uh, in, in per unit? Yep, it's it's a, a mixture of units. So there's a, a studio on the first floor, and then uh, three two bedrooms on the the, the second floor and then uh, two bedrooms. Sorry, I'm just going through here. Do we want to go through who we are or, or anything of this or the meetings or just? Uh, yes, you can feel free to introduce yourself if there's anyone else uh, presenting for you. Uh, they can identify themselves at that time. Yeah, Colin, my brother's online. Uh, Elizabeth Wilson was online from uh, Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology, but she had to drop off um, for another meeting, unfortunately. And Paul Yu, our architect, is online if there's questions that relate more to the plans that I can't answer. Thank you. Um, so we're at, so it's seven units total, seven parking spots. We originally presented to the neighborhood in 2021 
um, a 12 unit project. Our initial feedback on the site was they really wanted a one-to-one -one parking ratio. So if we could fit, you know, seven parking, seven units, we could have seven, uh, seven parking spaces, we could have seven units. So it's parking underneath the building. Um, the neighborhood in general was supportive with a couple of parisos that, um, you know, one, they, they wanted to see that there was some affordability there. Two, we would have some cameras. There would be some neighborhood uh, benefits. So part of it is this corner. They want to have more security and lighting. Um, that was one of the things is they want to have something built on it. Um, so that was one of the things that we've owned it for ages and it's just sat there and it just hasn't been feasible to build it. Um, so yeah, we've gone through five total meetings, including- I think so. ONS will walk us through the community process if you could focus on the building itself and, and the violations. Yep, dude. Pull down, um, sorry, to the architecture plans, or I guess if would, Paul, do you want to present the plans themselves? If you're on, John, is he on under PY? Because I try to make him a panelist. Yes, PY. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, Paul, I'm making you a panelist um, now. Once you're um, become a panelist, just unmute yourself when you're ready. Hey, thank you. So, the proposed building is to build a um, seven-unit building on a vacant lot. We we'll start with the ground floor with a one studio unit and service parking for seven parking spaces, um, unfinished basement for mechanical space. In the second floor, we'll have a one-bedroom a two bedroom, two two bedroom units, and the third floor will have a two bedroom unit and two duplexes that goes up on the fourth floor. And we see seeking relief on um, lot area, FAR, building height, and open space, and rear yard. Are you still there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay good. So, yeah, here, here on the third floor, yep. Yeah. So that's the, um, the, the corner units in the front facing corner units are going to be the duplexes and the rear units being the rear yard is going to be the two bedroom units. And here are the um, upper level space for the duplexes on the third and uh, on the fourth floor with a um, private outdoor outdoor space. Are these uh sorry? Are these rentals or or condos? Yeah, rentals. Rentals. And there's two affordable units as part of it, so it's 28% of the total units. Uh, can I ask which units are restricted? Yes, the, the first floor unit will be an ADA studio restricted and one of the second floor two bedrooms. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask what are the, what is the AMIO MICO for the restricted units? 80% AMI. 80%, okay. And also, do you have to open a new driveway and a new uh, curb cut? Yes, cut to we will need to do a curb cut on West Cottage. Ms. Pepperaza, have you reviewed the plans? I have, Madam Chair. The drawings are out of it. I have no further questions. Okay. Are there any other questions from the board? Mr. Hampton, do you have a recommendation? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. We actually recommended denial without prejudice. Uh, we think with the new lot, uh, they're choosing to put seven units on there now as a three-family district, and a lot of the buildings around them are uh, three families. 
So um, to us, this is just uh, a little too expensive. Thank you. Thank you. May I hear public testimony? Okay. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Keisha Santana from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicant met with the Butters and DSNI, Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative, what they presented to their Sustainable Development Committee. Um, there were some questions on affordability, but they do believe that this project um, could be a benefit to community. Um, DSNI has decided to not write a letter of support, but is not in opposition to this project. Um, and at this time, we would like to defer the judgment to the board. Thank you. Tisha, are they the only ones who you've heard from as far as support or opposition? Yeah, so there's no known, no other known um, support in terms of brought to our, like letters brought to our office. Okay. After, but they did with the butters. You, have an abutter, you said you had an abutters meeting? Yes, my predecessor held that abutters meeting. And was there any feedback or attendance? Attendance, there was just questions on affordability um, and community, more community benefits, um, but no known support or opposition. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, is it okay if I make a quick comment? Yes, please. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to just provide some context as well to um, Jeff Hampton's feedback in terms of the neighborhood being um, the three F district, one block down just on West Cottage Street is also multifamily and you have multifamily owned by Boston Housing Authority and it's all along the same street. Mm -hmm. Within walking distance you mean? Yeah, it's just probably uh, three parcels down from the property. Um, so I just wanted to give that context in terms of it, it is in a three family but right down the street is also multifamily residents. Thank you. All right, uh, let's continue with the public testimony. Um, is there anyone else to speak in support or opposition? We did have letters of support that were sent in. As we will, do you have, um, do you have those on file? We do. Um... Do you have us? Can you give us a sense of uh, how many and what? There is. Everyone's pretty long back. We do have uh, a few letters of support. Let me just scan, make sure there's no. One, two, three. And then. Uh, we have several letters of support. Okay. Any any in opposition? No. Thank you. All right. And I'm sorry, Jessica. Did you say there was any other raised hands? There were. But did we hear from Ones yet? Is yes. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Oh, right. Perfect. All right. Uh, do have a raised hand here, Delise. Can you state your name and address for the record, please, once you're unmuted? Send in a request to unmute you. I do see your comments in the chat about um, parking in the property line. So if you are able to unmute yourself and you want to give testimony, you can. Otherwise, I have no additional raised hands. OK. Is that person unmuting themselves? I um, I sent a request to, but... Um, okay. Are there any other questions from the board? Yes, I, I have a question. I'm looking at the property, and there are a lot of small trees around the property. Is the proponent going to keep any of those trees, especially in the back of the, of the lot? We'd like to. Um, we don't know if we can. We actually planted some more trees on the back of the, the neighboring property as well, so we're, we love it. What I think they're commenting now is the fence is actually in the wrong location on the property line. So the the fence that's there on the pictures, this is not, you know, doesn't represent or change the actual lot size, but ages ago, prior to us owning the lot, when the fence was put up, it's on top of the owner's yard as well. You have to move that fence. As part of that, we'll have to work with them to figure out whether the trees, because they're on that fence, would be able to stay. But we're going to work through that 
we're going to move that fence, tear it down, put it on the actual property line, and then make sure that the, the trees, if we do anything, will move there. But every single property we have, we like to keep trees because we think residents like it. Okay. And we like it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shepard. Do you uh, have a question? Yes. Okay. Uh, can we um, explain again where the seven parking spots will be due to the fact that our West College Street on that side does not provide parking? Mm -hmm. And also the side street as well is um, definitely usually packed. And I also like to say as far as the multi-unit at the end of the street, that has a setback in a parking lot as well. So it's a little different from what I'm seeing on this drawing, but I just wanted to state that. But I'm, I'm mostly asking about the seven parking. Yes, can you clarify that for us, please? Yeah, the parking lot, the entrance is on West Cottage on the side where there is no parking. So, and that was the neighborhood community brought that up. We originally had it on Galen, and they said, hey, this is important. Don't take away a parking spot on Galen. Put it on West Cottage where there's no parking already. And we thought, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. So it goes on, it comes off of West Cottage where there's no parking and goes into it. So you're not losing a park, street parking spot. And you enter in and you have seven parking spots effectively, you know, on street level and the building's kind of a, on a podium above that. And then, oh, sorry. Sherry, you're on mute. I didn't know if it was on. Sorry, uh, I said, I'm sorry. It said, it, uh, it looks like you have a curb cut already on West Cottage. Are you using your existing curb cut? It's not really, I don't think it's officially a curb cut. It's been there for years and there's actually a fence. I where, see. You know, you, you use it for like trucks getting in and off and, but there's not really any use it. Right now it's just a kind of like a lot on it. It's been empty for, for years. Okay. okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Did that answer your question, Mr. Shepard? Yes. Any other questions from the board? I have one question. Yes, Mr. Langham. Are any of these units going to be available for low-income residents? All of them effectively are available, you know, in terms of like Section 8 vouchers. There's no restrictions from that sense. And two of them are going to be affordable units, and that's 28% of the total unit count. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes, Ms. Well, for the applicant, how long would those units be affordable for? How many years? We are planning that it would be indefinite. In perpetuity? In perpetuity, those are planning with any okay. restrictions or plans that they wouldn't be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, this is Tom. Can I just make uh, a suggestion to the board? Sure. If, anyone, if, if the board is going to approve it, if the board wants to do that, it's all could include a proviso that the applicant identifies the affordable units uh, for, the, for the certificate of use and occupancy with ISD. That will help us track the affordability of the building. So. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Thank you. With that, do I have a motion? Matt, Madam Chair. I like to put forward a motion of um, approval with BTD and BPDA design review of building location on the site plan and the amount of parking spaces and aisle clearance, paying special attention to the ground floor to maximize open space, preserve trees as much as possible, and increase rear yard setback. And then the other proviso, which Tom stated, is to officially put on record the two income restricted units with ISD and MOH. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second, second that. Thank you. Ms. Danabraza. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. I like the project. I like especially that this proponent is offering two affordable units. And for that reason, I vote yes. Thank you. Ms. Wewell. Yes, I'd like to align myself with the comments of support. Many of them point to the unit mix, the level of affordability, and overall um, design of the project. So, yes. Thank you. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stenbridge? Yes. 
Uh, chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Do we want to put the um, deferrals for the 1030s? Keep going. Uh, yes, you can, Katie. Yep. So, do we have anyone requesting a deferral for the 1030 cases? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, Madam Secretary, uh, Attorney Nick Zazula, this is uh, 9 Oswald Street. Uh, it is about halfway through, Madam Secretary, on page six of the agenda. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you uh, can you let us know the re reason for the request? Yes, absolutely, Madam Chair. Again, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, 28 State Street in Boston. Madam Chair, this is just a simple needed to be re-advertised um, to add two zoning violations that weren't on the original hearing notice for today's date. Um, in order to be compliant with the Enabling Act and the Zoning Code, it needs to be on the refusal letter, uh, open space, and uh, location of main entrance <laughs> to the refusal. Uh, oh, right. and I, I believe it already, ha I'll defer to Mr. to Attorney Broom, but I believe it already has been advertised again. It's on the 8th of the anniversary down here. Oh, is it 1130? Um, Sorry, Mr. Oh, 1130, we discussed it. Mr. Dor <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm happy to repeat anything you need me to repeat. No, not necessary. I just realized that Katie, <laughs> Katie didn't read the information into the record. Sorry. Okay. I can read that. Um, so, BOA 1146747, 9 Oswald Street, applicant 9 Oswald LLC, seeking change of use three to four family um, with living space in the basement. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion for the firm. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you. Ms. Benaparaza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Sembrick? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals for 1030? Madam Chair, this is Tom. Just uh, for not the last one, 9 Oswald Street. I'm not sure if we have re-advertised that yet. I don't know if uh, okay. we would, I don't know what the next date would be. Um, if I may, Mr. Attorney Broom, I apologize to jump in. You have re-advertised. I'm looking at the, the re-advertised -hear, re hearing notice. Okay, thank you. So we have we that for next, next Tuesday? Y yes, sir. Uh, February 7th at 11.30 a.m., I believe, uh, Stephanie sent out, and we did receive it in time, and I'm looking at it now. Yes. Okay, cool. There's no doubt on the agenda. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Sorry to jump in. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Oh, sorry. We already did that. <laughs> Were there any other deferrals for 10.30? I'm sorry. All right, hearing none, Katie, do you want to go back to the 930s? <clears throat> yes. Uh, next, we have BOA 1396648, 19 Peveril Street. The applicant is Peter Hiranas. They are seeking to construct a roof deck. The violations are that the building height is excessive um, in terms of the feet. All right, great. Mr. Hiranas. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, Aaron Danielle, on behalf of the applicant, Peter Harris. Okay, can you walk us through the uh, request, the proposal? Yes, I can. So it is for a roof deck that actually is currently in place. Um, I've been brought in to clarify and correct permitting and then move forward. The roof deck is 18 by 30, total of 540 square feet minus one space that lets down through for sunlight into the third floor unit. Uh, the Jones Hill area is uh, a very steep area. The front of this property drops off over 15 steps to the sidewalk, um, which lends itself to our request for this relief. The um, community process um, was complete both with the neighborhood and then the Jones Hill group. Uh, we made some adjustments to our initial plan in deleting the pergola um, by condo documents, making it an exclusive third floor use only roof deck and limiting all future structure 
to the height of the rail, which is 36 and a half feet above grade. Um, and I think that about covers it. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, I have a question. So in our, mm -hmm. our the sheet in the file, it, there's also a comment that there will be a building violation for the spiral staircase. Um, they haven't issued the, Madam Chair, I, this is Tom, I can speak on that. Uh, yes. If the, they might um, if issue a building code violation at a later date if the plans aren't resolved, but that would be like an internal building code issue and it's not uh, you know, before the board today. It's just a zoning violation okay. at this point. Okay. Thank Great. you. No further comment. The, the, decks, the, decks been, the decks been kind of semi built, right? Because in the. Correct. In the oh, right. So you're just correcting it by removing um, pergola structure and also proposing um, internal access from the unit below directly to the roof deck, um, correct? Not through the exterior spiral staircase. Uh, whether interior or exterior, uh, our effort is to avoid the other violation by changing from a spiral staircase to a traditional staircase. Um, okay. If the board has a pleasure on either, um, I'd be happy to take it to the owner. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Any, any other questions from the board? With that, may I have public testimony? Morning, um, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ashley Cohn from Member Services. Um, on behalf of the mayor, um, our office would like to defer the judgment to the board at this time. Um, also, the at butter meetings have been done. Um, Jones Hill um, Association of Butters have concerns about the size of the deck that was already built prior to them getting approval and going through the proper steps with the previous contractor that was on the project. Thank you, Ashley. Jessica, is there any other public comment? I have no raised hands at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, did you read um, BPDA's recommendation? Uh, Mr. Hampton, would you like to weigh in? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Our, our concern uh, for these plants was the pergola, but since that's been removed, um, we don't have a concern, I guess. Uh, I guess it just depends on whether or not they're going to do with interior access with the hatch or head house. I don't know if the head house will be coming back to you, so. Does the applicant want to address that now? Um, it is our goal to have an exterior egress access that complies. Um, if we cannot achieve that, um, I, I'd work with the owner to work on an interior access that does comply. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward uh, a motion with two proviso. One, BPDA design review on the size of the roof deck. And two, that it would be a roof access directly from the unit and not through an exterior rear spiral stair. Do I have a second? That a second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Badabraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Stembridge? Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Uh, Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Uh, to, thank you. <clears throat> okay, next we have BOA 1409912 for 5 Worcester Square. Um, they are seeking to amend a prior permit to reconfigure room sizes from the original plans on different levels and to construct a new exterior deck off of the second floor. Their violations include dimensional regulations for floor area ratio, um, townhouse, row house extensions into the rear yard, and restricted roof structure regulations. Thank you. Is the applicant on? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Drago in Toscana with a business address of 11 Beacon Street here on behalf of 5 Worcester Square. As mentioned, this is an amendment to a previously issued permit 
Uh, essentially what we're seeking to do is some minor interior reconfigurations, uh, which really don't have an effect on zoning, but moving a couple of kitchen islands and, and mechanical areas around. Uh, the heart of the matter is we are seeking a rear deck and a roof deck, and this would allow for all three units to have their own dedicated outdoor living space. Currently the first uh, unit has a exterior patio out the rear. We're proposing a rear deck for unit two, which would extend over that rear patio, and then a roof deck, which would be for exclusive use of uh, unit three. Uh, as mentioned, we were cited for three zoning violations. FAR is allowed at 2.0. Currently we're at 2.61, but the staircase uh, access to the roof deck uh, would uh, increase our FAR to 2.71, so a nominal increase based upon that stairwell. Our rear yard, we will maintain our 20-foot uh, three rear setback, uh, but we are extending into the rear with the deck, uh, so that's why we got cited for that. And then finally, roof structure restriction because of the proposed uh, deck and penthouse uh, on the roof. This proposal did go through uh, the South End Landmarks process and was approved by that commission. Uh, the roof deck's been set back approximately 15 feet from the front of the building, as you can see kind of on the far right there. We, we centered the roof deck uh, as much as we could to make sure that it would not be visible from the street. Uh, these kind of decks and penthouses are quite common here in the South End, and we did get approval from the South End Landmarks uh, Commission. Uh, with that, I will pause and, and take any questions about the proposal. Thank you. Ms. Better Brossa, have you reviewed the plans? Madam Chair, I reviewed the plans and they're out. No questions. Neither do I. Does anyone have any questions from the board? Yes, Madam Chair. Are they, I mean, this is a beautiful building, and I'm wondering if there are other roof decks uh, on the other, other uh, units on the same block. Are you aware of other buildings that have a similar deck situation? Yes. Yeah, so I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's kind of whereas I'll defer to you and I can jump uh, in after if you want. Um, yes, it's pretty common the, the penthouse and the roof deck in this district. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Question. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Madam Chair. Um, to be clear, the, so the additions are the rear deck and the up and the upper deck. That is correct, Mr. Stembridge. The, the roof deck and then the, the second floor rear deck. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Of course. Thank you. Uh, are, uh, may I have public testimony? Hi. Uh, yes, Kim Cruz Healy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, we had an abutters meeting in November of 2022 where support was shown by the abutters. They received no opposition from the Western Square Area Neighborhood Association. At this time, we'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hand. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I enter the motion? Do we hear from BPDA? Oh, I'm sorry. No, we did not. Uh, Mr. Hampton? Would you like to weigh in? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, my only question, Matt, did, did um, Landmarks bless everything on your project? They did, yes. We received approval from Landmarks. All right. So we, we had asked for a design review, especially in the rear decks, but if Landmarks has already done it, then we don't need to see it. So we would just recommend it. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I entertain a motion? Okay. To Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Shepard made a motion. Uh, may I have a second? I second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have um, BLA 1351164, 170 Old Colony Ave. The applicant is Timothy Johnson. They are um, seeking uh, relief for the use, lot area, lot width, lot frontage, floor area ratio, open space, front and side yard, off street parking requirements, dimensional regulations. They are seeking new 
Demolish the existing structure, erect a new four-story, four-unit building with garage and front balconies. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Is the applicant on? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is Tim Jones, an architect, 599 East Broadway, South Boston. My client, Kevin Kerr, is also on the uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, first page, please. Thank you. Uh, this 0 0.03 acre site is located in the base code subdistrict M-1, where multifamily is a conditional use. It is also located in the old Colony Ave High Growth Corridor, identified by the BPDA. The by right building height in this corridor is 40 feet, same as the building height as in all of South Boston. Thank you. My client, Kevin Kerr, has owned this property for 23 years and is proposing to demolish. That slide, please, can hold there for a second. Thank you. My client, Kevin Kerr, has owned this property for 23 years and is proposing to demolish the existing structure and erect a new four story, four unit building with one car garage. Can we go to the previous slide, please? Thank you. Uh, we're proposing a new four-story, four-unit building with one car garage. The three two-bedroom and one one-bedroom units will be rentals and priced as workforce housing. BP the BPDA identifies workforce housing as housing affordable to households earning between 60% and 120% AMI and includes firefighters, teachers, and healthcare workers. The site is also located within a five minute walk of the Andrew Square Transit Station. Next slide, please. Per the, BP, per the BPDA's Plan South Boston, 170 Old Colony Ave, as shown on the right uh, label, is located in the as of right 40 foot height zone and the density bonus 60 foot height zone. We are proposing four stories at 40 feet. Photos of Old Colony High Growth Corridor on the left show three, four, five, and six story buildings. The 170 site is identified by the small dark blue building in the photos. Next slide, please. The proposed site plan shows the main entrance to the building off Old Colony at the bottom right. And at the top left of the building is the garage entrance, which faces Earl Street. The site is also located in the flood zone X and conforms to the BPDA's coastal flood resilience requirements. That is the lowest level of the proposed building is one foot above flood base elevation. Next slide, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Right there, thank you. Uh, this 3D view from the corner of Earl and Old Colony shows the garage entrance on the right side facing Earl Street and the main entrance on the left side facing Old Colony Ave. Each unit has a generous balcony and no roof deck. decks are proposed. Next slide, please. Again, this is a view of the main entrance which faces Old Colony Ave. And I also want to note we set back the upper floors in the rear at the second, third, and floor to open up the view corridor for the abutting building, <laughs> their, rear, their existing rear roof decks. Okay. Next slide, please. The shadow studies show, except for winter solstice, that there are minimal shadows cast on the abutting building at Earl Street. Can I go to the previous slide, please? Finally, the proposed workforce housing within a five minute walk of a transit station will be 100% electric for heating, cooling, and cooking. There will be no fossil fuel hookups to this building, reducing its carbon footprint over the life of the building. And with that, Madam Chair, uh, my client and I will take questions. Thank you. Ms. Bader Barraza, have you had a chance to review the plans? <laughs> Madam Chair, I did have uh, the opportunity to review the plans and it's pretty much adequate. The only question I have is how did you determine just one parking space? Uh, could we go down to the site plan? Uh, 
Previous, previous, uh, the other way direction, please. One more, one more. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barrazzo, the uh, existing uh, site is a small footprint. Um, the Earl Street has garage doors facing Earl Street. That seemed a logical location for one parking uh, garage. Uh, we did need room for unit one, which is a duplex unit. The bedroom is on the first floor, and then we have finished media space in the lower level. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, given all the sort of one families and, and you know, two or three stories, how did you decide upon your four stories? Well, um, again, Madam Chair, this uh, uh, site is located in the uh, Old Colony Ave High Grove Corridor, uh, where four-story is a by right, is by right uh, per the BPDA um, South Boston plan. Also, the maximum building height in all of South Boston is 40 feet. So we felt that going four stories at 40 feet was appropriate uh, for this area. Are there other questions from the board? I have one question. Yes, sir. I would like to know, I would like to know what unit would occupy that one parking spot? The, what unit would occupy that one parking spot? Uh, yes, sir. It would be the uh, unit one would be would have the ded dedicated parking spot. Why is that? Well, right now, uh, because of, uh, again, the small building footprint, uh, we didn't have uh, a lot of latitude for circulation, so it was an easy adjacency to make between unit one and the parking space. As you can see in the site plan here, uh, the door to the garage leads right into unit one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, are there other questions from the board? Yes, I have a couple of questions, Madam Chair. Mr. Johnson, is there any living space in the basement? Yes, right now we show it as a media room, no bedroom. There's no, the bedroom for, for unit one is on the first floor. We do show media space in the first floor. We can scroll to that uh, um, site plan if you, uh, floor plan if you wish. About th three more down, please. So there shows, there shows the lower level with a media room and a bathroom and washer dryer in the lower level. And what is the situation for the emergency exits or the egress for that space? Well, this is a four-story uh, multifamily. It will be sprinkled. So a basement has, uh, uh, per the uh, IBC, can have one means of egress from the lower level with a travel distance less, of a, less than 125 feet. So we do meet that code requirement. Therefore, we have the one stair which leads up to the unit and then out the front or rear door. Okay, the other question is, you mentioned that you have some workforce units. What is the area medium income for those units, again? Well, all units will be rented out and priced for work for housing as identified by the BPDA. These are households that earn between 60% between and 120% AMI and includes firefighters, police officers, and teachers, healthcare workers, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Madam yeah. Chair, can I get a um, clarification from Jeff Hampton? And it would yes. be great to also hear um, Jeff and Bob Dimikio's BTD feedback on parking. The, I have a question on the C fraud um, that there should be no living space below grade, uh, but uh, does that also include kind of media spaces or storage type spaces? We, we recommended it now without prejudice on this project. One of the reasons is because the living space that is below grade, whether it's a media room or whatever, it's still living space. So we recommended okay. uh, denial for that. Um, you know, we'd also like to see some increased setback on the building design. Um, one of the things that Mr. Johnson's thrown around is an as of right 40 feet. The planning document has been adopted, but the zoning has never been codified, which is why they've been, which is why they're here. So I don't want 
that the sound misleading that 40 feet is an as of right because it's not, because they got cited for building height. The plan has been adopted. The zoning recommendations have never been caught in that area. Um, but in terms to your answer again is that the living space below grade, we'd like to see that up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then Bob. Thank you. Is Mr. Can we go on? Yes, I see a hand raised. Yes, Bob. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Um, Mr. Johnson, uh, that one parking space, is that going to require a new curb cut? <coughs> uh, currently, there are, uh, uh, Earl Street has no uh, granite curbing. It is uh, basically a, a paved driveway up, up to each garage door. There's no discernible curbing on that street. So the answer to your question is, uh, we will just uh, continue the existing condition there. Uh, okay, we require a, a curb cut through public works, and the BTD is against one parking space for anything because you're taking away parking uh, from the street, and it's one space um, is just something we can't approve um, because, again, you're taking one parking space away from the neighborhood. So uh, I'd like to go on record and uh, denial of that one parking space. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Bob. Uh, just, uh, just yeah. a, a yes, quick sir. response, yes, to do, Mr. D'Amico. Uh, currently, one car does park off street on that site. Well, I understand that, but unfortunately, when you build a new uh, building, um, those types of things are not grandfathered in. Uh, we go by the new regulations uh, and not the old ones. So, uh, based on the new regulations, um, again, I go out in, with response uh, to this project. Uh, um, the BTD perspective, uh, we request a denial on that parking space. Thank you. Thank Under you. Spent. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions from the board? With that, I'll entertain uh, other testimony, please. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to this board. Some back information, background information on the community process. Uh, ONS held in the Butters meeting on August 8th. Uh, residents that were in attendance expressed concerns regarding the height, uh, saying that they felt it would create a bad precedent uh, for that corridor. Um, there were also some concerns expressed about road and activity around the property. Um, they went on to the Andrew Square Civic Association, uh, which voted to oppose this proposal. Uh, with that, we defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Good morning, my official members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to come record in support based on a thorough community process that the project will consist of affordable apartments and a workforce housing and the attention to sustainability with the building being fully electrified. Council President Flynn respectfully requests that the proponent work closely with the community do the, doing the construction. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan from City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, echoing the sentiments of Council Flynn's office, <laughs> uh, the council feels that this is a, a fair, honest project that's in line with the other properties in the neighborhood uh, and would like to lend to his unequivocal support. Thank you. Thank you. I'll start with Michelle. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Once unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. yes. Yeah, my name is Michelle Rock. I live at 11 Earl, which is two houses down from the property in question. <laughs> Thank ahead. you. Are you? Go ahead. Yeah, so I've sent in an email. I'm not sure if I haven't heard anything about letters of support or. If you can just state whether you're in support or opposition and your reasons. I'm in opposition, and I'm in opposition for the following reasons. The proposed renovation will take up the entire lot. It's a huge size for a very small space, absolutely no room around it. There's not enough parking for the tenants, so more cars will need to park on already congested streets. Earl is a very small private way, and I'm worried about how this will affect my ability to get in and out of my own house. The existing property hasn't historically been managed well. It's a dilapidated and an eyesore. The, the owner hasn't lived on that property you know, when he ever did. And then lastly, the proposed renovation would exceed the height and size of all the properties abutting it. 
They've referenced other properties on Old Colony, but none of those are nearby, and it will block our sunlight and overall be a negative effect for our home values. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, can additional testimony please uh, add value to that, add, add new information? Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, Madam Chair and ZBA members. John Pegatowski, lifelong resident of Andrew Square, South Boston, also co-chair co of the Andrew Square Civic Association Development Committee. Uh, ASCA, after engagement to the community process and capital review of the proposal in ISD plans examiner findings, stands in opposition to this proposal <laughs> And I'd like to thank Mr. Hampton for adding clarity to the 2016 South Boston Dot Ave study. Uh, and in my own opinion, this proposal does not lend itself to the city's adopted climate action plans, but rather continues the heat island effect. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Roberto Gomez. I'm sorry, my computer. Okay. Um, sorry, I sent a request on you, Roberto. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yep, I got it now. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Roberto Gomez. I own uh, 13 Earl Street, the direct abutter to, to this proposed building. Um, I'm in opposition um, due to the, the height. If, uh, if you go back to slide two of the presentation, um, you can see the all the immediate buildings are kind of capped at the current um, three stories of the townhouses that exist there now. Um, and going above that right would not really fit in with the, the current neighborhood. Um, and also, as Michelle brought up, the, uh, the owner, Mr. Kerr, um, currently owns the, the building that's there now, which has been in a very bad state of disrepair for, for over a decade. And the worry is with, with these is rentals that um, he will not keep up with um, taking care of this future building that will be much larger. And if that's the case, it would be much more of a of a, a nuisance and, and a vermin problem. And Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. No, I'm um, sorry, Kevin, were you looking to give testimony? Kevin, Kevin? Kevin is the proponent, so I would guess oh. not. Oh, okay. Actually, one of the butters is here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, so good you. I remember you mentioned okay. that earlier. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good morning. I'm uh, John Ogolinski at the 164 Old Colony. Mm -hmm. My brother Roman and I, uh, Director Butters, we both strongly support this project. Kevin Kerr has been a uh, pretty good neighbor for a long time, like 20 years. And uh, I would uh, like to see the project uh, done and completed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Raise Any additional comments from the board or questions? I have a question for Tom Bloom or the representative from the BTD. In the yeah, event that we approve the project, and BTD, BTD doesn't approve the park, the underground parking, no, the the, uh, the parking lot uh, space that they have. What happens with the project? Uh, Mr. Um, Wilson, this is Tom. Um, you know, if, if you put a proviso on there for the parking review for BTD, that's one thing. Um, you know, they, but uh, BTD doesn't weigh in on the permits usually for the parking for residential buildings unless it's part of the Article 80 process. And then, so without a proviso, there's no, there's no BTD review at all. So without a proviso, it would be approved as is, if it were approved? Yeah, unless you, got it, unless you wanted to put a proviso to change some aspect of the design or you wanted the BTD to work on the design, um, you know, to remove parking or BTD to look at a particular piece of the parking would be an approval as the plan. <laughs> Today. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Mr. Bonsu? Yes, it does. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Uh, with the Matt Chairman's permit, Chairwoman's permission, I just would note just that there were letters of support, including from Congressman Lynch, and if we could add that to the record of the hearing. Ms. Wewell, well, what do you have on the record? Oh, we on do file. have, we have both letters of support and letters of opposition for this project. Do you have a scale for us? 
There's several letters. Um, there are more in opposition than in support, but there are still, in, you know, several letters in support of the project. Thank you. Um, well, that, Sarah, I have a question, Madam Chair, when the time is right. Uh, now is the time for our board discussion, yes. Okay. Uh, this is to the applicant. So you do have one parking space for this project. I would actually be supportive of less parking, but my question is, with this project having different levels of affordability, which sort of unit would get that um, parking stall in terms of affordability level? Uh, this is Tim Johnson, the project architect. Uh, we could um, uh, isolate the garage, so the only way to get to the garage would be go out the building to the garage door itself. I, that think, the question, I think, think the question is which, so unit, is unit one an affordable unit or, or uh, not an affordable unit? I think that was kind of her, was that your question as well? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, all, all the units would be workforce housing. Uh, households earning between 60 and 120% AMI. So any one of those units. What is unit one? Yeah, what is unit one? Which is what level one? of affordability is that? Uh, that would be uh, a household earning between 60 and 120% AMI. So, so you haven't pinpointed. You haven't pinpointed the four between that because that's a big range. So of the four units, how are you determining? How are you setting the specific AMI for each unit? Well, we, we could we could uh, start at the uh, the lower end for the uh, lower unit and then go up from there. So that the uh, lower end of the scale, the AMI scale, could be unit one, and then we go up from there. So yes, uh, unit one would be the lowest scale of the AMI. Thank you. I think the concern is 60 to 120 could mean all of them are 120, which would, I think, defeat the point of having affordable workforce housing. You know, uh, we could, we could uh, uh, say that unit one would be the lower end 60% AMI. If I could also add to that, uh, what, what this is market rate workforce housing. So I, I do not think we have to make distinctions between units. These are not luxury units. These are sized uh, on the second, third, and fourth floor, 790 to 890 square feet. These are two bedroom. One bad. Mr. Kerr, we understand your, your comment. However, uh, Mr. Johnson has indicated that these are workforce units from 60 to 120% AMI, and I believe the nature of the questions from the board are uh, how, do you, how do we ensure that the full range is met within the project? And are you committing to that at this meeting? Or are you using that as sort of a marketing? Um, I think, Katie, that's up to the board to, with provisos. Right. <clears throat> are there any other questions from the board? Okay, I have, I have may I have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I, Mr. Lamb? I, I have one question. I want to know, it sounds like a wonderful project, but have you met with the, uh, the tenants or the neighbors? Because it seems like they're against this project. Uh, this is I just want to state, oh, ONS walked us through the process already, uh, the community process. Were there other questions beyond that, Mr. Rohn? No, it wasn't. No, I was a little concerned about that. Okay. If we could answer that, uh, yes, we went through the community process. We've left shadow studies. We've made every effort to talk to neighbors, including the immediate uh, abutters uh, who have been discussed. and. Uh, okay. Well, th thank you, Mr. Kerr. I think yeah. we have enough information. Can I have a Can I have a motion from the board? Matt, Madam Chair, it's Jeff. Can I say yes, something sir. first? Yes, sir. Uh, the BPDA does not have an adopted policy for workforce housing. I just got off the phone with the director of housing for us, so uh, about these AMIs or even the workforce housing. I just got off the phone, and this isn't something that's an adopted. Okay. Thank you. That is helpful. Okay. With that, may I entertain a motion from the board? I'm sure I make a motion. Yes. I make a motion. I um, consider that workforce units are important and 
But still, there are things that the, the proponent has to figure it out with the Boston Transportation Department. So I make a motion to approve with proviso that plans should be submitted to the BPDA for the sign review and to the BP Boston Transportation Department for the sign review of the proposed parking space. Mr. Valencia, do you want to add anything about workforce housing, which Mr. Hampton just said is not an official thing with the BPDA? Yeah, so also to, for the proponent to register the four units that will be workforce housing or, or, or also um, accepted as affordable housing to be um, registered at the city of Boston as affordable units. Is that something that we did before with another project? Tom, I think that's a question for you. Yeah, Mr. Valencia, this is Tom. Uh, this one, you know, in, in instances where an applicant is representing that uh, the affordable units are going to be affordable, but the BPDA process doesn't happen, like in this project, so this is only a four unit building, it's not large enough to trigger any kind of large project or small project review with the BPDA. Usually, my recommendation is that the board require that the applicant identify which units are going to be affordable and which AMI is in the proviso and that they can record that as part of the certificate of use and occupancy that ISD would issue for the, for the building. So may I make a suggestion, Mr. Valencia, that they identify one unit at each of 60, 80, 100, and 120? That is correct. Okay. May I have a second? If there's no second, I need a new motion. All right. I think I need a new motion. May I have another motion? Madam Chair, can we make a motion to defer? I do. I just think this applicant has some more work to do regarding this proposal, and I'd like to see um, them pay more attention to the unit mix, the affordability, and the parking. And also the BPDA um, concerns with the front yard setback and the CFROD design guideline. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Okay, with that, uh, Ms. Pettibraza. No. Uh, Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Uh, the chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Do they need a date now, Tom, or? Yes, yeah, so let's, uh, you want to do, I think March 28th would be enough time as we will for them to address these concerns. Yeah, I think, right. think, yeah, I think that works for me. Okay, yeah. that'll give them two months, Madam Chair. I, I think right. we should just reiterate that some of the, to attempt to address some of the BPA concerns in terms of uh, front yard setback to address the parking ratio relative to the amount of residents in the unit and to also um, uh, to also uh, look into the basement unit that should that is in the seafront district that no space should be habitable to take all of our feedback and to uh, and to work with the community to really clarify workforce housing and workforce AMIs. Thank you. All right, so we have March 28th at 11.30 a.m. Thank you. All right, next case. Okay, we have uh, BLA 139801 for 201 West 8th Street. Um, the applicant is seeking to add a roof deck to be used exclusively by Unit 3 um, and to improve access to the roof by replacing the alternating tread device with a normal stairwell. Um, the size of the roof allows for large setbacks for this deck. Um, their violation is the building height is excessive in terms of uh, number of feet. And the applicant is George Morancy. Okay, Ms. Morancy, we are wolfly behind schedule. If you could uh, be, be brisk, that would be, be appreciated. 
I will do so, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chair, Mayor, Mr. Board. My name is George Maranci. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. This is a proposal for an exclusive use roof deck at 201 West 8th Street in South Boston. My client is Tyler Jorgensen, who owns and lives in the top floor unit with his family and would like to add a reasonable amount of private open space for their use. There are three units in the condominium, which is a three-story building, and the other two unit owners are supportive of this application, as are several other direct abutters. The roof deck would be 144 square feet, 12 feet by 12 feet, with a small walkway to the deck from the point of roof access. The deck would be well set into the middle of the building and not visible from any public way. The point of access to the roof would be provided from the Jorgensen's unit by means of a hatch 30 inches in height in compliance with, uh, compliance with code requirements. There's actually an existing hatch providing roof access now for maintenance, which would be repositioned. The new hatch would allow for better and safer access from within the unit itself by means of a traditional stairway within Unit 3, as the current access to the roof is by means of a drop-down device. The zoning issue here is quite simple. The proposed roof deck requires a single variance for a roof height violation. The height of the building itself is 40 feet which is in compliance with zoning requirements under Article 68. This is an MFR, multifamily zoning subdistrict. The issue is that the deck platform itself rises nine inches above the roof line, and the code therefore counts this as building height. The result is that this application was cited for a single zoning violation of the height of the deck being nine inches above the roof's present height, which is the maximum allowed by zoning. I'll pause and take any questions that members may have. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Babaraza, do you have any questions on the plans? No, no questions. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, hearing none, I'm going to move on to public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Colin Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, at this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to this board. I don't have a lot of background information on the public process, but we did receive four letters of support from abutters uh, that was provided by uh, the proponent's representative. Uh, with that, we defer to this board. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, anyone else to speak? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Good yes, morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Anna. Oh, perfect. Um, hi, everyone. Anna Calderon. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in opposition based on feedback from neighbors and the City Side Neighborhood Association who also mentioned a policy in opposition to roof deck proposals. Council President Flynn has been on record for years in opposition to additional roof deck proposals due to their negative impact on the quality of life for neighbors in terms of loud parties at all hours and trash removal issues, which were unfortunately exacerbated by the pandemic. These quality of life issues have been repeatedly expressed to our office for years from our seniors, persons with disabilities and families with young children trying to sleep for school to the next morning. For these reasons, Council President Flynn remains opposed to similar roof deck proposals. Thank you. Thank you. Just Madam to, Chair, uh, members of the yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council Large Michael Thirty. Anyone else? I have no additional raised hands, thank you. Mr. Hampton, do you want to put your recommendation on the record? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. We recommended approval on this one. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? I make, make a motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second that. All right. Uh, Ms. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you.
next we have BOA 1415266 for 230-232 Silver Street. Um, the applicant is seeking to change the use from two residential units and a pet clinic to three residential units. Uh, the violations include off-street parking and loading requirements with no off-street parking provided and the usable open space is insufficient. And the applicant is Mary Serio. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, sorry. Yeah, Mr. Drago, you know the drill. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, here on behalf of my client, Mary Serio, and we also have Scott Trenier from Chewing Company, who's the architect on the proposal. Uh, this uh, is pretty straightforward. You're looking at the building uh, in this photo. It's 230 Silver Street, 230-232. Um, just by way of background, this did have does have two existing apartments above on the second and third floor. The first floor and basement level space had previous, previously been used as a tenant as a pet clinic. Um, they had moved out prior to my client purchasing uh, the building, so there is no tenant in there now. There was a pipe that broke prior to them purchasing the building as well that caused extensive damage, so most of everything is removed. Um, uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, this particular zoning district is an MFR, multifamily residential. We felt that changing the occupancy from two units to three was more conducive. Um, the layout, uh, as was mentioned, uh, the, the uh, first, uh, first unit uh, would be the largest. It is the newer unit. It's 1,758 square feet, and that would have living space in the basement level that is now shown as exam rooms and office space from the prior tenant. Uh, that bottom level would have no bedrooms in it. So it has living room, office, and one bath. Uh, floor to ceiling height is nine feet. Um, it has a stairway up to the, exist, uh, to the upper level floor, and that would house the three bedrooms, one bath, and kitchen. Uh, that first floor would also house the main entrance to the building. Uh, and then we go up to the second and third uh, existing units. If you go to the next slide, please, Madam Ambassador. Um, these units are 853 square feet, two bedroom, two bath, with a living area, an office, and then unit three is a two bedroom, two bath at 974 square feet with living area and office. Uh, most of everything around this is either condo or residential rental units. Um, in the immediate area and then just to go over the zoning violations there at a minimum the first one is open space and that is a pre-existing violation so we're not changing anything on the building um it uh what's required is 200 feet we have 37 and then parking we are not you know we're keeping the building so there's no currently no parking on site however we did feel with meeting with the community that having a commercial space would potentially bring a lot more traffic to the area with pickups and drop-offs uh, than one residential unit. With that, uh, we can pause and, and answer any questions the board may have. Thank you, Mr. Drago. So just to confirm, you're staying within the existing footprint, correct? Correct. We're utilizing all existing space. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barraza, do you have any questions on the plans? Madam Chair, no, the drawings are adequate. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I'm going to move to public testimony. Um, is there anyone here to speak in support or opposition? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some back background information on the community process. Our office hosted an abutters meeting on September 14th. Uh, there were eight residents in attendance. Uh, two abutters had expressed some concerns about parking. Uh, we understand that the applicant has continued to work with those abutters. Uh, they ended up achieving support from the City Side Neighborhood Association. Uh, with that, we refer to the judgment of this board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Hi, anyone else? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on a good community process and working closely with the City Side Neighborhood Association to reduce the bathroom counts from the 
second and third floor to two bedrooms each. Council President Flynn respectfully requests that the proponent continue to work closely with their voters, neighbors, and civic group on quality of life issues and during the construction phase. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, this is the council at large, Michael Flaherty. Uh, the council recognizing the communal process that went into drafting Article uh, 68 does acknowledge that there are projects that do have merit. Uh, this being one of them, uh, the council will echo the sentiments of Council Flynn's office and vote. Thank you, Paul. Anyone else? I have no additional raise hands. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, can you just for the record of BPA's recommendation? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Hampton? Is Mr. Hampton there? Okay, if not, I will read his, I will read his uh, recommendation. BPDA recommends approval with proviso that no building code relief be granted. With that, may I have a motion? I make a motion to approve. With the proviso that no building code relief be granted? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, may I have a second? I I'll second, second that. Thank you. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Thank you. Chair, chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have BOA 1396904 for 204 West Brookline Street. They're seeking to construct a six foot deep bracket supported balcony off of the second level and they will convert a window to a door for access. Their violations are townhouse row house extension into the rear yard and the applicant is Meg Vadia. Hi, um, good morning. Um, my name is Timothy Burke. I'm the architect for the project and we'll be representing the owners who are also on the call. I have a business address of 142 Berkeley Street in Boston. And uh, Meg and Luke are looking to pr have a little bit of outdoor space for their unit. And um, we're proposing that we construct a balcony. The next uh, drawing shows the balcony uh, on the back of the building. There is a very similar one on the third floor. This would be on the second floor right below the existing one. And uh, they've certainly worked with their neighbors on this and um, have their support as well. Thank I'd be you. happy to answer any questions that you may have. Ms. Ben Barraza, any questions on the plans? Uh, this is very minor work. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Thank you. With that, I'll take uh, public testimony. Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tim Cristoli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting in November of 2022 where no, oppos uh, excuse me, no opposition was shown by the abutters. No concerns were risen by the Pilot Block Neighborhood Association. At this time, I'd like to defer to the board on this matter. Thank you, Kimberly. Good morning, Madam Vision, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public testimony? Okay. I have no additional uh, reason. Thank you, Jessica. With that, may I have a motion? Motion for sure. Perfect. Second. Thank, thank, thank you. Uh, Ms. Better Barraza. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have BOA 1361465. I'm sorry. Do we have any deferrals? I apologize. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, here we go. Deferrals. Sure. Do we have any deferrals for the 1130 cases? I'm sorry. 17 Sheet Street. Street, I heard. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 17 Sheet. We'll go on. We'll go on to the next. So. 
BOA 1339787 Sheep Street, uh, applicant HRE3, LLC, uh, occupancy six units to seven units. Um, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, on behalf of the petitioner. Um, Madam Chair, this is a request for a deferral to allow for the uh, uh, re-noticing of this hearing uh, to address uh, violations that were uh, not originally included in the refusal letter. So the, I believe that refusal letter is issued and the new notice has been sent. I think Mr. Broom has a date, I believe it was the end of February for the next hearing. Okay, uh, great, thank you. <clears throat> May I have a motion? May I have a motion to defer? Motion to defer. Thank you. May I have a second? Thank second. you. Second. Ms. Better Braza. Is Ms. Better Braza here? Oh, I said yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, Mr. Shepard. Yes. Ms. Valencia. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Lewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Do we have that date, Ms. Wuwell? Oh, sorry. Do we have the date? Uh, don't I have the file in front of you, Madam Chair? We're going to pull it out. And I'll okay. Grab it. See what they would react before. All right. We will get back to you on that date. Yeah, I believe, uh, Madam Chair, I believe the date has already been set because of the okay. notice. Uh, it's already been prepared. I thought it was. Possibly uh, February 28th. It is February 28th at 11.30 a.m. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lins. Are there any other deferrals for 11.30? 8-10 Mercer Street, top of page 10. All right, thank you. We have uh, BOA 1369883, 8-10 Mercer Street, applicant Mark Little. Uh, seeking to erect four-story building with five dwelling units. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with a business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, this is the identical situation to the preceding extension. This needs to be re-advertised, um, therefore need a, uh, a deferral date consistent with the advertising requirements. Thank you. Uh, with that, do I have a motion? Motion to defer. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Rewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Not Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Do we have a date for Mr. Marinci? Yes, March 14th, 11, 30 a.m. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other deferrals for 11.30? Okay, hearing none, can we go back to the next case, Ms. Uvo? Yes, um, so BOA 136-1465-272 East Eagle Street. Seeking new erect a uh, four-story residential building with six units, includes balcony terraces, six parking stalls. Uh, parking is on the ground level within an open-air garage and is at the rear of the property. Um, the violations include uh, parking less than five feet from the side lot line, off street parking insufficient, the use is forbidden, uh, East Boston iPod applicability, conformity with existing building alignment, Floor area ratio excessive, height excessive in terms of stories and feet, side and rear yard insufficient. And the applicant uh, is Mr. Drago. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano uh, with a business address of 11 Beacon Street here on behalf of my client and owner and applicant, Frazier Allen. And we also have Mike Finch, who's the architect on the project from Joy Street Design. Um, this is a rendering of the new proposed building. As was mentioned, we're proposing to erect a new residential condominium building 
with six residential units and six associated parking spaces accessed through the garage shown in this uh, left side of the building. Uh, this uh, particular zoning district is a 2F2000. Uh, we're gonna show you some site pictures that shows there's multifamily and three all around us. Uh, but our lot size is 6,015 square feet. So we felt the client felt it appropriate given that it's a 2F2000 or over 6,000 square feet that the six units was appropriate. The, uh, through this process, we actually reduced the unit count from seven units to six, and were asked by the community to increase our three bedroom count. Uh, the, our number of three bedrooms went from three to five to allow more family style sized units. And we were also asked to put a dedicated trash in it. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this just shows the rear of the building, so we wanted to uh, create open space uh, on the bottom level, as you can see, with the patio that would also house two parking spots off to the right, and then every floor has a deck space. Uh, one thing in working uh, with our neighbors, we pulled the building in. Uh, on the third floor, we have a 10-foot rear pullback where the decks are, and then on the fourth floor, obviously, we're pulled back. Uh, to match that third floor in the rear, but also we have a 10 foot pullback in the front uh, to reduce uh, density and mass. Um, just to go over to the next slide, please, uh, Madam Ambassador. This is just uh, an aerial view. Uh, the red area is the existing structure that's there now. Um, and around us, you can see a multifamily as you go down the street along Putnam. And uh, the end of East Eagle, there are a number of a four story and many of the elevated three, particularly the one to the left of us are actually higher than, than our building. Uh, next slide, please. Now we get into the, the floor plans. Um, so the first floor would house our main entrance. It would have a mail room area. Uh, if you go to the next slide, sorry. A uh, utility room, interior trash, recycling area. And then it houses our six parking spaces. So uh, if you go to the next slide, two, next slide, sorry. Um, two, that this is perfect. Two of uh, uh, four of the parking spaces are off to the right. Um, and then two are in the rear uh, of the property. Those are the ones that are exposed. Uh, the, we were asked to keep a one for one parking ratio with this project. Um, our units uh, are mostly upper and lower level. So unit one on the first floor that houses the bottom or lower level of that unit. That's a 1,656 square foot um, three bedroom. Uh, the first floor would house the one bedroom of that unit and then two baths with a patio as shown. Uh, when we go up to the second floor, that houses the upper level of that unit one and that houses the additional two bedrooms and two bath. Unit two is also on that floor. That is the only two bedroom. That's 1,010 square foot. If you go to the next slide, uh, Jessica, I believe that'll show that. Thank you. Um, that, that's a two bedroom, two bath that has living space and a rear deck. And then unit three is also on the second floor. That is a three bedroom, two bath den living space with a rear deck. That unit is 1,337 square feet and as was mentioned we now go up to the third floor that houses the pullback um, in the rear uh, 10 foot where our decks are located uh, that are exclusive to those units all of the units on the third floor are by level units um, that's units four five and six they're 1546 square feet 1,561 and 1,551 square feet, respectively. Uh, on the third floor, they house uh, open living space, den, a half bath, and a rear deck. And then finally, as we get up to the fourth floor, uh, that has the 10-foot front pullback and the upper levels of those units. Those are where all the bedrooms, the blue bedrooms, and two baths are what's located on the top floor. Uh, just to go over uh, the, the zoning uh, variances requested, uh, use, because this is six units, so use variance would be required. FAR, we're at 1.56. Um, height, we're at 38 feet, six inches at four stories. Um, 35 feet would be allowed. Side yard, we do meet it on the left hand side, on the right hand side, on the left, we're at three feet. Um, in our rear yard, uh, what's, what's allowed is 24, we're close at 20 feet. 
and then parking we would still require under the code would be nine but we are at a one for one parking ratio uh with six and with that i know there was a lot of information i can pause to answer any questions the board may have thank you <laughs> that would be helpful uh Ms. Barbaraza, have you had a chance to review the plans Madam Chair, I've reviewed the plans and the plans are adequate. Um, I already have a question regarding your left side setback that is currently at three feet. I see that there's your adjacent, um, the adjacent building, it seems like at the rear is right on the property line. Is that a deck that is right on the property line? To the adjacent building? Um, Correct. Because you have some windows proposed along your your elevation, so I just want to understand. Yes, it is. That's we just pulled up the. the there's yeah. an existing, there's an existing deck. Okay. Yeah, if, actually, if we pull up, I'm sorry, uh, Jessica. The site picture that I have is the aerial view. That should be the third slide, and we, you can see that, um, Ms. Bedabaraza, right here. Yep. Yeah, and are you? Are you open to um, adjusting adjusting at the rear uh, to have at least a five foot kind of uh, setback from your adjacent property. If, if that's something that you're suggesting, of course. Okay, great. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Uh, are there other questions from the board? Uh, one, one question to a clarification, please. Yes, um, sir. Madam Chair, um, I believe you said that you were requested by the community to add in three, three, three bedroom units, and how many? And how many are that? Will that be out of total? So yes, yeah, so five of the six units are three bedroom units. So there's one two bedroom unit, uh, Mr. Stanbridge. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the board? With that, I'll take public testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted a butters meeting for this project in October of 2022. No butters attended the meeting. The applicant also met with the Eagle Hill Civic Association twice. Uh, the association voted to support the project with 11 residents in favor and five in opposition. The association mentioned the building needs more space for trash, which I, which I think Jeff um, touched upon. Um, they would like to see more storage room and uh, permeable land. Our office has received 16 letters in support, and our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, any other raised hands? Yeah, we have a few raised hands here. Uh, any, anyone else from the elected officials office? Um, Bob, I see you. Are you looking to get the testimony here as well, Bob? Bob? Um, yes, hi. I'd like to ask Jeff the size of the spaces, the parking spaces, what the length and the width are. So the, the hey, Bob, um, the, the all the four spaces are full size, so eight and a half by 20, and then there's two compact spaces uh, in the rear. OK, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. And then for testimony, we'll start with Darlene and then go to Phil. Darlene, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, my name is Darlene Healy. I'm at 242 East Eagle Street. I am uh, five houses up from um, where they intend to build this six-story unit, and I am okay with that. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. And Phil? Thank you. Yeah, I support this project too. I think it's uh, I think it's well thought out. <clears throat> I like the plan. I'm just two doors down at 278 East Eagle, and I think okay. this would be great for the neighborhood. Wonderful. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Sebastian. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is Sebastian Parra from the East Boston Media Support Councilor Gabriela Coleta, and the councilor would like to go and support based on the support of the committee. Thank you. Thanks. No, Thank you. Uh, hands. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board. Sorry, yes. uh, Madam, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Councilor, uh, Michael Clarity, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Clarity, Thank you. Ms. Ben Barraza, do you, do you want to hear BPD's testimony? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, recommendation. Okay. Mr. Hampton, are you available? He does not seem available. Okay. Um, 
CPDA recommends denial without prejudice. Proposal contemplates a building that is excessive. Proponent should consider a structure with reduced height and the removal of off-street parking spots to better accommodate units with a three-story format. With that, may I have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I would like to um, make a motion. Uh, I do see along the street that there is a, a masonry building that is kind of higher in story. With that, I would like to make a motion with for provisal to okay. um, to approve with for provisal. The first one being that the ground floor parking and layout be reviewed by BPDA and BTD to maximize rear open space. So the second would be to remove the two parking spaces at the rear, the th which are compact. The three are uh, BPA review of fourth floor massing and exterior materials, materials to distinguish the three townhouse typology. And then four is to provide a five foot um, left side yard setback to provide five feet clearance from the abutting property. So only at the, only at the corner. Okay, do I have a second? I'll yes, second that. Okay, Ms. Pedraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much, Madam all right, we'll, we'll hear, hear the last uh, 9.30 and take a, a break after that. Okay, next we have BOA 14111319, Falcon Street. Uh, the applicant is 148 Falcon Street Realty Trust. They are seeking to confirm occupancy as a two-family, however, change to a four unit residential dwelling by adding in rear addition, renovating living space into the basement and adding rear and roof decks. Their violations include East Boston iPod applicability, use regulations, roof structure restrictions, um, proposed off street parking is insufficient, floor area ratio excessive, height is excessive in terms of stories and the, um, the feet, uh, side and rear yard insufficient. Is the applicant here? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, and through to the members, uh, Richard Linz, the business address of 245 Summer Street, East Boss, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, this project is actually located one, one street over from the prior presentation in the Eagle Hill section of East Boston. Um, the existing photo here on the screen shows the existing condition of the um, uh, two-family dwelling. Uh, this property uh, has been a, a nuisance property prior to my client acquiring it. It's uh, currently vacant. Uh, there was an extensive amount of uh, cleanup that has already gone on in the property, including the removal uh, of, of uh, rodents and uh, a substantial amount of trash that was in the building itself. Our proposal would change the legal occupancy of this building from two units to four units, complete a, um, a full renovation of the building, which would upgrade the life safety, including the addition of sprinklers. If we jump to the next slide, we can just get a quick uh, context overview of the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, I would direct your attention, um, uh, members of the board, to the lower right corner uh, to show what the surrounding context uh, appears to be for this section of Falcon Street. As you can see, we do abut Condor Street, which is the street directly behind us. Uh, Condor Street uh, has been uh, the focus of uh, new opportunities for development in this section of East Boston. Uh, I will also point out that the buildings along Falcon Street are very consistent uh, in size and context for what we're proposing uh, for the renovations at 148 Falcon. Directly behind us is a 12-unit uh, multifamily new, new building which was just recently built uh, at four stories. And as you can see, it's a pretty dense uh, building located uh, directly behind our site. If we can go to um, slide eight, uh, that will show the proposed rendering for the building that we're uh, looking to Excellent, there we go, perfect. Um, so as you can see here, I believe we have Eric Zacherson from Context here as well. Uh, we are looking at some of the other uh, buildings along this side of Falcon Street, including the one that's actually four buildings down that was recently renovated to try to keep uh, with some of the character that we typically see in the Eagle Hill neighborhood. Um, based upon what we typically hear in Eagle Hill uh, neighborhood, the 
Uh, proposed renovations would result in three three bedroom units. Those are all roughly around 1,100 to 1,200 square feet. And then one two bedroom unit, which would be lo located at the lower level. Uh, although the violation and refusal letter did indicate basement, I would point out when we see the elevations, that is a full walkout level. Uh, and so we're able to not only achieve appropriate ceiling height, but uh, light and air inside uh, of the unit based upon its uh, uh, location from uh, the grade at, at, at the sidewalk on Falcon Street. If we could scroll down to the next slide, we can uh, get to the, you know, probably go to the next slide after this. Uh, plan. So with respect to the site plan, um, members of the board, we do see the existing building uh, is already non-conforming with respect to the side yard setbacks. We have a 1.3 foot setback on the left side and about a two and a half foot setback on the right. While the prevailing setback requirement of the district is two and a half feet, because we are proposing uh, multifamily use, uh, that's considered other use under Article 53, and therefore the required setback is actually five feet. Uh, our proposed addition does not uh, exacerbate or increase any of the setback, uh, or non-conforming setbacks currently. We do have our structure uh, actually go within 17 feet of the rear property line, and the decks actually extend a little bit further, so the decks are actually about uh, 10, a little over 10 feet from the rear property line. I would point out that because this is uh, considered a shallow lot, it does qualify for the shallow lot exception under Article 53. And therefore, while the 30 feet is typically required, we're able to reduce that down to about 23 feet as the required setback uh, for this area. And I would point out again that that 12 unit multifamily is located directly behind us, uh, which sits at four stories. If we scroll to the next, uh, we can walk through the floor plans. <clears throat> so as you can see here, uh, reading from, actually it goes from right to left, um, the lower level uh, basement plan uh, is the two bedroom unit. Uh, we do have some outdoor space uh, shown at the back of the property. And then units, uh, the units at levels one, two, and three uh, are all actually pr pretty similar in size with the layout of all being uh, three bedroom units. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we do show a roof deck that is accessed from the rear uh, decks. That roof deck uh, is exclusive to the upper level only, so unit three would have uh, the exclusive rights in that roof deck. Uh, with respect to the zoning, uh, this is located in a 2F2000 district, therefore we do require relief for the proposed uh, four-unit building, uh, but as I had mentioned, there are a typical exam or number of examples that are typical in this neighborhood of not only three and uh, four, but also multifamily uh, sized uh, buildings. We do meet the lot size and lot width uh, for the district. Uh, 2,000 square feet is the minimum. We're slightly above that at 2,188. Then we do meet the lot width at 25 feet. Uh, again, with respect to the side yard, those conditions already uh, present a non-conforming condition at 1.3 uh, and 2.3, uh, both uh, left and right. Uh, we do require a five-foot setback by changing the occupancy from the two to four. However, I would point out that the existing right side yard uh, is shared uh, at 2.3 on our side at about a little over two and a half feet on the neighbor's property to allow for at least a five-foot uh, passageway that comes through the buildings to allow for egress from the rear of the property. Um, as I mentioned, our rear yard requirement is about 23.75 feet based upon the exception to the Article 53. The building itself uh, sits at about 17 feet and the decks uh, go with it about a little over 10 and a half feet uh, to the rear yard setback. We don't really change anything with respect to the front yard because that is already the existing condition uh, with the exception of the addition that we are uh, putting at the uh, third level. Uh, we do have about 275 square feet of open space in total and that includes the rear yard, the proposed decks and the roof deck. Um, under Article 53, uh, there is actually no requirement for open space, although this uh, not necessarily uh, something that I think is uh, preferred by the board. We do provide uh, open space that's uh, in, uh, specific to each particular unit uh, in, in, the, in the project. Our FAR will be increased to a 2.39. 0 0.8 is the maximum of the district. However, this property, again, is already non-conforming with respect to FAR and already exceeds the minimum requirement. So that increases what we're requesting relief for. Uh, while our building will be three stories, uh, two and a half stories is uh, what is permitted under Article 53, uh, but I believe that the uh, examples that we've shown along uh, that section of Falcon Street uh, keeps this proposed project with, well within the context of what's seen in the immediate vicinity. Uh, the height limit is 35 feet in the district. We're slightly above that at 36.1, I believe, with the roof deck. Uh, and last but not least is parking. 
Uh, currently, uh, there is no parking requirement for the two units uh, that presently exist as they predate uh, the enactment of the zoning code. Article 53 states that we're only required to provide parking for the additional units we propose. So in this case, two additional parking spaces would be all that's required under zoning, uh, and it is quite practical to uh, introduce a curb cut to this site uh, and to add any off-street parking if we're able to do that. Uh, it would be to the detriment of the surrounding neighborhood as well. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, stop and answer any questions of the board. Thank you, Mr. Lins. Uh, Ms. Betabraza, do you have any questions on the plans? Um, I just want to confirm that the roof deck, is the roof deck for all units or just for the exclusive, for the fourth unit? Yeah, through the chair, uh, Ms. Betabraza, that's uh, exclusive to unit four only. Okay, and um, in regards to your left side elevation, you have windows, uh, which are mostly the bathrooms and uh, I think I just saw there were windows for the bathroom on the left side um, and in a hallway to the washer dryer. What's, what, if, what's the space from that elevation to the abutting property? Um, I, I believe Mr. Zacherson um, is on the call. I'll defer to him. Uh, yeah, I, I'm here. Sorry. Um, the question was on the right side. What is the distance to the no, property on the, line? No, on the left side. On the left side. Um, is the right side you have two and a half? Yeah. You have two and a half feet set back. Yep. But what's the left side? And on the left side, we have an existing um, 21 inches. So all, the windows you see but on the left exist, side are only. Existing, I'm sorry to interrupt. An existing of the 21 inches that you that the structure currently is on are there windows there yeah and the, there are the existing windows there are no new windows planned on the left side well, within that 21 inch uh, zone okay and you're in the abutting property um how close are they to the property line oh that i don't have it in fingertips I, I think we can go to, um, if I may, we can go to uh, the street view uh, that probably will show uh, the proximity of the existing buildings, uh, probably back up to either slides four, five, or six. That's probably the next one uh, forward. Uh, next one, next slide. There we go. Right, but you're you you are. Uh, can you remind me what's your existing uh, left side setback? 1.3 feet. 1.3 feet, and you're keeping it at 1.3? Correct. So the building, uh, the existing plan of the building that we see here is not is not intended to change. Right. So that means that your abutting property probably is at, it's two feet away or one foot away? I would say distance between walls. Yeah. This is yeah, I would say about, probably about two feet, correct. Okay, all right, thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Are there any other questions? questions I, have from the question. board? I have a question. Yeah. I might have this wrong, but in my personal notes, I have that the side setback is 0. 0.3 feet on the left side for the like new construction. Can we confirm that or? Well, that's confirmed. In the rear, the addition, on that side uh, comes up very close to the property line and has no windows. Okay. Can we see I that on the right? But, but do we know if there's windows on the? But we don't have photos of your adjacent, of the adjacent property, and to understand if they have windows. I don't. I don't have those. No. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And I apologize. I thought the question was regarding the existing building itself. So yes, I believe the addition does come closer, but. We could certainly look at that. So, I mean, can you explain the reasoning for the addition being less than half a foot to the left um, lot line? Yeah, we took the, the back piece and we shifted it to, to the left side so that we could have windows on the right side and have them be three foot from the new windows be three foot from the property line. Um, and then uh, the building just got very narrow if we didn't uh, get it close to the left side. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? 
Um, you ready that, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Stembridge. Um, just hopefully, because what will the uh, basement space be used for? Um, so if we jump to the floor plan, which is at, um, I believe we're at um, page nine or 10. That is uh, intended, uh, Mr. Stembridge, for a um, uh, residential unit. But as you can see in our, if you could scroll down further, please. Uh, why don't we go to the elevation further, further down. Next slide, please. Here we go. So we see on the right-hand side the proposed floor layout. Uh, and that shows the two bedroom unit uh, with a living space. We can jump to the next slide for elevations. Uh, two slides ahead, please, we'll show uh, the, here we go. So the difference in height from the sidewalk down to the rear of the property, from the rearmost property line, uh, is about a 10 and a half foot separation uh, or grade difference. And as you can see, we do have the ability <clears throat> to introduce uh, full size windows on that side. Uh, as well as a, uh, a clear walkout at the back portion of the property. So does that mean there'll be one means of egress? I, Eric, if you could clarify, I thought there yeah. were. Yeah. Uh, there are actually two means of egress from this because you can walk out the back um, through the living room onto the rear deck uh, and enter the common stair at the front of the building. Okay. Thank Technically, you. because the building will be sprinkled, it could be a single means of egress, but we have two. Thank you. Uh, may I hear a public testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted a butters meeting for this proposal in August of 2022. One of butter uh, attended the meeting and stated that parking was very difficult in the area. Uh, the applicant also met with the Eagle Hill Civic Association twice. The association voted uh, nine in support and nine in opposition. Those who supported believe the house really needs the upgrade. As uh, Richard mentioned, uh, there were a lot of comments regarding um, rodents uh, activity. And those who opposed stated that parking is also difficult in the area. Um, at this time, our office would like to refer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? elected officials office no and i have no additional raised hands thank you okay uh is mr hampton with us i am madam chair my apologies for missing the last couple of cases okay. um bpda uh recommended denial without prejudice our focus was more on the rear addition in the in the increased lot coverage um so that was our concern on this case uh, my only suggestion if the board deems approval that we do design review and maybe limit the scope of rear addition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? I will make a motion to approve with design review for that rear addition and special consideration to that left side setback. With BPDA design review? Yes. Are there, is there a second? Can we just add, a, can we add another Sorry. proviso that there's no building code violation? Ms. Weewell? Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Okay, do I have a second? Okay. Thank you. Ms. Pettibrazo. Uh, Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Weewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Uh, Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Uh, can we take a 15 minute stretch bio food break? Thank you. Thank Next you very much. Morning stopped. 20, 20, 15, 1235.
Okay. <laughs> Looks like it. Sounds good, Madam Chair. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll call, uh, Ms. Petabraza. Here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shepard. Here. Okay, Mr. Valencia. Here. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Wewell. Here. Mr. Langham. Mr. Langham? He's here, Madam Chair. Yes. yes. Okay, Okay. and I, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. All right, excellent. Let's proceed with the 1030s. <laughs> Okay. We have BOA 1405027 for 29 Orange Street. The applicant is Ivan Hernandez. Uh, the applicant is seeking to construct a new two family townhouse. The violations are the side yard, yard is insufficient and then floor area ratio is excessive. Excellent. Is the applicant here? Can you walk us quickly through your uh, proposal? Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, we're proposing, uh, actually here with my client, uh, Mike Lambo, um, who also joins us. Um, I'm, we're proposing a, uh, a townhouse units, uh, two family townhouse units, side by side, typical uh, layout um, on an existing empty lot in, uh, on Orange Street, 29 Orange Street in Roslindale. Um, as you see there by the uh, plans, uh, made four, um, the unit is going to basically consist of an unfinished basement space on the uh, in the basement level. Uh, first floor unit would be a side by side uh, open living area with uh, mud room entrance from the side, parking uh, spots, and then um, stairs that would lead up to the uh, second floor level, which would be the next slide. Uh, on the second floor, it would consist of uh, three bedrooms, two bathroom, a typical layout master suite um, with a laundry space. And then um, again, stairs that would lead up to the upper level half story uh, with a, uh, an open space up on the um, half story level. Um, the back portion of the house would contain a uh, semi-flat roof uh, combination of slope and roof uh, uh, slope and flat roof area and then the uh, front would be a, a gable roof that would uh, be parallel to the street side to side if you go to the next slide you'll see the plan of the roof there um, there would be a, a dormer facing the front of the uh, of the house um, and then that uh, minor uh, flat portion on the back of the uh, of the house with the uh, slope um, if you proceed to the next slide, the uh, elevation on the upper left side is uh, the front elevation of the house. Um, again, single front entrance door. Our objective here was to kind of sh make it look like a single family house um, and try to keep it more in, in, in line with the uh, other um, structures on the street. Um, up above, you'll see the, uh, the, the dormer. Uh, uh, right side elevation shows that's the right side of the house uh, entrance to the mudroom area. Uh, up above, you can see the, the gable with dormers, and then uh, again, the, uh, the rear uh, roof portion. Um, there's uh, stairs to, from the, to the back of the yard, which uh, are shown uh, with that platform of steps on the uh, right side, and then front porch to the left. Um, which would uh, bring you out to the street. The uh, lower left elevation is the rear of the house or the structure, uh, showing the two egresses from the units, uh, second egresses, coming out to a platform and steps to the uh, backyard. And then the uh, left side or lower right side, which is the left side elevation, shows the pretty much the uh, mirror image of the uh, right side with uh, entrance to the mudroom area, uh, rear and front uh, egresses, and then the uh, other side of the dormer. If you, um, I think uh, that's it for the plans. Um, actually, if you go to the next slide, you'll see the uh, site plan here. Um, 
And uh, as far as uh, side setbacks, uh, front setback, I believe for the most part we're fine. I'm not sure if that side setback violation might be because of the two window wells that we're proposing um, for the uh, uh, right and left side there. Um, but uh, we, we basically meet the front setback, side setbacks for the most part, and then the uh, rear setback at the 40 feet. Um, the uh, main issue here is the, uh, the floor area ratio. Um, and then the side a setback, which I believe is for those wells. That's uh, pretty much our proposal. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. <clears throat> Ms. Barbaraza, have you had a chance to review the plans? I have, Madam Chair. The plans are adequate. I just wanted to ask, what do you propose? What do you What are you proposing potentially in the basement that you're using egress windows? Uh, right now, it's going to be unfinished basement space. Um, there's no plan for the basement. It's just simply an unfinished basement. The reason for the as the windows being incorporated is in the future, if, if they want to finish it, uh, that they have it set up for that purpose. But um, okay, what's your ceiling height in the basement? It's uh, seven six minimum, I believe. It okay, was. okay, that sounds that sounds good. Um, no further questions. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other questions from the board? <clears throat> Hearing none, um, Mr. Hampton, can you uh, weigh in if you're still here? Yeah. Thank you, Ma Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, we recommended approval with design review. Um, I've never seen window placement as a proviso, but there must be a reason for it. So we're just looking at the scale of dormers and window placement, but on board for uh, approval. Thank you. Um, may I Jeff, have- I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Jeff, I, I agreed with you. I, th I thought that proviso um, did, didn't make sense to me, but I'm, well, glad then you, I, I'm glad you called that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, may I have public testimony? Good morning, Chair, members of the board. My name is Ujo Noji from the mayor's office. Um, we hosted the meeting for 29 Orange Street on um, the 15th of November. There were about three people that were there. Everyone seemed to be in general support. There were some questions on building use, um, whether it would be used for family members, and some were concerns regarding parking and the aesthetic of the house. Um, but the homeowners said that they would be working to meet those concerns. And my office has received two letters of support in regards to this project. And at the moment, we would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Are there any other raised hands? Okay, hearing none, uh, may I have a motion? Motion. 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 Okay. And Ms. Betterbraza, you seconded? Correct. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? <clears throat> I missed the yes, but I think you said yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we have BOA uh, 1417892 one, for 31 Wellington Hill Street. Uh, the applicant is seeking a curb cut for three parking spaces. Um, their violations include rear and side yard insufficient as well as off street parking and loading. The applicant here? Yes. Good afternoon. Thank um, you. This is Angela Middleton. On behalf of the owners at 3 and Wellington Hill Street, we're happy to be here to request a relief from the Board of Appeals for our request for a curb cut at our owner-occupied three-family fam condo building. As you'll see from this rendering, particularly the sketch on the left, there is no curb mm -hmm. cut, but the driveway does allow for cars to be parked here, taking cars off the street. Additionally, in each unit deed, off-street parking is included. 
We've gone through the requested process and have received unanimous support from our neighbors, elected officials, and neighborhood associations. At this time, the owner of the third floor unit, Brittany Nichols Barrows, will discuss the community support we've received and the benefits in the yep. system. We will hear from uh, ONS on the community process, so you do not need to talk about that. But can you can you let us know current? So currently, where are they parking? Where are the residents parking? Sure, uh, I'm happy to. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Brittany. So I was going to say we're currently parking on the street. Um, we have at times in the past had to park in our driveway um, due to a lack of street parking. And when we have done that, have been ticketed by the city to the tune of $200 or $300 for parking in our own driveway. I, I think that it is important to understand the context of our request as well. If you don't mind scrolling down to our last slide, seven. Yeah, because that show, shows where the parking is. Yes, I believe it's in that plan on slide two. Yeah, just point that out to us, please. So if you look here on the left side, this biggest drawing, which is an aerial, it is to the right. And so it is this um, lane here that tapers off. And so that is the driveway, which wraps around to the back of the house, which continues the concrete. This is all concrete. To the right of the driveway, as you're looking in this rendering, is a fence and an open lot. Uh, that lot cannot be built on. That lot is owned by our neighbor that's behind our house who owns that home. And we have also gotten a letter of support from him to have access to the driveway. So and are so, these cars parking basically in tandem, but triplet along that Tandem, side? correct along that sliver so they all be yes. parked one okay so is there anyone that's considered a front yard parking a front yard parking yeah where does the last where does the car closest to the the sidewalk where would that land uh, i think the parking is at the rear there's like um there's like three spaces at the rear not at the front so that's, that's what i'm trying to get clarification on yeah Yes, according to this drawing, there are three spaces at the rear. Um, we could certainly park there. However, it's really difficult to get cars out of there. So, you know, we'll go with what we're permitted for, but it's also possible to park in tandem in this driveway here. And though it's not front yard, if you have three cars parked here in this driveway, the last car actually is still by the house, not by the front yard. Did you have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. Um, is there a tree in the back of the property? And I'm just wondering if you are going to build the parking spaces in the back, is that tree, is part, do you have to cut a tree? No. So is that that tree belongs to a property or to the neighbor? Yes, neighbor. that's our property. All of this that you're looking at here in the drawing is our property. There's space for three spots behind the house. We would not have to do any construction. There's also spots for three cars next to the house in this driveway with tandem parking. Okay, are there other questions from the board? I would love to hear from Bob Danico. That would be great because his hand is raised. Go for it, Bob. <laughs> yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bob Danico, BTD. Uh, these plant, plants are very poor, and I can't see the three spaces are reflected on this drawing. And um, I'm really nervous about uh, the rear area. And uh, quite frankly, I don't think you can fit three spaces there, and it'll have very poor maneuverability. And um, if the board so chooses so, um, you know, uh, if they want to prove it, I would like to put uh, in a proviso uh, for BTD review. But from what I can see, there's no space reflected on the plans, and uh, that makes me uncomfortable. So uh, 
At this point in time, I'd like to request denial. Excuse me. I don't know that we are at the point of denial. I would really appreciate being able to finish our proposal. And without having been at the property, it's not really easy to understand what the layout is here. So we're happy to answer I, any more clarifying I'm sorry. questions. I, I'm sorry. Just, uh, just to um, <clears throat> just in terms of the review of the drawings, um, there we do need a survey drawing. Um, the, the drawings are incomplete to understand what is the curb cut uh, dimension being proposed, what's the aisle with, what are the proportions of the parking space. So uh, drawings are lacking in terms of surveying. How, how would you suggest that we go about getting those drawings? We've been through this entire process and are now sitting at this appeal having used these drawings throughout. I think you need a professional engineer <coughs> to because we cannot okay we cannot see from here any dimensions that's why i was asking you were you planning to park on the side because i actually couldn't tell there were drop like spaces being allocated to the the rear um so I, I think it's it's difficult to see from here whether you can actually fit three parking spaces i you know what i I really have to walk through some of the context around this proposal for the board to understand um, what we're really dealing with here. If you don't mind. Do, do I, you have the, the information about with for us or can, can you provide can we that? Put a, can we put a motion forward, um, Madam Chair? I, I think so, yes, please. I'd like to put forward a motion of deferral to allow the applicant to, allow the applicant to get survey drawings that depict um, parking dimensions, curb cut width aisle, uh, parking spaces, and that they also review BTD design guidelines for off street parking that's online. Thank you. Excuse, excuse me. You know, uh, we've been, sorry, the, may I have, there's a motion on the board. May I have a second? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Mr. Valencia? So, I'm um, sure I was on mute. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lubo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Stembridge? Yes. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Ms. We will, if you could provide them with the date. So, so basically, we, we need uh, better drawings that have the, the information and the dimensions, et cetera, that uh, Ms. We did everything that you were supposed to do. I don't understand why it's, this is happening. I, can, I, can I just, you know, we've been through this process for months and actually years. Um, <clears throat> this is our second time going through this. And so to wait for nearly two and a half hours to get to this point, I would just appreciate two minutes of your time to really have an understanding of what it is that we need to do in the context of our proposal. We understand that. However, we, we, not, we will not be able to make a vote without the information that is provided. And so it would make I, more sense for you to go back to s provide that information, and then we can hear the proposal in full. We, I, we already make, we've already made a, a, a motion, and it's already carried. I understand That's that we need to do. I understand. I understand. That. Are you no, you, you surely do not understand. Please give me two minutes to speak with you and the board about our proposal and let us ask our questions so that we can get this curb cut approved. We've spent hours on this. I'm asking you for two minutes of your time. That is not an unreasonable request. Madam Chair, we have March 28th at 11.30 available. Um, I would also suggest the applicant consider a digital copy of the plans. The creases in the plans make it difficult to read. Thank you. Computers can zoom. You can zoom in and look at things, right? Do you have the ability to make We can, things however, like what we've indicated is that there's insufficient information on the plans currently. We so, appreciate the 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 context that you want to provide, but without the basic information, it's it, it, we would be unable to approve at this time. So, so I, think, I think we're trying to offer you the opportunity to go back and provide that information so that we can make an informed decision. 
So Madam my question Chair, is, at, Ma sorry, the, yes, Ms. Benabraza. Madam Chair, I make a recommendation that the applicant contacts Jessica um, and Jessica can provide the ONS uh, neighbor liaison and clarify with Jessica and the ONS liaison what we're specifically requesting, which is a surveyed drawing of the proposed parking. At whose cost? Thank you. I, we need to, to move on, I'm so sorry. Please please contact ISD and, and Jessica directly. <clears throat> next case, please. Okay, next we have BOA 1345655 for 11 Spring Garden Street. The applicant is Chow Nugan. Sorry, I know I probably butchered that. Um, and the applicant is seeking to demolish an existing single family home and erect a four story two family home. Um, and their violations include the lot area is insufficient, lot width insufficient, frontage is insufficient, floor area ratio is excessive, height is excessive in terms of stories and feet, usable open space insufficient, side yard insufficient, and rear yard insufficient. Is the applicant present? Yes, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Kevin Cloutier. Uh, I'm an attorney uh, representing the applicant and owner, Chow Wynn. I have a business address of 1990 Center Street in West Roxbury. And we're also joined by the project architect, Gavin Driscoll. And uh, if I can just take the, uh, quickly take the sort of the high view and then pass it over to Gavin to talk the design. We believe this is an excellent opportunity for the board to <laughs> Uh, approve this project, which would allow for an additional single, uh, an additional dwelling unit on Spring Garden Street in Dorchester, but without um, increasing any off-street parking. Uh, Spring Garden Street is a pretty tight um, uh, road. It's one way, and parking is certainly one of the primary issues there. And, and I just provided, if you would stay on this first slide for now, uh, this shows obviously the home that we're seeking to demolish and then to create a two-family uh, four-story uh, home. It would include both units would have three bedrooms and two and a half baths and they would each be 1,771 square feet and again we would have sufficient off-street parking and, and a first floor garage area and the photo on the right just gives a little bit of the area context. Uh, with that I'd uh, pass it over to uh, Mr. Driscoll to talk the plans and I'll uh, briefly touch on some of the zoning and mitigation factors. Thank you. Uh, thank you Kevin. Uh, you can please go to the next slide. Uh, this is just a copy of the direct butters that we have uh, letters uh, for approval for. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, there's just some uh, pictures for context. On the left-hand corner, you can see a uh, picture of the existing home. Uh, there is a shared driveway um, that is deeded not to be allowed to be parked in. Um, on the bottom left-hand corner, that's the rear of the property. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner, um, you can see the, the rear of the park the rear part of the property as well and that on the uh, upper right hand corner picture you can see the existing home um, on the right location uh, you can go to the next slide the uh, footprint of the building is staying the same left to right we are extending it to the rear and to the front um, the like kevin said the total square footage is 3542 square feet of living space on a lot that's 2175 square feet and we are in a, a 2F5000 zone with a 1.63 uh, FAR. Uh, we are proposing a mirror image uh, units from the front and the rear. I um, mean, go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is just the official plot plan uh, showing the project. Uh, you can go to the next slide. And then here is the existing condition plan. Uh, if you can go to the next, next slide, please. Um, you can see here on the left side is the um, the garage plan. We do have an oversized garage because of the um, maneuverability. Um, the spot is um, 18.6 by 23. Um, we know it's going to be tight, but you can um, get the two cars in there because Spring Garden Street is such a, a, a small street with only parking on one side. And during the neighborhood process, parking was um, is a big aspect of it. Um, so we wanted the two units to have um, two off-street parking. Um, if you can go to the next slide, I'll just run through the plans quickly. Um, on the first floor, we're going to have uh, living living room, kitchen, dining, around 600 square feet per unit. 
And then on the uh, third level is going to be the master bedroom, uh, master bath um, for each unit at also 600 square feet. And if you go to the next slide, yeah. on the upper level, um, it's uh, we're actually stepping back five foot six from the front of the building, and we're going to have two bedrooms with a bath on the top there. And we are also pulling it back five foot six from the, the rear of the property as well. Um, and then there's a roof plan on the left side. Um, if you can just go to the next slide and show you the elevations. Um, in the upper right hand corner, you can see the front elevation on Spring Garden Street. Um, on the left side is where the Schneer driveway is. Um, you can see from the elevation that we uh, put that entry door on the front to get the, um, the same aspects of the other buildings on the street with the, like the representation of the three family home, with the same uh, characteristics. On the left hand side, you can see the um, yeah. there's two oversized doors, one for each unit, we, aesthetics of having two um, the oversized so that the cars can have the maneuverability to get off into those uh, oversized spots. And then on the bottom right hand corner, you can see the rear, elev rear elevation. And then on the bottom left hand side is the uh, right elevation, which will have one out of five rating because it's the uh, the distance from the uh, property line. And if you can go to the next slide, um, there's just the line of sight diagram that shows the view from Spring Garden Street. Um, I can leave it there and answer any questions. And, and if I could just address to some of the zoning issues, because of the size of the lot, which is um, 2,175 square feet and a 2F 5,000 zone, by virtue of having an ERT, which is because we're looking to demolish and build something new, there are already a number of automatic violations that are baked into that, including lot area, frontage, side yard, and rear yard. Though I suggest that the size of this lot is not abnormally small or inconsistent with a lot of the lots in the surrounding area. So some of those uh, zoning violations, again, no matter what we wanted to build in, in, this, in this place, uh, we, those violations would automatically be triggered. And again, this is going to be an owner-occupied two-family. Mr. Wynn has lived in this property for over 20 years and has been a Boston resident for 30. His daughter would be graduating UMass Boston soon would likely be moving into that second uh, home. With respect to some of the issues that have been raised during the community process, which began in 2019, in fact, this is the fourth iteration of the project. Um, actually, this is a great slide to stay on. Uh, regarding the height, as you can see, that fourth story has been set back from both the front and the rear to avoid any of that additional massing onto either um, Spring Garden Street or to the rear. So the top of the third story is actually 28 feet. The top of the fourth story, which again is set back and out of the line of sight from Spring Garden, is 37, which is only two feet higher than the uh, allowable 35 feet. And if you look at the top left, in fact, those, those triple deckers, which are very common for this neighborhood, uh, with that sort of raised little parapet at the top, essentially the top of our proposed uh, 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 building would essentially be equal to that, to the just to the right of it, again, at about 37 feet. And, and secondly, the other, the other primary issue being with the parking, we did engineer that parking. If actually you want to go back to slide, um, slide yeah. number seven, uh, we do have, I mean, we're required one off street parking per unit. We do show two there. Practically, it'd probably be one car in either garage, but the, 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 the single parking space would certainly be sufficient. I think two would be tough. We're just showing that we've engineered it, that two can get in there, uh, but we are providing one off street parking, a legal off street parking spot per unit. And we suggest that would certainly mitigate uh, what is one of the primary concerns with any sort of redevelopment or development on Spring Garden would be uh, parking congestion. And so uh, for those reasons, uh, we suggest that this is, a, a, I think, a great opportunity uh, to allow a, uh, an additional dwelling unit owner occupied without adding to any further off street uh, or I'm sorry, on street uh, parking congestion. And uh, if the board would entertain, I know Mr. Wynn is available. Uh, to speak if they'd like to hear from the owner about this project and why he wants this done. Thank you. Could, could, um, could you answer a couple of questions? Uh, one is, is there an existing curb cut and also uh, can, the number of bedrooms for each Yes. Oh, yeah. There, oh, there is an existing curb cut and it is deeded that no one's allowed to park in the existing driveway. Um, the neighbor on 13 has a parking space in the rear, um, so that would be an existing curb cut, an existing driveway. Um, it would be, uh, no one would be allowed to park there. And uh, it would be three bedrooms, two and a half baths each unit. So a total of 
uh, six bedrooms. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Bedrobraza, have you had a chance to review the plans? I've had a chance to review the drawings and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at the neighborhood and the neighborhood, the street is aligned with many two stories and three story buildings. Uh, I don't necessarily see a four story building on, on the street, uh, nor do I see the typology of having enclosed garage on the side elevation of the building. I just wanted to point that out. No, and, and I, but the drawings um, are adequate, um, uh, you know, so I guess the question would be um, why, you know, why are you requesting a relief uh, if you can do, you can do a two family by right, but do you need to go four stories? Well, we, for that reason, I mean, this is all driven by that uh, off street parking option. Again, I mean, I, I think it's, it, almost impossible to try to put a two family on spring garden without off street parking i mean there's just no room on that street this was an issue that was raised from start to finish by residents uh so the we, whereas we're at the level we are because i believe i don't believe you can do a two family without with off street parking in this space it's just not it's not practicable to be able to do that um, so that really drove our decision to put those off street parking spaces and i know the off street parking seemed to be pretty well uh, received uh, by the, uh, you know, by the, by the community, uh, and obviously all the immediate abutters are in support of this project uh, for those reasons. I think Bob has his hand up, his hand up. Mr. Domenico? Yes, uh, well, the, <clears throat> members, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, I'd like to meet with the TV. Again, I, I don't see the parking uh, spaces reflected on the uh, parking storage area. And that's important because uh, according to the BCP regulations, we require 50% of the parking spaces to be eight and a half by 20, and the other half can be seven by 18. But more importantly than that, although that is important, is I need to see the spaces reflected on the plan, which is what we went through a little while ago. But um, I'd like to ask for a uh, proviso that they have to uh, by BTD review, if that's okay with the board and the chief, the lady. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? I'm sure I have a couple of questions. So is that a shared easement between these two buildings? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a common use easement allowing both property owners to pass and repass uh, without obstruction, so yes. And what is the width of that drive aisle or easement? Uh, it's 11 foot six, and then we actually in, uh, inset the building on that first floor, so there's 13 three. Okay, um, I have no more questions, thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? So I have a question on the, the two feet. So it, since your violation is only two feet, are you able to do it without the two feet? I'll, I'll leave that to Gavin. I think we've looked at that every which way we can. Yeah. We already went, we started at 42 and we're down, down out of 37. Yeah, if you can go down to that, we did pull it down as much as possible, but with the the regulations, but getting the cars on that first floor, um, and then obviously having the sufficient head height in the actual spaces for a living space, we did, um, if you can just go down to the uh, one sections of the elevations, we did, um, bring down the ceiling lights for each floor um, with, uh, you can just zoom in, you can see the, the heights per floor. Um, with, we have uh, eight foot two, which is gonna be tight for parking on the first floor, eight foot six on the first floor, uh, and then on the upper levels, we do have seven foot tight. So there is a little bit of wiggle room um, with the uh, seven foot six minimum, um, but we'll just have to obviously consider the, the structure and all that other stuff to make sure that we we could try and get it down to the 35, but it, it would be very close just to, as we go through everything. We did leave a little bit of wiggle room with the, the seven foot 10, to, depending on the structure. Understood, Understood. thank you. Are, are there any other <clears throat> questions from the board? Now, is uh, Mr. Hampton still with us? I know he had to leave soon. Okay. Uh, I would just read his uh, recommendation into the into BPDA's recommendation into the record, and then we'll take public testimony. 
uh, BPDA recommends approval with proviso that plans be submitted to BPDA for design review approval. Uh, with that, uh, let me take public testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ross Cochran with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, at this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. The applicant at 11 Spring Garden Street has completed their community process with an abutters meeting on September 7th of last year. And ultimately, the local civic group, Columbia Seven Hill, voted to oppose the project after a close vote. Uh, we'd like to defer the board to the board's judgment at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office, we'd like to uh, go in opposition of the applicant today. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any other raised hands, Jessica? Uh, no, I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay, with that, uh, may I have a motion? I make a motion, Madam Chair, that I make a motion to approve with proviso that plan should be submitted to the BPDA in Boston Transportation Department for design review. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Ms. Better Braza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair also votes yes, the motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have BOA 1386782 at 3381 Washington Street. Applicant is We Serve Safely, Inc. They are seeking to install a walk-in refrigerator. Um, the the violations are non-conforming use change, change off street, parking insufficient, rear yard insufficient. Is the applicant with us? Um, I do have a raised hand there. One second. Thank you. Um, going to make you a panelist. Um, once you accept it, can you um, introduce yourself and then make yourself? You might be on mute now, but once you unmute yourself, um, be able to introduce yourself. Hello, Sergio speaking. Yes, yes. go ahead. Hi. Yes, my name is Sergio, and I'm one of the consulting managers over with Santiago's Bakery, and we are proposing to put in a walk-in cooler uh, in the rear with a uh, um, a store dry storage unit as well in the back. Um, we've already gone through the Jamaica Plain uh, community process, and we've gotten their blessing on that. Um, we've also uh, talked to our abutters as well um, about the project, and, and we haven't received any opposition. Um, our walk-in exterior cooler is going to be is not going to be adjacent to the building. There is going to be a space in between. I think one of the violations was that we were uh, within eight feet. We've actually pushed it back. Um, as well, so we actually are within that uh, that distance from the building. Uh, we currently have, you can see there, there is three parking spots where the car is, where the car is located is the, is the second parking spot where that black car is behind the one of the owners, uh, Philip. We uh, have two spots that we do use for 15 minute parking for our customers. So we, for the, the residents of the building, uh, including us, we have three parking spots. We're looking to use one of the parking spots to be able to put in this temp this uh, dry storage uh, container and a exterior walking cooler. Uh, we will have a, a walkway in there. We will be eight feet apart. Um, and, I'd be, and one of the violations is that we would need sufficient parking. Um, we do have two um, left over and we do have the possibility of having two more on the side of the building as well for a total of four if necessary and then the other one is going to be uh that it is a residential area and we are a commercial business this this uh, space has been located there for a number of years and it used to be a pizza shop before us uh, we've it existed there for uh roughly almost five years and we do need this is the container 
um, and we do need some additional space. Luckily, the pandemic actually, um, we, we did thrive and we did a very good amount of, of business and which is why we're requiring um, some additional space uh, to be able to hold our dry goods and our refrigerator uh, products. We have received approval from the health department um, to be able to house uh, our products inside of this exterior walk-in cooler as well. Thank you. Yep. Okay, well, this is this proposal is de minimis to me. Are there any questions from the board? Uh, Madam Chair, I have I did not receive any site plan or drawings. Um, okay. Jessica, do you have a site plan on file for the applicant? Yes, so that, we can, so, that we can, so that we can see which parking spaces is being given up for this dry exterior storage. Okay. And then there should be another plan in there with some more details as to where the walk-in cooler is going to be located. Do you have the parking uh, spaces uh, line drawings? as well or no? Do you have the parking spaces demarcated yeah. on the site plan? Uh, there should be another plan on there. I don't think the, the parking spaces are marked off, um, but there is okay. marked off the, where the walk-in cooler would be located. There should okay. be another another plan that we uh, submitted. Okay, and um, Madam Chair, we, we heard that they received support from the, from the abutters, is that correct? Uh, we will hear from uh, okay. public testimony in a minute. No further. Are there, are there? Thank you. Yeah, no further questions. Okay, with that, may we hear public testimony if ONS is on? Would yes. Madam Chair, you. members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, our office hosted a butters meeting on November 1st. Uh, where the applicants uh, brought their proposal to the community and addressed questions and concerns from abutters. Uh, they went on to secure overwhelming community support, um, receiving support from the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and the JP Zoning Subcommittee, um, who I believe have issued letters of support to this, uh, to this board. Uh, with that, we'd like to defer. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other raised hands, Jessica? Ms. Wewell, do you have those uh, letters on file? Yes, we have um, support from the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council, but we also have a letter of opposition. Um, only one, though. Thank you. Uh, and I'll just read BPD's recommendation. Uh, approval with proviso that plans shall be submitted to BPD for design review with special attention to screening and buffering of the container. Okay, with, with that, uh, may I have a motion? Madam, Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with, the, with a proviso to provide a survey drawing noting the parking spaces and the size of the container, the walkway, and where the screening and buffering would be uh, to the proposal. May I have a second? Second. Ms. Benabraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. The chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. We don't have this one on the agenda. I don't know. Oh, it's the next one, actually. Oh, it's slightly out of order. Oh, okay, so should we? You can hold it. Okay. One second. That's the block that we We have uh, BOA one. Three 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 one zero two. Oh, which? <laughs> um, Pick whichever one you want. All right, let's go with button. Which one? that is the order. Um, so we have BOA. Oh, back to Buttonwood. Uh, one four zero nine five four three. 
110 Buttonwood, um, and then we have BOA 1411401 118 Buttonwood. The applicant is uh, Shayla White, and uh, these are companion cases, so their um, violations are um, reconstruction extension of a non conforming building, uh, off street parking requirements. Um, you. Uh, residential dimensional regulations, excessive FAR, insufficient front yard setback, insufficient side yard setback, um, number of stories is exceeded, uh, height as well. Well, let me just make sure there's nothing new on the other one. Okay. And they are seeking to <coughs> Combine 110 and 114 Buttonwood uh, into a newly created lot uh, to be known as 110. Change occupancy from a three family dwelling to multi family with eight units. Construct a four story addition to the existing structure. And then they are proposing eight off street parking and two ancillary parking spaces that are associated with 118 Buttonwood. And these um, lots are all in common ownership. Thank you. Is Ms. White present? Yes. Hello, uh, Madam Chair, uh, oh, members of the you. board. My name is Mike Ross. I'm here on behalf of my associate, uh, Attorney Shayla White, um, law firm of Prince Lobel. I am here with uh, architect Peter Vankow. And Madam Ambassador, maybe just if you could put us on uh, page A002 so I can explain to the board uh, why we're here. <laughs> um, uh, Madam Chair, members, we are, this is a return to the board. Uh, we were before the board uh, on March 30th, uh, 2021. Uh, the board uh, rejected without prejudice uh, the um, application on the grounds of the ground floor unit. The bottom floor unit was subterranean. There were head houses on the uh, property. There was a roof deck on the proposed uh, project and there was maneuverability issues in the rear of the project. Uh, we've since um, re uh, removed this, this uh, subterranean condition of the ground floor units so that they are now ground floor units. We've removed the head houses, we've removed the roof deck, and we've uh, removed a parking space to allow for greater maneuverability uh, in the back. This page here gives you a really good sense of what we're trying to do. Uh, the white house is the existing house that will remain. It's a currently, it's a triple decker. Um, it's 110 Buttonwood. And what we would be proposing is building a, a mirror of 110 on where 114 is. So it would be very similar, in fact, to that brown house that is to the left of that uh, project. And as you can see, we will need to raise the existing one family structure that's currently at 110, at 114, by the way. And Madam Ambassador, if you go back one page, I can show you the site plan uh, well, let's find that site plan. Let's go back a little bit more. Sorry about this. Here we go. Um, I can show you the site plan. Here you can see the uh, combined 110 and 114 button would proposed uh, in the lower left-hand corner of that site plan. And then there you can see the eight parking spaces in the rear behind 110, 114 buttonwood. And those two accessory parking spaces would be behind 118 uh, Buttonwood. Uh, and this was also changed and we worked through with our uh, engineers, Howard Stein Hudson, to create maneuverability conditions that we've since forwarded to BTD to share with them as well. If we scroll now back, Madam Ambassador, <coughs> downward, I can just quickly take you through the layouts. We don't need to do that unless you want to get back to the maneuverability. Um, let's go a little bit further down. I'll take you floor by floor. One more, uh, Madam Ambassador. One more, actually, an ambassador. Here we go. So we're just going to kind of build. Um, these are all nine floor height uh, uh, floors, floor plans. Um, I'll show you the elevations in a second. But this is uh, uh, this is your average floor plan. So this is the ground floor. As you can see, it's uh, two units, uh, each with two bedrooms and two baths. The unit sizes range from 1,100 square feet to 1,200 square feet. And ambassador, you can take us to the second floor on the next slide, and you'll see, again, same configuration. Uh, in this case, there will be a bay. You can go further to the third page, the third floor, Madam Ambassador. 
we're now on the third floor. And then finally, we're on the fourth floor. One more slide. And that, that's the eight units. The elevations will give you a better sense if you go down one more, Madam Ambassador, uh, past the roof, uh, roof plan. Here we have the elevations. Um, the, uh, the upper two are the side elevations. Uh, uh, the lower left is the rear elevation. And then the lower uh, right hand corner is the front elevation. And if you go down uh, one more, uh, slightly more detailed, and, and I'll point out, this is a good slide just to point out a couple things. So as you can see, there is still access to the roof, but that is purely mechanical access. There is no roof tech up there. Uh, and so in that case, a hatch is allowed uh, because it's not being used for occupancy. Um, you can see the, um, the ground floor condition is now uh, properly uh, a ground floor condition and not a subterranean. It's only one and a half feet depressed. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a nine foot uh, ceiling height on all four floors. Um, maybe just finally, uh, Madam Chair, uh, just quickly just to, to hit on the zoning reliefs. Um, they, were, they were mentioned by the Secretary, but um, because we're expanding a, a, a three family and a two family district, that creates the, uh, a violation. There is the, um, the uh, ancillary parking uh, of the two spaces behind 118. There is the multifamily in a two family district. Uh, there is the um, um, maneuverability still remained as a violation. Uh, I think we're close there, however. FAR, we're at 1.49 and at 0 0.5 district, like many of the properties in this neighborhood. Um, the uh, front yard setback is, calls for a 15, we're at eight feet. Uh, we do comply with one of the side yard setbacks, but um, the other side we do not. Um, Height-wise, we just get there, but the number of stories we exceed, of course, the 2.5. I'll pause there, Madam Chair, and see if there are any questions. There might be one more slide after this that you might want to take a peek at, but nope, that's that. Okay, I'll stop there, Madam Chair. Thank you, and I may have missed this. Uh, is this home ownership or rentals? We are uh, intending to do home ownership here, condominiums. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Metabaraza, have you had a chance to review the plans? Um, Madam Chair, I have reviewed the plans. I have no questions. Uh, it's pretty clear. You, uh, the applicant has made some concessions from previous hearings, so I'm happy to see that. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? I have a question, Madam Chair. Um, yes. Hi, Mr. Ross. Can you talk me through how the parking spaces are assigned? Is it one per unit, and what will happen for 118 Buttonwoods parking? Sure. Um, Madam Ambassador, if you get back to that site plan that's uh, way in the beginning, that might be the best way to do it. So um, we actually exceed the required number of parking spaces because it's a pre-existing non-conforming on the triple decker. We're really only adding five additional units. And in this district, they asked for 1.25 for each new additional. So that would, that would put us at 6.25, but we're adding eight, uh, four, 110-18. 114. So those eight would serve that building, um, and it would it would be deeded according to whatever condominiums uh, docks are worked out. Uh, 118 would preserve uh, two parking spaces, but again, that's a previous non-conforming building, and in fact, it's a triple decker, uh, which doesn't. Um, well, that's that's irrelevant. It's it's a pre it's a pre-existing non-conforming building, so. Uh, we've created, we've but none of us created two parking spaces, ancillary parking spaces for 118. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Okay. Ross, there will yes, be, uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, there will be 10 parking units, in, uh, ten, 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 uh, sorry, 10 parking spots for eight apartments, eight units? Um, eight parking spots for eight units, and then two parking space for the triple decker where none existed previously. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Okay, Mr. D'Amico. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Um, I discussed this uh, parking design, uh, the Ross, and um, the adjustments were made and only the one record to approve this current design. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hampton has left, so I will um, I will read his recommendation uh, from BPDA, which is approval with proviso that plans be submitted to BPDA for design review. 
Uh, with that, let me open it up to public testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ross Cock. I'm the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, at this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. The applicant has successfully completed uh, the community process with an abutters meeting on November 17th of 2020. And they, with some reservations from the McCormick Civic Association, uh, they passed McCormick's uh, vote as well. Uh, at this time, we'd like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Perez. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Mina Perez, representing the Carpenters Union. We'd like to board our support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McGarrett, City Councilor Frank Baker's office. Uh, at this point, we'd like to hold and reserve our support of this project, although we're not necessarily against the project. Um, we do have neighborhood concerns regarding uh, the maintenance and good community upkeep of this applicant's other pro other properties in the area. So at this point, we would like to reserve our um, our support. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, are there any other raised hands? Okay, with that, uh, may I have a motion from the board? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the exterior material for the project. Thank you. Uh, may I have a second? Yes, sir. Ms. Benabaraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Is Mr. Langham? He's here, Madam Chair. He's good. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Okay, and the chair votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Okay, now we can get to Woodville. Uh, so it is um, DOA 1333102, 46 Woodville Park. The applicant is Derek Hobson. Uh, they are seeking uh, an additional dwelling unit conversion from two to four in an existing two family duplex. Uh, basements will be reconstructed into two bed apartments. Uh, their violations include use regulations, uh, dimensional regulations for the law area for additional dwelling units is insufficient, floor area ratio excessive, usable open space insufficient, rear yard insufficient, off street parking insufficient. Um, and that's what we have. Thank you. Is Mr. Hobson with us? Yes, he is. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Can you walk us through this? Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, I'm Derek Hobson, and this renovation uh, consists of side-by-side -side firewall separated duplex. Um, I built this property in 2013 and are looking to increase the living area of this project, um, of this building. Um, it's a 3F5000. The proposed addition will not increase the building's exterior footprint. The FAR will increase from 0 0.9, which it is currently, to 1.1. For the open usable space, I will add a six foot by 40 foot rear deck. It's also a, a dead end street, which I grew up on myself, um, where the kids play like in the street, there's a park behind the, uh, the street on Moreland Street. I have um, the rear yard minimum is 30, 30 feet. I have roughly 22 feet, which slants into uh, 16 and a half feet. I have uh, 13 feet in width by 32 feet in length, which accommodates uh, tangent parking for two cars on each side. Um, The finished height in there from uh, the ceiling to floor would be seven and a quarter feet. And this building that I had since 2013, I've been predominantly used for a low income. So if I'm able to add these units here, 
it would be uh, dedicated to low income. Thank you. Are you are you currently residing there, or do you plan to? Uh, no. So when how I came up with the idea to do this project, I was uh, I looked and I saw the additional dwelling units. So I initially filed this application as an ADU, but because I don't live there, I had to uh, revise it to uh, occupancy change, which I ended up doing. Okay, thank you. Have you reviewed the plans, Ms. Betabraza? I have, Madam Chair, and the drawings are adequate. Are there any questions from the board? I have one question. Yes, sir. Are, with these units, how many how many units going to be low income? All of it. It's one hundred percent low income now, and if I'm able to do it, it will continue to be uh, one hundred percent low income. I have partnerships with Boston Housing, uh, Quincy Housing, and Metro Housing Boston. So uh, any property that I own is low income. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Okay, and Mr. Hampton is not here, so I, I will read BPDA's recommendation, which is approval with proviso that plans be submitted to BPDA for design review with attention to entry and egress side parking and curb cuts and rear door door dimensions. With that, may I take public testimony? Mr. Perez? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. It is with pride and support of this uh, project. Derek is a graduate from our apprenticeship and training program. He obtained his builder license with us, and he's here giving back to the community. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Are there any other raised hands? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna entertain a motion from the board. I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve um, with the proviso uh, plan submitted to the BPDA for a design review with attention to entry and egress, side parking and curb cuts, and the rear dormer. Second. I have a second. Second, okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Betabaraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. The chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck, Mr. Hobson. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Next, we have um, BOA 1272203. Uh, the address is 5 Parker Street. The applicant is Yang Pei Ji. Um, the applicant is seeking to construct a three-story addition to the left of the existing building and convert, convert an existing one family into a three family. The violations are around the roof structure restrictions um, and the addition is changing the profile of the existing roof line as a note. Thank you. Is it Mr. Drago who's here representing? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street here on behalf of Young um, and representing 5 Parker Street in Charlestown. Uh, this is a rendering that we're looking at if the project was to be completed. And as was mentioned, we're changing the occupancy by way of uh, additions uh, from a one family to a three unit building. Uh, these would be condo units. This would also create parking um, at, at the first floor, first level of the building and lower level as it would go down uh, through the slope. So there would be three interior parking spaces that would go along uh, with those units. Um, just if we could go to the next slide quickly. This particular district is a 3F2000 and our lot size is 3,128 square feet. Um, just looking at the composition, um, the building directly to the left of us is a three unit building. Um, to the right of us is a one. Most of the buildings up and down this corridor are either two or three. Um, and all of our, uh, the units proposed, uh, both of them 
all, all three of them are three three bedroom and two bath um, just to go uh, over the layout and if you go to the next slide um, so the lower next slide please I'm sorry the, the lower level is uh, has th uh, three parking spaces in it and you can see that on the right hand side with plenty of maneuverability a 10 foot maneuverability area uh, in that parking level then when we go up to the first floor that would house unit one and that would be a three bedroom two bath 1354 square foot unit second floor would house unit two that's a 1410 square foot three bed two bath unit and then the third floor would house unit three 1,427 square foot, three bedroom, two bath unit. Uh, if we go to the next couple of slides, we do have a roof deck we're proposing. That would be exclusive right here. It's shown on the left. That's 418 square feet, and there's no head house. It's accessed by a hatch. Um, that is exclusive to unit three. Um, we have managed to keep this building almost completely zoning compliant. There is just the roof structure restriction violation. And that is due to the fact that we are raising the roof line and adding that roof deck on top. Um, I can pause for any questions that the board may have. Thank you, appreciate it. So just to clarify, you're adding parking where there was none, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. So we're going under, and then at that bottom level will be a lower level for the parking spaces that would go with the units, but we are keeping the bill. Yep, yeah, thank you. Are there questions from the board? I have one question. Yes, will sir. These, will these units be sold as condos? Correct. Yes, sir. Thank you. What's the, what's the minimum curb cut that you're proposing? So it's ten a ten foot curb cut, um, uh, Miss uh, Barraza. But there is an existing curb cut now on the left side. That we are, that will close up, but we are opening a new one in the middle for this new, uh, the new parking scheme. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? One question, one question, Madam Chair. Um, yes. There's so clearly parking for one building, is parking for both buildings? Uh, there's only uh, one building proposed, Mrs. Stembridge. We're keeping the existing structure and then by way of addition, just adding the new units. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and uh, I will read BPD's recommendation, which is approval with proviso that uh, plans be submitted to BPDA for design review. Drawing set is incomplete. Uh, and design review should give special attention to front yard setback in relation to adjacent structures and the impact of the project on the public realm. Uh, with that, I will take public testimony. Madam Chair, members of the board, Sean Breen, uh, Charleston liaison with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicants um, they, uh, went through the community process uh, and a brothers meeting was held on November 15th. Um, uh, our office received no letters of support or opposition. So with that, we defer it to the board. Thank you. Is there any other testimony, Jessica? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion to approve with BTD and BPDA design review on a front yard setback in relation to adjacent structure and the amount of parking spaces. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Ruel? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Thank you, the chair votes yes, motion carries, good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have BOA 1369296 for 131 Princeton Street. They're seeking to change occupancy from a two-family dwelling to three. 
and to renovate uh, a rear addition. Uh, their violations include the East Boston iPod, uh, the three family use is forbidden, floor area ratio is excessive, side yard insufficient, roof structure restrictions, off street parking is insufficient, the height is excessive in terms of stories and feet, and the rear yard's insufficient. Um, the applicant is Abelar Colo, but it looks like Jeff, uh, Mr. Drago is representing them. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, here on behalf of Abelar Cole, and uh, we also have Eric Zackerson from Context Design, who's the architect uh, with us today. Uh, so the building in question, I know these are attached, similar to the building to the left, our building proposes on the right, um, and the proposal is to change the occupancy uh, to actually match the building on the left. So it's a, to go from a two-family residential building uh, to a three-family residential dwelling. And this will also include renovations, in particular the exterior, uh, and also to erect uh, and infill the rear of the property for an addition carried to the third floor. Um, the uh, height uh, of the building is it's three stories, 36 feet, nine inches, that will remain. Um, we agreed also to keep, uh, as we worked with the community, the mansard roof uh, design. This is in historic Eagle Hill. And um, like I had mentioned, it would uh, basically mirror the building to the left interior with three separate floors. Um, the uh, bedroom count, just to point out now, is actually, because it's laid out as a two family, it's got a six bedroom unit and then it has a three bedroom unit. So the unit count would actually remain the same even though we're proposing to add, uh, to change the occupancy from a two to a three. If you can go to the next side, uh, slide, please, uh, Madam Ambassador. Um, this is just uh, our survey. It shows the area in the back on the left where the addition would go. If we could go to the next slide. And then we get into the, the plans on the next slide, please. And so the, the plans uh, would use the, the basement level um, as a uh, duplex unit and so that would house a media room office and laundry area uh, that would be a 1765 square foot three bedroom that would connect to the upper level uh, of the first floor and um, that would have uh, total three bedrooms and two baths we go up to the if you keep going through the slide deck uh, we go up to unit two and that is uh, 1110 square foot, three bedroom, two bath. And then finally unit three uh, would be 1,075 three bedroom, two bath. Uh, most of the violations are pre-existing. Uh, one we are creating obviously is use. We are going from a two, a two or three. Um, our FAR, our height, uh, side yard, that, uh, that is remaining the same, although it is pre-existing violations that were triggered. Um, we are being triggered for parking. We are walking distance to what Island T station, but we are not because we're keeping the building. We can't create any parking on this site. Um, and then because we're raising up that level, we have a new structure restriction as well. Um, as I had mentioned, most of the buildings that immediate area are three unit buildings, including the one we're connected to and to the right of us. Um, and we also, I know, submitted letters of support from our neighbors as well. Um, I can pause to answer any questions that uh, the board may have. Well, Mr. Drago, are you following the same, uh, I guess, format as your adjacent property? Is that how they're achieving the three uh, units? So, yeah, their units are smaller, though, because we are adding an addition in part of the back area, but it's going to have the same layout. So right now, as opposed to having, you know, uh, a hodgepodge of six bedroom and three over different levels, this would have, um, this would include the basement and then each level would be separated with the addition. And are they doing the same thing using the basement as livable space? I, I believe so. Okay. Are there questions from the board? I have one question. Yes, sir. The that basement unit, what is the height from the floor to the ceiling? Seven foot six, uh, Mr. Langham. And it's only additional space. So it's only houses uh, the media room, office, and laundry. There are no bedrooms now in that basement. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Is it possible to walk out from the office and media room? It seems like there's an alleyway, or is it, or is the egress just internally in the stairs leading to no, the there's, No, that you can get out. Okay, so there's two means of egress. Correct. Okay. Uh, and the building will be sprinklered, uh, Ms. Barraza. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Okay, I will read BPDA's recommendation and uh, take, take public testimony. Uh, BPDA recommends denial without prejudice. Proposal co contemplates an addition that is excessive in lot area coverage and reduces usable open space. Proponent should consider a project that allows for the preservation of usable open space in the rear yard. Um, with that, may I take public testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this proposal on September 2022. A current resident of the building and an abutter joined the call to express concerns regarding possible displacement. Uh, the applicant also met with Eagle Health Civic Association in October and November of 2022. The association voted to support the project with 11 members in favor and five in opposition. Uh, those who supported the project like the design and would really uh, like to see the roof line be kept as well as the historic preservation of the Eagle Hill um, architectural design. And those who oppose express concerns of possible displacement. Our office has received five letters of support, not in opposition, and at this time our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I ask you to um, have the applicant address the concerns of displacement? Yeah, so there was, uh, there there were two tenants that were in the building, didn't come to the meetings, they were short-term tenants, um, but they just wanted to ensure that we were not causing any evictions, which we committed to um, on the record at Eagle Hill and at the abutters meeting. Um, and just if I may address, I know there was a comment from the BPDA about open space. That area in the back is just a hot top area. So that is really, there really isn't any open space there now or green space that's being used by the building, just to point out. Thank you. Does that answer your questions? Yes, thank you. Okay. Is there any other uh, testimony? Okay, hearing, hearing none, uh, may I have a motion? Motion for approval with provisos of BPDA design review. That was a motion of approval? Yes. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Betterbraza, I, I second. Yep. Uh, Ms. Betterbraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Uh, the chair also supports the motion. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good luck. Okay, it looks like we have recommendations. Yes, next we have the subcommittee recommendations. Um, the first one is BOA 1363941 for 104-106 Trenton Street. Applicant is Trenton Brooks Corner Realty Trust. This was um, deferred to February 16th, um, 2023 at 5 p.m. Uh, for continued community process. And then the next is uh, BOA 1391407, 7 Armory Street. Applicant is Kevin Joyce. This was approved uh, with BPDA design review with attention to the dormer profile. Uh, next is BOA 1408249 for 8 Armory Street. Applicant is Kevin Joyce of this. Looks like there are companion cases. Uh, approval with BPDA with attention to uh, dormer profile. Uh, next is BOA 141758 for 101 Baldwin Street. Applicant is Sean Tracy. Uh, approved with BPDA design review with attention to dormer size, profile, as well as materials. Next, uh, BOA 1396700, 140 Tremont Street. Applicant 10 Temple Place LT, just approved. Uh, 
BOA 1405814-647 Boylston Street, applicant Anders Kearns, which also approved. Uh, BOA 1349367, 6 Park Lane, applicant Nathaniel Hafer and Terrell Butt Fult approved um, with BPDA I think, design review. And then BOA 1344299349 Savin Hill Avenue, applicant Chelsea Blanchard. So I think this was uh, denied without prejudice. Um, was W. Oh, withdrawn. Withdrawn. Um, then BOA 1359736, 1236 to 1238 Dorchester Avenue. Applicant Mitch Hayes is approved. Uh, BOA 1396190, 302-316 Bowdoin Street. Uh, applicant is Wayne Atkinson. This was also approved. BOA 1363414132-138 Park Street, applicant Nadej Marceline, uh, also approved. Uh, BOA 1381353301 Adams Street, applic applicant Manuel De Rosa, approved. BOA 1393784-45 Cedar Grove Street, applicant Robert Nicholas, approved. BOA 1411481, Dorchester Avenue. Applicant Stefano Carasima, uh, approved with no building code relief for the basement. Next is BOA 1395268, River Street. Applicant Mothers for Justice and Equality, approved. BOA 1370974378380 Center Street, applicant Douglas Salazar, approved. Uh, BOA 1384419, 22 Myrtle Street, applicant Michael Judge, approved with BPDA design review with attention to the design of the proposed dormer. Uh, BOA 1386. 357, uh, 56 Boylston Street. Applicant Jennifer and John Cavanaugh approved. And then we do have a rediscussion. Um, just go forward. For later. Oh, for later. Never mind. So, uh, oh, two more. Okay. And BOA 1335230510 East 8th Street. Uh, applicant John Drago. Approved with BPDA design review with attention to dormer and pitch um, of the dormer, I'm guessing, no roof deck. And uh, BOA 1338514, uh, 6 Swing Street. Okay. So, okay. So we're going to skip that one for now. BOA 1368532, 60 Chesterfield Street. Applicant Tanya Polanco approved with BPDA design review. All right, thank you. That concludes the subcommittee recommendations. Thank you. Was that, may I have a motion to approve? I'd like Should I to make put a motion? Forward. Go ahead, go ahead, Ms. Ms. Taras. I'd like to put forward a motion of approval the board's recommendation. Thank you, may I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Benbraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. All right. Almost there. I think they snuck five more cases for us today. Feels that way, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> We're all from that there. So now we have to call. All right, so next we have BOA 1094129 4011-4019 Washington Street, applicant Neil Bolt. This is an Article 80 project. Um, they're um, seeking to 
construct a new mixed use property. The property will be 19 residential units, a daycare, and a retail. There is on site parking for 17 vehicles proposed. Um, the violations include off street parking is insufficient, uh, traffic visibility across corners is insufficient. For dimensional regulations, floor area ratio is excessive, building height and feet and number of stories is also excessive. Great, is the applicant available? Yes, good morning. Uh, good, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good morning, good afternoon, members of, of the board. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yes, my name is Jonathan Gold. Uh, I am the attorney for the petitioner and the developer, and I'm, my office is at 873 Beacon Street in Boston. Uh, um, with me today is Ronald Gold, a member of the development team, and the project architect, Matt Frankie, who's here, can be responsive to any questions on, on the plans that, you, that, that I cannot answer. Uh, the, Building that you're, is being proposed, you see on the first sheet there, the petitioner proposes to raise the existing single story structure that's located on a 7,905 square foot lot at the corner of Washington Street and Lesher Street and replace it with a four story 22,753 gross square foot building containing 19 home ownership residential units, four of which will be IDP units. Uh, there will be first floor commercial tenant space, 17 parking spaces which are located on the, on the first floor, uh, 31 resident bike parking spaces also located on the first floor, and then four outdoor visitor ring and post bike spaces, uh, parking spaces located on Washington Street. Uh, the third sheet, which I believe is labeled EX1, shows the existing conditions uh, and the fourth sheet shows the uh, uh, <clears throat> Madam Ambassador uh, shows the uh, proposed conditions. The project is located within the local convenience subdistrict. Multifamily use is allowed. It's on the Forest Hills Washington Street uh, transportation corridor. Short walk to Washington to Washington to Rosenville Square and Forest Hill Station. We originally filed this appeal in July 2020, following the initial uh, refusal letter, which was dated June 6th. We're seeking the zoning relief, as, as Madam Secretary stated, for four Article 67 violations that you see in the November 7th letter. One for off-street parking, 38 spaces required, 17 provided. Floor area ratio in this district, 5.5 allowed, 2.63 is, is proposed. The building height, 35 feet allowed, 43.5 feet proposed. Height in stories, two and a half allowed, four proposed. Uh, we, we believe the redesigned drawings have addressed the corner visibility traffic violation, uh, corner visibility traffic violation, uh, but I'll leave that to, the, to Matt, uh, frankly, the project architect, to discuss that if, uh, if he so wishes. I'd like to give just some brief historical context to this proposal. For many years, this location was the home to plumbing specialties, which was operated by Benjamin Gold, who happened to be my father, the developer's father, uh, who served uh, the plumbing and, and, and plumbing supply needs of the greater Rosendale community for over 40 years. Additionally, until about a year ago, uh, the premises were occupied, the portion of the premises were leased by Little People's Playhouse, which was a child daycare that served, that, that operated here since the, until, well, from the beginning of the mid-80s until, until recently. Uh, and that use was very important to Mr. Gold, and prior to his death, he expressed his wish that this use or similar use continue in that, if possible, and we're committed to doing that. Uh, the project that appears before you today represents over three years of effort working with the community, uh, organized community, a major organized community group, uh, private meetings with the butters and community groups, uh, conversations with, uh, with Rosendale residents, meetings with the, uh, with Council and Arroyo's office, uh, discussions with Office of Neighborhood Services, uh, and, and we feel that this project has really had been taken full advantage of the public participation process. We had our 
uh, first introduction to the neighborhood back in January of, of 2020. We had been working on the project well before that in 2019. Uh, we had a first sit-down meeting with city officials, including the BPDA, in, in March of 2020. Uh, the Article 80 process resulted in two public meetings in August of 2021 and March of 2022. Uh, and continue to have ongoing and active conversations with individual members of the community all along. Uh, as you know and you'll hear, the, the BPDA was board approved the project in July of 2022. Uh, the result is we have a balanced project which we believe provides affordable home opportunities to and a number of community benefits. Uh, there are not, as we, I stated previously, there are 19 residential units on floors two, three, and four of the building, 13 one-bedroom units, four two-bedroom units, and two studio units. The, the four of the units that are ITP inclusionary units represents 20% of the total number of residential units being proposed, three one-bedroom units at 80% IMI, one unit at 90% AMI, and one at 100% AMI. Uh, there's one studio at 80%. This project has uh, uh, 10 private decks, six on floors two and three, four on the fourth floor, two of the 10 decks are reserved for the IDP units. Uh, the first floor and, and basement tenant space, you'll see on sheet plan A100 and A101. Uh, the parking, the 17 parking spaces are located on the first floor and is accessed by a garage entrance on Lesher Street. There's an existing curb cut there now. We'll be expanding that, I believe, 14 feet. But again, the project up, Matt will be able to speak to that if necessary. The resident parking, bicycle parking space is exit on Washington Street. And again, as I indicated, the post will be parking is on Washington Street. It's an environmental friendly building. We have an all electric, no fossil fuel building, very unique. And you'll see in sheet A105 is a vegetated green roof. We have electric car charging stations in the first floor uh, for the vehicle parking. There's a recycling set station for residents in the basement level. Won't get into the construction, but it's all going to be green and all high energy efficient, low VOC, super insulated, all that. A number of public improvements from the project. We have an extended sidewalk at the corner of uh, Washington and Lesher Street will be constructed with a race crosswalk and signals. We have new tree plantings on Lesher Street and Washington Street. A number of community benefits. We're going to provide small, affordable home ownership opportunities. We're going to provide those four ITP units. There'll be a financial contribution to parks to support the user experience at Hebe Field and Arnold Arboretum, which is less than one tenth of a mile away. We'll have we'll be making a financial contribution to Boston Transportation to support the Boston Bike Share Program. We're committed to work with a preschool or a daycare program as again, this use was very important to Benjamin Gold <clears throat> and the developer has at least been in discussions, has for some time been in discussions with the Boston Outdoor Preschool Network and hopes to reach an agreement so that they will be able to utilize a portion of the, of the, uh, first, uh, the first floor commercial space. Uh, the reduced parking uh, and the provision for bike parking, again, this was a subject that we discussed and came up with the community and, and the BPDA and, and feel it was a reasonable compromise. The mix will provide for the, for the better use of, uh, at least the use of public transportation by project residents and, can, and will certainly uh, 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 contribute to, you know, be, have access to the bike paths and everything that, that, are, that are in close proximity. Uh, 35, we're estimating 35 temporary construction and labor jobs will be, will be resulting from this particular project. The lot is a difficult lot and it's narrow in depth and has some significant drainage uh, and topographical constraints. And so, and, and given that we're also providing these uh, affordable market rate RIP, uh, IDP units and smaller market rate units, uh, a proposal this proposal would not be able to reduce the project size without actually, you know, and, and be able to provide the benefits, the community benefits, substantial community benefits that this project we believe is provided. Uh, at this time, uh, we're available to answer any questions you may have specific to the plans or any other questions certainly the community may have.
Thank you. I, I know Mr. Hampton is not uh, with us anymore. Is there anyone? Is there anyone else from BPDA? I understand this went through an extensive community process already, and and already uh, in large project review, and and was approved by BPDA. Is that correct? That is correct. It had a very substantial, lengthy. Like I said, there were there was one sit down meeting, for informal, two possibly, and then two public meetings before the board hearing. Uh, is there anyone from BPDA or ONS who will be able to speak to that process a little bit later? Uja and Ouch here in the mayor's okay. office. Great. We'll, we'll look forward to hearing from you later then. Um, are, are there questions from the board? Yes, Madam Chair. Mr. Mr. Gold, can you tell me more yes. about the, the, the uh, daycare? I'm uh, sorry? I see that there is a proposal for a daycare as, as well. Yeah, so. So, would you like me to elaborate that, that please? If you can take so, a, a so, few seconds just to share more about that. Yeah, so Mr. Rensha, the, the, the uh, Little People's Playhouse had been there for many, many years. And as I indicated, this was a use that was, was community-based and, and very important to Mr. Gold to continue. Uh, they vacated unexpectedly uh, a year or a year and a half ago. It was probably, you know, I believe it was right around COVID or post-COVID, but, but they vacated. They had been there since. I know I worked on a lease in 1985, so they had been there a very long period of time. And so we would sincerely hope and we've tried to sort of uh, engage, uh, and we will engage. Obviously, we're still early in the process, but like I said, we have been uh, talking with uh, the the uh, Boston Outdoor Network Preschool Network Program, and, and hope, hopeful, and they've been a supporter of our project, and hopeful that uh, we'll be able to reach some kind of agreement so they will, in fact, be able to use some of that space, some of that tenanted space, which is on the first floor and, and, uh, and the basement. Thank you. And, and there is any open space for, for the children to pay if there is, a, if there is a, a daycare in that building, in that building? There is no open space. I mean, there, there are no open space in the building for that. And I think that was one of the advantages of working with the Boston Outdoor Preschool Network, because they do make, they do make use of the Arboretum. They do make use of the Ely Field, which has the park, has the, uh, the, the playground and the, and, the, and the gym equipment and all that. So, so there is no, I mean, we have open space. There are open spaces for the outdoor decks, but frankly, that's not, we don't have any commercial space that would be outdoor space, no. Thank you. Finally, for the four affordable the units that you are proposing, uh, how many of those are one, uh, two or three bedrooms? Or what is the layout for those units? Uh, Matt, do you want to uh, jump in and, and talk about the four IDP units? I think we have, what we have is... Uh, yeah, I, I, I think... We have a four, I think we have... Two on the second floor, one of them is 563 square feet. It's a one bedroom. Uh, one of them, another second one is, I think it's unit 200 on the plans. I don't know what sheet, Matt, what sheet is that? According yeah, to the you. PDA, I can tell you right now to make it easier. Uh, there Thank are you. two units on the second floor and two units on the third. Uh, a studio and three one bedrooms. And the studio is the 563 square feet at 80% and 80 AMI. Uh, the one bedrooms range from 681 to uh, seven, sorry, 625 to 765 uh, square feet and uh, 80, 190 AMI. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there additional questions from the board? Yes, I have uh, a question regarding uh, the bus lane. The, the bus will remain in terms of this the stop right in front of your building? We have no plans to change that, and we're assuming that that, in fact, will, will stay the same. OK. And then in terms of your roof deck, it, it might have been asked already. I know it's not a roof deck. It's a kind of a cool roof, a vegetative roof. Mm -hmm. um, and, and potentially, have you considered if there was to, have, if there was to be a daycare center on the ground floor and you wanted to, in the future, provide open space for that use. Um, and can your project take on a future open roof deck based on the two cores that you have? 
Well, it's certainly an engineering question. And I know that, the, that there's no presently with a green roof that the vegetator roof won't have that access. Uh, whether that's something that we can incorporate into some design so that it could be potentially used in the future, we're certainly open to that. I mean, I think right. that's something I mean, there's we Because there's always this balance with parking and open space. Right, exactly. And I really, and I really commend um, your, you know, kind of the outreach and your proposal for the community to um, to understand that there there are a couple of daycare uh, centers along Washington Street and so it's a it's a it's a great use um, and so the question is you know how do you design an ecological building um, that considers potential change of use in the future for what the community needs are um, so I just want to, you know, you consider that, uh, you know, as, as, you know, throughout, throughout time. Um, the other thing is, you know, when we, another, I commend you as well for thinking about affordability and a lot of projects that are in front of us is, you know, claims that you, you can't accommodate, um, parking cause it, it, it's very expensive. And so, you know, how, how did you, you know, how did you make it financially possible <laughs> to provide affordability, um, reduce parking, potential community use and provide housing? Like, you know, that, that's something that is going to be in front of our board as a new board. And so, um, I'm, I'm just, you know, I would just love like an insight on that. Well, thank you. We, we work very hard to try to, re and I, we realize not everybody is happy with every decision, but we feel like it was a balanced project that, that took into all those considerations that you just mentioned. We appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, are there other questions from the board? Is that Katie? You have your hand up? Yeah. Madam Chair, I have a question. Um, how is the parking allocated between the residential uses and the commercial? Well, uh, Madam Secretary, the, the, uh, the presently, these are residential spaces. Uh, we haven't made any provision for uh, the commercial space. However, uh, they will, the spaces will not, will be decoupled in the sense that they will not be sold with the unit. And there are some unit purchasers who will not want those spaces. Uh, and they will be allocated through the condominium documents to unit owners or it, it's cer certainly conceivable that being a commercial unit owner that there may be spaces or that one space, two, whatever, that get allocated. But presently our intention is to allocate these spaces to the residents and, and some of them will want the cars and some of them won't. And then once we know that, we'll have to make a decision as to how to utilize the spaces. One more that's question. As as Yep, thank you. And so with the daycare use, there's a lot of specifics with that use, like pick up and drop off and various, you know, activities. Is was there any thought given to those who are picking up and dropping off their child in a vehicle and you know, how will that work with attention to safety and things like that? Well, it's always being having first hand experience because I worked at that plumber shop. Uh, I, I, during their occupancy, I would say that that uh, it, it was always certainly there were there were always staff members carefully who were outside on Washington Street, uh, you know, making sure that those safe that, that entry and exit from the vehicles was safe. I understand that certainly we're going to have to do some additional when working with the with the tenant. There'll have to be some additional. Uh, uh, procedures and methods and procedures in place in order to make that both effective and also safe. And, and that, that is a challenge, but I don't think one that we can surmount. I think that we can certainly take care of that. Katie, that's a really interesting question because you were, one is assuming that um, is a resource for the community. And what I thought was commendable is that this building as a residential structure also houses that need within its residence. So, uh, you know, I was assuming, because you're right, like this does not work um, if it's a daycare or a center for the outside, 
vicinity, but it is a potential resource for the families that are living in this building, you know, to be able to just go, you know, go downstairs or take the yeah. elevator. I don't think there's an elevator here, but just, sure. you know, there is an elevator. Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. You know, I thought it was really servicing the residents of the building. So you, you necessarily do not need vehicle to, to use that, but it's a right. really great question. Well, as someone who has, has, a, is in has, has a child in childcare, uh, it is a legitimate question because pe not everyone is able to walk and not everybody lives there. So uh, hopefully you will um, just look into some possibility of, you know, 15 minute drop or pick off, uh, pick up, drop off or something like that to accommodate uh, any other Absolutely. users. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't have any, not specific concerns, just to pay attention to the specificity of the use and how that use operates and just to ensure a safe environment for everyone visiting the site. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Then I will take public testimony. Ruth Juranochi here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, I attended this meeting um, just to be an onlooker. Um, I received some letters of support and opposition. I believe they should have been sent. Um, someone from BPD sent them to me as well. So that would be about, um, let me see. 14 letters of opposition and seven letters of support. Um, from the letters, you can see there are some concerns about the parking spaces and um, the amount of affordable housing. At this moment, the city of Boston, uh, the mayor's office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Would you were you were you involved in the community process when it went through BPD or is Car Mr. Newman you're also on because I think that would be helpful to understand as well. Uh, I mean, yeah. Can, so yeah. yeah. So no. So with um, with the community process for BPDA, my office does not hold those. We just attend to um, take note of what's going on so we can report back um, to the zoning board. Okay, with that, I see uh, Councillor Arroyo's office is on. If you want to speak, Jordan. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Jordan Free is here, Chief of Staff to Councillor Ricardo Arroyo. We'd like to go on the record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Perez. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of all our members that live in the neighborhood, we want to go on record support. Thank you. Jessica, are there other raised hands? Okay, hearing none, uh, I will seek uh, entertain a motion from the board. Madam Chair, I'd like to move for a motion of approval with BT BPDA design review. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Okay, the chair votes yes, the motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the board. Very appreciative. Thank you. Okay, next we have BOA 1386397. 8 Rowena Street. Um, the applicant is seeking to change occupancy from two to three family, and this um, includes converting the basement into a third unit. Their violations consist of off street parking insufficient, uh, the three family detached dwelling is forbidden, and the four area ratio is excessive. And the applicant is um, Eric Krasowski. The applicant present to speak? Uh, it looks like he needs to be added as a panelist. I don't know who's on here from B <laughs> ZBA who can do that, please. <clears throat> we sent the invite, Madam Chair. I'm sorry? We sent him the invite, Madam Chair. He should thank be thank you. No. Yeah, I just got it. Thank you. Thank you. Could, um, could my brother Evan be added as well? 
Okay, it's a long day for all of us. If you could uh, walk us through the violations and, and your proposal, that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Just wanted to confirm that my brother will be added. Hi. We sent the brother the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. The presentation. Okay, so we are proposing a occupancy change from a three, a two to three unit building with the additional unit being in the basement as a two bedroom, one bathroom unit. We have the kitchen and common living on the right and the bedrooms and bath on the left side of the unit. Um, current ceiling height's about nine feet, uh, which should result in a pretty spacious finished product that won't feel too much like a basement. Um, we designed the new front entrance, which you can see on the floor plan there at the, uh, it's the front right of the unit. And it's also shown on the renderings. Um, if you're able to scroll down, we designed it to match the dormer on the third floor of the building with a, uh, a hip roof, just to keep the design congruent. And we have two full walkout doors as egresses in the unit and an egress window in one bedroom and a full egress walkout door to the rear of the property and the other. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to add housing to the neighborhood and happy to answer any other questions the board may have. Okay, thank you. And uh, Ms. Bredebraza, do you have any questions? No, I, the, it's pretty straightforward. No questions, it's adequate. The drawings are adequate. Okay. And you're converting a basement into a third unit, correct? Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I'm going to ask for public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to this board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Our office hosted a butters meeting on September 26th, uh, where there were some concerns expressed regarding it seems to be an egress issue. Um, and I understand that they've been before to the board and were deferred. Uh, with that, I would defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Are there any other people to speak in support or in opposition? All right, hearing none, may I have a uh, motion? Madam Chair, I put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the design of the front basement entry. Thank you, do I have a second? Take a second. Thank you, Ms. Pedagraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. The chair also votes yes, the motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Can you hear me now? We sure can, Jessica, welcome okay, back. Okay, perfect, all right, thank you. I was able to fix my audio issues, I apologize. That's okay. Mm. All right. Next, we have uh, BOA 1338514, address 6 Bling Street, uh, applicant Rufus Fop. Uh, the applicant is seeking a proposed driveway curb cut and off street parking for two vehicles. Um, the violations include limitation of area of accessory uses, um, the off street parking design and maneuverability. Uh, the off-street parking does not provide vehicle impact protection for abutting property at 4 Thwing Street. Um, I think this was a referral from the subcommittee. Uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, is uh, Mr. Falk hi. on? Oh, yes, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, hold on just a second. I'll start video. Oh, yes. Okay, great. Right. Good afternoon. have before us a few times, so thank you. Yes, uh, yes, I have. Uh, thank yes, you. My, well, my name is Rufus Fultz Sr. I, I live at 6 Dwayne Street, uh, Roxbury. Um, uh, let's see, my, my wife and I have uh, owned and occupied this single family home for the uh, last 28 years. 
Uh, Queen Street is a dead end street. Uh, parking is on one side of the street. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so, um, uh, to answer some of the things we covered in our last meeting, uh, uh, in regards to parking in the front yard, uh, I've including, uh, included a drawing that um, shows that uh, uh, there is a 11.5 foot uh, space from the front yard to that very first car there and uh, the second car. Um, Let's see, uh, let me just go through. Okay, and um, the, uh, the, the rear of the building extends 30 feet beyond that uh, rear corner you see there uh, to the backyard. Um, let's see, uh, th that would uh, hopefully will uh, uh, provide, I believe it will provide the necessary accessibility uh, to loading and unloading, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, well, I, I've received the support of my neighbor at number four uh, and uh, my other neighbors uh, in regards to any uh, dimensions or uh, problems or questions you may have. But hopefully, uh, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you're, you're welcome to, uh, to discuss. Great. I just want to thank you for uh, for um, coming back. I, I know we had some different questions, and Mr. Yeah. Falk has, uh, you know, has endeavored to address those questions with us. So we do appreciate it. He's uh, measured. He's measured the width to help us uh, as well. Uh, just for context, we also did ask already about on-street parking and whether or not there could be residential parking in case anyone was going to ask. And the city is not doing that right now, so that is not an option. I just wanted to say all that because we do have new board members uh, who may have right. similar questions that we had already sure. uh, you know, covered. Uh, with that, uh, do, do we have any uh, other questions, any questions from the board? Does anyone, I, I know only uh, Hansi is from the subcommittee uh, with me, if you have anything you want to add. You're, you're on mute if you're trying to speak. Uh, oh, no. Okay, then I'm gonna ask Bob, Bob raised his hand, D'Amico from BTD. Mr. D'Amico, did you have a comment? Yes, uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Um, eight feet is kind of tight, and um, uh, since it's residential, you know, we can push the limit on, on that one. If it was commercial, uh, it, it could not be accepted. Um, but um, is there any way these two vehicles can be pushed toward the rear um, so there'll be more maneuverability? Um, so I'm just a little nervous at. Uh, the lack of width and, and the length because you need 40 feet from the front of the house. Now, when I say the front, I don't mean the curb. I mean from where the uh, front of the house begins back, you need 40 feet. Um, so I don't know if the uh, applicant can satisfy that requirement, um, but I'd like to ask him if, if he could do so. Yes, yes. Uh, the, um, the distance from what you see there uh, as on the left side of the property extends 30 feet to the backyard. That's all yard area uh, directly uh, north or the, towards the top of the design. So, it's the, so sorry, there, just to clarify, is the 30 feet to the end of your property line or the house? The house is 30 and beyond the the house is 30 feet to the back. So you could, you could, so you could push back 10 feet yes, more. That's correct. To, to answer Bob's um, question. question. Right. I, I'm really glad, Bob, that um, that you asked that question because, um, you know, I, I, I really appreciate that you got your butter's um, support, but you never know if your butter might move or sell. And, you know, let's say there's a fence, which was my original concern, put up. We want to make sure that you have enough clearance at the rear <laughs> that you have, you know, you have space to open your car door or anything like that. So I'm, I'm glad Bob asked that question. I, I don't have any questions. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? I have a question. Um, I, sorry. Yes, no. You're good to go. Oh, Madam Chair, sorry, I have a question. Um, have you considered sort of the constraints with opening the car door to get in and out of the vehicle? Is I that have something considered. your neighbor's aware of and, you know, yes. is supportive of? Yes, uh, I've considered it and uh, very comfortable with the way things are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? With that, I'm gonna take public testimony. If there is any, is there any public testimony, Jessica? Any raised hands? No, not at the moment. I know we had some support on file that would have been heard through the subcommittee hearing, but no raised hands at the moment. Right, well, again, Mr. Falk, I wanna thank you for uh, taking our uh, questions and feedback uh, under consideration in our previous hearings and, and putting forward uh, updated plans, et cetera. So with that, uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that Mr. Fogg also provides 10 feet uh, of clearance behind his uh, property, like behind his building. Mm. Okay, Fair. may I have a second? Second. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Bedebraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, the chair also votes yes. Uh, motion carries. Thank you so much for your patience, Mr. Falk, and good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Tom. Okay. I just ask Ms. Yes, Tom. The, the clarification question on the Yeah, it's basically providing what Bob was requesting, which is almost like a 40 feet um, drive aisle, you know, from the front okay. of the property. So yep. Just to make sure, just send it to BPDA for, uh, like, to make sure that there's a, a tent, like the driveway extends at least 10 feet beyond the rear of the house. I think the point is if you, if you currently have that 10 feet blocked, please clear it to make sure you have 40 <laughs> unblocked okay. feet, right, Mr. Falk? So, yes, yes, not a problem. So no reason right. to send it to the BPDA then? I, I don't think it needs to be sent to um, BPDA okay. let, uh, or BTD unless Bob requests it. Uh, I think, uh, we'll just we'll mark it down just to make sure that he clears the space. So. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. All right. Thank All you, right. sir. Good Very luck. good. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Next, we have BOA 1330550, 37 Jenkins Street. The applicant is Badamesh Carroll. Um, they are seeking to change the use from a single to a two family. Um, their violations include the floor area ratio is excessive, building height excessive open space is insufficient. Is the applicant on? Adam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with Adams and Marancy. Uh, business address of 168 8th Street, first floor, South Boston. Uh, with me here today is Fatima Carroll, who is the owner, as well as the architect, Shane Losey from Chewick Company. Um, as this was a subcommittee uh, hearing that was heard on the 19th, um, and it was recommended by Ms. Better Peraza to have a further discussion with PTD and have this deferred, uh, in which we did have that discussion with Mr. Bob D'Amico, uh, which I'm sure you'll hear from him later, and then I will, uh, I'll get to the parking scheme uh, when we go through the plans. Um, that's great that you have this drawing. Now, if we could keep uh, this slide up here for a few minutes, that would be great. So this is a proposal to change the occupancy from a single family to a two family with ground floor parking for two vehicles by way of renovation and in addition. Uh, the proposal is actually located within L1 zoning subdistrict, which is from the old base code of South Boston. We currently have four violations. FAR uh, 1.0 is allowed. The proposal we're calling for is a 1.79. The rear yard violation, the existing backyard has a deck that fills the entire dimension of the yard. The new proposal will now allow for some green space in the rear. Under the shallow lot reduction, when less than 100 feet deep, it would require the proposal to provide 12.5 feet under section 20-8, and this plan proposes a rear yard setback of exactly 12.5 feet. So I believe this violation was due in error. Uh, the next violation was the building height. Uh, wood is compliant as 35 feet, three stories. 
and we're proposing 39.75 feet in four stories. We also have a usable open space violation, uh, 400 square feet is what is compliant, and the proposal calls for 264 square feet. In the original plans uh, going through the community process, uh, we did have open space of decks uh, that were factored into the plans, but due to the neighbor concerns, we removed those decks, which triggered the open space violation. Uh, and now I just want to call to your attention to the uh, to the screen, to the, the, the plan that we have brought up. As you can see here, um, where the red marker is, that is, the, that, that is the proposal in question, that is the parcel. You can see that there are a ton of other properties here that, uh, that have significant heights uh, than what we're proposing. Uh, something that I did raise during the uh, first initial meeting uh, that we had was that, um, again, this is the old base zoning code. Most of South Boston is actually zoned under Article 68. Quite frankly, 90 to 95% of Jenkins Street is governed by Article 68. And if we were subject to Article 68, we would have been zoning compliant under what we're requesting here. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight that and bring that to your attention. Uh, if now if I could focus your attention on page six of the drawings. So this, this, this page, uh, I'm going to start off with the ground floor. It's consisting of garage to park two vehicles, which will be accessed by a new proposed 10 foot wide curb cut. Uh, this is here in question. So the first original, um, if you scroll, um, no, this isn't the, the actual floor plan for it. I'm sorry, maybe I gave you the wrong page. Um, there's, a, there's a page, could you just scroll back one page, please? Yes, that's it, there we go. Yep, perfect. Okay, so uh, this, this, again, this is the ground floor level, which will consist of garage to park two vehicles, which will be accessed by a new proposed 10 foot wide curb cut. So the original uh, plans that were presented to the subcommittee have the two parking spaces, which, uh, which is one is eight foot by six inches wide, 20, 21 uh, feet long. And then the second one is seven feet wide by 18 feet long. Those two original parking spaces uh, were side by side. There was no spacing in between them. As you can see from the new proposed drawings after discussions with uh, Mr. D'Amico from the transportation department, he recommended that we slide that uh, right hand space over to provide a separation between the two spaces. We have approximately about three feet in between those two spaces. Um, also in the rear of the garage, you'll, you'll notice that we have designated the area for a trash storage with the trash compactors. Uh, also on this ground floor level, all walkways will be heated to assist with uh, snow melting. Uh, going, scrolling over to the next, to keep in, continuing on this slide here, unit one uh, layout plan is approximately 913 square feet, which will consist of the second floor, two bedroom unit, kitchen and the living area will be included as well. Uh, unit two is approximately 1635 square feet, which will consist of the third and the fourth floors which will be a three bedroom with a study and a family room, also a kitchen and living room within there. Uh, our roof plan consists of solely solar ready zones. Um, so that sums up our presentation. I'm happy to open it up at this point in time for any questions. All right, thank you. Uh, I know Mr. D'Amico uh, is on, so if you could uh, weigh in on the uh, parking issue and maneuverability issue, that would be great. Uh, yes, Madam Chair and, and the members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Uh, Mr. Spitz has uh, made the adjustments that I requested, and it works fine. I'd like one record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Betterbraza, any questions on the plans? Um, Madam Chair, the drawings are adequate. Uh, if I, I, would have, I would imagine that to remove the trash, you just have to do it through you have to take the trash all the way inside the enclosed garage, correct? And travel 60 feet to the front? Yes, we, f we figure okay. so some, some South Boston properties, it, it becomes an eyesore when they keep their trash and, and recycle storage in the front of the building. So here it would be less of an eyesore, keeping it intact so that there's no animal infestation as well. Okay, and then in terms of the uh, side yard, um, it seems like you're keeping approximately the same kind of footprint uh, but to the left it, your building is getting a little bit wider than the existing footprint um, slightly a little bit wider I would assume it goes so, from 1.8 it goes from 1.8 to now one uh, 2.2 2. 
So I do have Shane Losey um, on the call as well that can answer that specific question regarding the side yard. What's the side yard uh, requirement? Can you remind me again? Three feet. Three feet, okay, I, so I, you I, are reducing I, 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 it from? Um, actually, the side yard here is zero because it's under the H-150 zoning. That's right, yep. Yeah. Sorry zero. about that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But you are, reduce, yeah. you are reducing it from 1.8 to 0.2, correct? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I have no further questions. Thank you. Great. Thank okay. you. Are there other questions from the board? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to open it to public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Our office held an abutters meeting on August 23rd. Um, the applicant then went on to meet with the Andrew Square Civic Association, who expressed concerns regarding the height, uh, what they thought was an inadequate parking ratio, and concerns they felt there was not enough open space involved with the project. Uh, they voted to oppose, and I believe we forwarded a letter in opposition uh, from that group to this board. <coughs> we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Officer, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on a thorough community process and good faith compromises by the proponent with the neighbors including front and rear fourth floor decks removed, as well as the additions of a roof plan with smaller ready zones, trash compactor, a heated walkway to help with the snow removal, and a security camera to the front of the building. Council President Fling acknowledges outstanding concerns from neighbors and respectfully requests that the proponent continue to engage the community on quality of life issues during the construction phase. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Flaherty, echoing the sentiments of Council of Flynn's office, as well as recognizing the community life that went into um, the drafting of um, the articles, Article 13. Uh, the Council would like to go on record uh, in support to the uh, the robust community process, acknowledging that there still are some outstanding issues, but would it would ask the proponent to uh, work with the uh, abutters and neighbors? Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Are there other raised hands? Yes, uh, Andrew Square. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, ZBA members, John Pigatowski, <clears throat> lifelong resident of Amber Square, South Boston. Uh, ASCA Development Committee Chair. After engagements of the community process and after review of the proposal, considering ISD plans examiners sightings, we would like to go on record as opposed to this proposal. And additionally, I would like to add Sunday night, I forwarded six more letters from abutters and neighbors in opposition to this proposal to ZBA and electeds. And also, should this proposal move forward, I ask BPDA and the developer to consider coastal re resiliency plans as this location is in the 100 year flood map plans. Thank you. Thank you. No additional raise hands. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I entertain a motion from the board? Um, did you read the BPDA? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, BPDA recommends denial without prejudice. Proposal is excessive. Address, address ground floor parking maneuverability and eliminate curb cut. Uh, I'm guessing the second part was already addressed with Bob, so I'm, I'm not sure if Jeff would have a different opinion. Madam Chair, can I, can I respond to that as well, too? Uh, briefly. Yep. So I just wanted to highlight before what I spoke about that over 90% of the street is governed by Article 68. If, if for some reason when they rezoned South Boston back in 2016, this parcel was, was not added into Article 68. Um, it's, very, it's the first house in off of Oconee Avenue, which is a major thoroughfare. The surrounding buildings heights are very excessive uh, to this one. 
um, we feel that would be a recent fit. And again, it was Article 68 would have been a still only compliant product. I understood, but I'm guessing Jeff would say it's not. So uh, with that, uh, may I entertain a motion from the board? I'd like to put forward a motion um, of approval with uh, BPDA design review and uh, also we just kind of um, request that the applicant keeps the adjacent abutters in constant communication in terms of the uh, construction process uh, and to ensure that um, the modification summaries of 921-22 are also met, which seems like it came from the community process. Do I have a second? That's yes. okay. Ms. Better Braza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Thank you. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, next, we have BOA um, 12988133, address 1395-1405 Washington Street. Uh, applicant is the Walsh. L, uh, LLC. Uh, they are seeking to construct a new six story, 33 multifamily residential building uh, with four shell ground floor local retail and restaurants for the plans. They're combining parcels um, and demoing an existing one story building. Uh, their violations include GCOD applicability, uh, the use for the three restaurants, um, dimensional regulations, FAR exceeds 3.0 max, um, the usable open space, the rear yard, roof structure restrictions, off-street parking, and loading requirements. Is the applicant present? <clears throat> yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mark LaCasse, LaCasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston. I am the attorney for the project proponent. Peter Georgiantis, who is also on the call, and the architect is Robert Del Savio from Embark. Um, this is a proposal to combine three lots, um, which currently contain a one-story retail and restaurant space, two of which are vacant, and one of which is a pizza shop co-owned by the project proponent, which will relocate in the new building once complete. You could just enlarge this screen a little bit for context of the photo just to orient the board members. So the large building on the left, of course, is the Holy Cross Cathedral on Washington Street in the South End. And this property is directly across the street from the Holy Cross Cathedral, currently the one story low rise. So it's basically a giant missing tooth in this block of Washington Street with the six story kind of building on the right and the existing five-story building, but it's the same proposed height on the left. The proposed project that is under consideration today is the darker facade building that is inserted in between the two existing buildings. Um, and I would just like to note that because of its location in the South End Landmark District, um, and also in conjunction with our Article 80 small project review process at the BPDA, um, the building iteration and design has gone through extensive process. Um, we had three advisory review hearings with the South End Landmarks Commission and ultimately a fourth hearing at which the South End Landmarks Commission approved the design of the building and the materiality um, in large part with details, of course, subject to ongoing South End Landmark design provisos. So much work and effort went into what this building looks like and what it is, given its very important location right across from the Holy Cross Cathedral. Similarly, we went through an extensive Article 80 small project review process, given that it's new construction on a very important commercial corridor in the South End. Um, Washington Street was the subject of a planning study back in the late 1990s, which took effect in the early 2000s and resulted in the construction of over 1,500 
new residential units between Berkeley Street and Dartmouth Street. And literally, this is the last developable site of this significance on that stretch of Washington Street and was specifically planned with reference to the Washington Street Plan that was put into effect some 20 years ago um, as part of our BPDA process. So again, the existing low-rise one story is demolished. The new building will be six stories with 33 residential units on the upper floors with the ground floor remaining. Um, it's currently shown as three different spaces. It could end up being one large space or, or three spaces um, with a proposal that it be retail and or restaurant. Um, the BPDA board considered and approved this project on March 10 of 2022 with 33 units and four IDP units. Um, given the constraints of the site and the location of Washington Street with the two abutting side streets that end on Washington Street, um, there's no rear alley behind this building unlike many of the other streets in the South End. So there's no way to get behind this building. There's a small alley behind the building between this building and the Greek Orthodox Church directly behind us but it's not, it's just a pedestrian size alley. So there's no, no way to get cars into or under this building such that this proposal is a zero parking proposal. Um, but that is done with reference to its location, a proximity to, to the orange line on the one hand, um, the red line stop across on the South Boston side. Uh, Washington Street of course is host to the Silver Line bus line and there's also the number eight bus and the number 10 bus. So in light of its location and its uh, transportation access, the BPDA did approve this as a zero parking building um, with parking for 34 bicycles as, as an alternate um, for the residents. Again, the, um, once that process was complete in March of 2022, after about uh, nine months of community meetings, public meetings, meeting with BPDA staff architects to design the building, we then had our final uh, South End Landmarks Commission hearing on May 9, 2022, and that resulted in approval of the design of the building. Uh, next slide. So this is the site plan showing the three different parcels. One of the requests of this appeal is to combine those three parcels uh, to create one lot of 6,938 square feet upon which the new building, which is 38,000 gross square feet, would be constructed. Next slide. Um, this shows the parcels as combined. You'll note across the front of the building, there's sort of a zigzag pattern in and out. Um, that was a result of BPDA design suggestions because of the width of the sidewalk and a desire to enlarge the sidewalk and reduce the pinch points um, given the location of street trees and accessibility issues. So the, the front lower floor of the garage sort of zigzags in and out um, in response to the request for um, public realm enhancements. Next slide. So, for the so, next yeah, so this, this is Rob from Bar Studio. Uh, so this is a section through the building on the right hand side is pictured Washington Street. Again, the building is six stories, and if you notice on the top floor, there's a significant setback from the, the major facade of the building, which as we look at some of the uh, abutting photographs of the neighboring building, you'll see that that, uh, that gesture is emulated there as well. It's about a three foot grade difference between the Washington Street side and the rear alley, which again is just a pedestrian alley and access alley. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the site pictured in between the two party walls of both 1387 and 1407 Washington Street. The uh, building circled in blue will come down to the ground. We'll build new up to there. The building pictured on the right, the brick ends around the fifth floor of that building. So that's where our setback occurs in the proposed building to respect the massing of that building. That line uh, carries across. Despite the number of floor difference between the building on the left, uh, 1407, and the one on the right, 1387, the heights of the building is about the same, and our building fits in pretty evenly across that. There's only a couple foot difference in height from one to the other. 
As Mark was saying, the sidewalks are pretty narrow, which is part of the response to creating the ground floor plane with that sort of crenellated in and out appearance. Uh, we'll be reconstructing the sidewalks as part of the work and then again giving more breathing room to doors swinging in and out of the retail spaces in our proposed plan. Next slide, please. Uh, the ground, uh, typical floor plans, the plan, basement plans on the left, first floor plan, again showing that crenellated ground floor storefront condition on the right. The building is subject to the uh, groundwater issues as well as the, the flood issues, which is why all the residential related spaces on the ground floor are raised up by that five or six steps that you see at the back of the building. So that includes the electric room, the mail room, and the package room. Those three buildings needed to be out, above that floodplain elevation. Um, this, the building is serviced from an egress perspective by two stairs. The one on the left, which is subject to some recent discussions with the neighboring uh, parties in 1407 Washington Street, and I'll discuss that as we move up the building. Next slide, please. So one of the, the, one of the concerns that the abutting property had was they have some windows that are in the existing party wall uh, of their building, which you couldn't do today, but they exist. And the concern was being able to maintain some degree of ventilation and some degree of natural light. So the stair picture on the left here is now no longer has a roof at the top of it. And it's an open air stair, allowing some ventilation for those windows, as well as uh, some daylight that will get down the stairwell. We're protecting that opening because of fire code issues with a shutter, but that opening will allow, again, some light and air to get down to those windows. And the next slide. Next page. <clears throat> this is a roof plan. There is a roof deck plan for the roof of the building. And again, as that stair became an open air stair on the left hand side, we've now created just a guardrail wall assembly to uh, allow even more light and air to fill, penetrate down the building. The roof deck is only used by the residents. None of the commercial uses on the ground floor have access to it. It's just for the residents of the building. That's all. Thank you. And Madam Chair, do you want me to go over the zoning issues and um, or just respond to questions? I think let's try to respond to some questions. I know it's a long day for everyone, so uh, I, th those may come out as we ask questions. Perfect. Uh, then with that, that concludes our presentation. Okay, and before any, before anyone asks, I know, Mr. Valencia, there are four, four IDP units on the second, third, and fourth floor between 80 to 100% AMI and uh, studio, studios and one bedroom. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm actually, go I was going to ask when Go the project please. received the BPD approval, there were, on the memo, I see that there were 33 units. Now there are 35. Is that correct? No, um, Mr. Valencia. Yeah. Um, I think the old refusal letter, as initially proposed, there were 35 units, but um, that was when there was an additional floor in the building that came off prior to the BPDA process. So it's 33 units. 33 and units. In addition to the four IDP units designated and approved by the BPDA board, there was a decimal point addition of 0.29, and that is a $110,000 contribution payable to the IDP Special Reserve Fund, and that's also expressed in the board memo as part of the project's satisfaction of the IDP requirements. Thank you very much. And what is the reason behind having only the minimum, minimum IDP? that is four units instead of trying to provide at least one or two more? Um, the proposal is subject to the December 2015 IDP policy, which is currently in effect. And 13% um, plus the contribution to the fund was deemed to satisfy the existing IDP um, policy. Thank you. We just saw another project in Boston that today, and the project is offering 20% IDP units so I was just asking because we know that some developers can do more for the community, so that was why I asked this question. I understand, and it's certainly a valid question. And I know that um, Ms. Barraza was uh, contemplating some, some of the economic issues with the other proposal, but I think, I don't mean to speak for the other projects, but I, I did hear them mention that they had owned the property for many, many, many decades. So probably have a cost basis close to zero. 
whereas this project, you know, has a very different land cost basis. And land cost, of course, is one of the basic component drivers of the economics of any any project. So I think just an observation that's probably a significant difference between what somebody who's owned property for 50 years can do versus a more recent acquisition. Thank you. Mark, thank you for answering that question. Yeah, I, it was a good question on that it basis. It's all about basis. But the uh, legal counsel didn't answer it, so I thank you for that. Um, I, have, I have a question regarding um, the windows. Uh, the section here shows one, two, three, four windows that are existing, correct? And your solution, the architect's solution, is to pretty much keep it kind of an open shaft, correct? Yeah, that's correct. The next page of the actual show will show it to everybody. Um, the four windows will be equipped with a fire shutter. Yep. And so was this, was this kind of reviewed, and was this a solution in coordination with ISD, uh, how, you know, it, with, are the neighbors supporting that solution? Um, are you going to be required to um, come back and, and request a, a building code relief? You know, I, I am one of the window units owner on the other side. Uh, I think I, I need to put my input here before Mark says anything. Because this windows, you know, pretty much, you know, my I'm name sorry, is I'm sorry, I'm sorry, who are you? I'm Sean Persig, and I'm one of the window units owner on the other building. Oh, I don't think, I don't think, um, I think we're still, we're still talking within our board, correct, uh, Madam we're Chair? Not, we're not accepting public testimony yet, thank you. Okay, no I can wait, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, for, in, for intervening here. <laughs> You're fine. Um, but I think we're still in the questioning phase. Correct. Okay, great. Um, so, Mark, can you yes. can you respond to that? Okay, thanks. There are four windows in the party wall at fourteen eleven, and it is an existing condition. And the deed and registry documents indicate that the windows are in the party wall between the two properties, um, which means you know the party wall is owned to the center line of the party wall by both both sides of the property. Um, but nevertheless, the windows are there. So initially, we explored proposals which included um, closure of those windows and moving them to a different location within the building next door, which has two existing light wells. It's an older building with very unique interior courtyard light wells. So we explored that for many, many months um, with both sides, architects, engineers, um, to see if that would be a workable solution. Ultimately, it was determined that that was not an optimal solution, though in response to further requests from the trustees of the building next door, the request was to create this notch in the building. If we could go to the last slide, it will depict the condition of this um, interior stairway. Um, interior to, to the new building, but exterior in the sense that it's open at the top. So it's like a giant light well, essentially mimicking the existing light wells of the building next door that houses windows for bathrooms and kitchens and other rooms within some of the units next door. So it was um, reviewed by ISD. Um, the most recent set of plans and uh, Ambassador, can we go to the very last slide? Of, is this the last slide in the set? It should be one more. Okay, there it is. So there's the cut, the side cut of the proposed, you can see the one, two, three, four windows in the building next door. And this will be the staircase that is essentially creating a light well by virtue of cutting into the new building um, to create this new condition. And Rob, if you want to add anything. No, I think it's open to the sky above and we're working on some details to even make a make sure that more light gets to the, that window surface as possible by simplifying the handrail that goes in front of it. Okay, so the, but this was um, uh, approved by the by ISD as a potential solution that doesn't require a cold relief? Correct. It's part okay. of, um, yes, it's part of the set that was reviewed by Cheryl Odom <coughs> on January 26, 2023, um, which includes sheet 
A301, knowing the proposed um, stairway, and no, no building code relief letter was issued. We require. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions from members of the board? Uh, just one, uh, just curious. Uh, yes, sir. On the, first, on the first floor, there will be, uh, there will be commercial space. Yes. Uh, uh, do you have a preference, or will that just be left up to market forces, basically? So, as shown in the plans, uh, Mr. Sambridge, there are three separate spaces, which is the current configuration. Um, there is South End Pizza, which is co-owned by Peter and George Antis, um, one of uh, the developer here. And then there are two vacant spaces that were uh, victims of COVID, by and large. So it will either be three retail restaurant spaces. The pizza place is coming back, so that, that, will, be, that will be one. Um, and then the other two will either be one large space or two smaller ones, retail or restaurant, consistent with um, you know, that stretch of Washington Street and the programming that Washington Gateway Main Street advocates for that corridor, which is street level retail with residential up above. Thank you, Mark. No further questions. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm told it's Union Park Pizza and not South Bend Pizza. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Okay, with that, may I have testimony? Good afternoon, Hi, yeah. Madam Chair. Christian oh, Simonelli, yes, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant for GCOD. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thank you. We have those letters as well. Thank you. Hi, um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crusilli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This project went through a BPDA process which addressed all concerns of abutters, and they did extensive community outreach as well as work with abutters who had questions or concerns regarding the windows on the abutting buildings. Our office has received no opposition on this proposal. At this time, we'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Officer, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President for Link's Office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on a thorough community process. The project will also bring much needed IDP affordable units to the area that will provide chances for working families to remain in Boston. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Sure. Yes, uh, so I'm one of the owners of the four window unit owner. Oh, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, my name is Sean Parsegan, uh, MD. I'm at 1411 Washington Street. Uh, building and I uh, live in the 2B apartment which has a window on this project so pretty much you know we don't have the window situation approved by our building or by the four owners uh, currently you know I have a sunlight and fresh air coming the proposed plan will put a cage on my window in my window and metal shutter which will be shut all the time except if there is a fire situation and there's no fresh air there's no sunlight coming into my place and because of all the changes my one bedroom unit will change to a studio and will affect to be honest with you my future you know uh, staying in downtown area so i'm totally okay. opposed to this project and the same thing for okay Vincent, can you state your name and address for the record please hi my name is vincent granitza reside at 1387 washington street uh right next on the opposite side of the development and I just had a question, uh, a couple questions about the time frame, construction time frame, um, and just what um, what mitigation is being put in place for us as residents next door. What's you know what's it going to look like on Washington Street? What type of activity are we going to have? And uh, um, you know construction activity. What the overall duration of the project is, and then what all is uh, being done about pest control. Sir, do you have a position? Are you in favor or opposition, or just these questions? Just these questions, ma'am. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, in order to obtain the building permit, we will have to have a construction management plan approved by Boston Transportation Department, Vincent. Um, we're happy to circulate that to you. We have a draft of a comprehensive construction management plan that's been prepared by Howard Stein Hudson. Um, which you know is an engineering firm that prepares such plans. We will have emergency contact information. You'll have phone numbers for our project manager. You'll have uh, 
Peter's phone number, perhaps, uh, Peter Georgiantis, who is uh, in the neighborhood a lot, has other properties and lives nearby as well. So there will be a full construction management plan with full emergency access information available all the time. Uh, road Thank control, you. Road and control is subject to um, review and approval of our plan by the Community Sanitation Department at ISD, which is also another prerequisite to obtaining a building permit. So those will all be fully in place, and we're happy to provide those to the, the trustees and the unit owners at 1387 Washington as well. Thank you. Can I continue public testimony? Jessica? You have no Are additional they... raised hands. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, any, is that a raised hand for this project? Yes, Mr. for some reason, it's, sorry, uh, Cameron Merrill. I represent the Arlington Court Condominium Trust. I have an office at 100 State Street. For some reason, the hand has gone down twice now. Uh, but just, just briefly, I, I do want to. Uh, and sorry, can you? What is the address of that Arlington Court that you mentioned? It's directly next door, 1407-1411, uh, to the left of this construction. Uh, so I represent the Board of Trustees on this project. We've been in touch uh, and engaged with the developer for over a year now. Uh, to come to a plan regarding these windows that are going to be effectively blocked. Uh, we did receive a new set of plans on Friday, uh, but have not yet had an opportunity to uh, pass those on to our vendors uh, for a review of them uh, on, on our end of the project. Uh, so we do appreciate that those came in, but we haven't had a chance to fully uh, vet them. Uh, that being said, uh, we have some uh, concerns and we want to, to, to confirm that that will address the code issues that were raised. Uh, relative to the use of the stairwell, if it will be approved, we'd ask that a proviso be entered uh, that it may only be used for emergency use only, uh, given as it will abut windows looking directly into the living space. Uh, we don't want residents to be able to access that large roof deck uh, from this staircase. Uh, so that being said, we look forward to ongoing discussions with the applicant to try and resolve any open issues that might uh, exist. Thank you. Uh, Chair, can I ask? Can I ask I'm that? I'm sorry. Uh, can yes. I ask that uh, that get that that gets answered by the applicant whether um, whether the residents would need that second piece of egress to access the roof? Uh, I'll yeah, I'll start by uh, confirming everything that Cameron said. Uh, we've been working closely with council and uh, believe that we have a good working relationship and made a commitment earlier today to continue that relationship, notwithstanding whatever happens here today. There are ongoing design details that need to be worked out concerning the handrail and the guardrail of the stairwells. And um, there's a comprehensive abutter agreement that my client has pretty much agreed to everything in the abutter agreement has actually signed the agreement so we're, we're very close and and i think cameron would agree with that but yes we make the commitment to continue that and ms Barraza, one of the items in the agreement is that in fact this stairway is for emergency purposes only and rob del sabio if you can confirm that it is not um anything to the contrary that'd be great that is correct. That stair will only be used for emergency egress for presence of the building leaving during an emergency situation. Thank you. Thank Are you. there any other questions from the board? Mm. Madam Chair, this is Vincent Grenice again uh, on a butter. I just had a question. What is the construction duration or the planned construction duration for the entire project? Can wow. you answer this and let's move on? I think you need to work more closely with these abutters and share that information offline. Yeah. Okay. Rob, do you know the answer to that? It's approximately 18 months, but I'm not 100% certain of that. Yeah. And, Thank and you. Chairwoman, Chairwoman we'll, we'll certainly make sure they get all that info. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, may I have a motion from the Did board? Did the BPDA provide a, a position? Uh, the BPDA approved this through the whatever large okay. article review. So there's not a separate, you know, they don't have like a separate uh, recommendation from that. Okay. Great, and, thank you. and on, on that score, um, BPDA design review is not indicated because this is South End Landmarks and we've already received a review and approval of the Landmarks Commission for the design of the building after four hearings. Okay, thank you. So with that, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval 
with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the location and placement of the open egress shaft well and without a building code relief. Thank you. Do I have a second? So second, that. Ms. Barbaraza. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Lalo. Yes. Mr. Stembridge. Yep. Chair votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. All right, home stretch. <laughs> stretch. Next, we have uh, BOA 137 Address is 229 Maverick Street, applicant 231 Maverick Street, LLC. Applicants seeking to construct a roof deck and install spiral staircase. Uh, the violations include East Boston iPod, uh, roof, strict, roof structure uh, restrictions. Okay, is the applicant here? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Chair. All right, Mr. Small, can you walk us through briefly this uh, proposal and the violations? Sure can. Uh, so good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small, the business address of One Dobson Road, uh, representing the applicant. Today we are here seeking relief to legalize the 14 by 14 roof deck, spiral staircase, and head house um, at this location. Um, two violations that we have are the East Boston iPod and the roof structure restrictions. If you can scroll down, see if that's, that's fine, thanks. Um, Madam Ambassador, you'll see um, a, an aerial view of the roof deck and the, um, the head house and the spiral staircase. Um, if you scroll down one more or two more, keep going. Um, it's, it's accompanied by a three unit building. The roof deck is for the use of unit three only. So from third floor unit only. I scroll down a little bit more, see if it shows. The roof deck is set back and is not visible from Maverick Street at all. Um, it, it goes to the uh, 35 foot height regulation. And the two buildings on either side of us are one story above our building. Um, and so it does not show from, from Maverick Street. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Um, once again, go down, try to see if we get the street view. Scroll down a little bit more. Some couple more, I think. You can see that it's not visible from Maverick Street. Um, but any, in any event, um, again, the roof deck is, is already constructed. And um, it's, again, it's not visible for the street. It is exclusive use of I don't think this plan is showing the um, side pictures or pictures from uh, the street view um, showing that there, the two buildings aside from us are both taller than existing. I would say we can end there. We can take um, any questions. There should be letters in our um, letters of support from neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Small. Ms. Ben Barraza, any, any sir, questions about the plans? No drawings are adequate. No questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No, Chair. Um, looking at the street view, are there any other roof decks in this vicinity? Yeah, um, there are. As a number of buildings in this area have been renovated and reconstructed. Does that address your question, Mr. Shepard? Yeah, um, how about anything like, you know, abutting or, you know, close, in close proximity, I'm, I'm kind of asking. I am not sure, but I think the building next to us is a, um, I think it's like a six or, or eight unit building, and I think that one has next as well. But I'm not sure. Thanks. Is there a particular concern, Mr. Shepard, you want to just raise or? Uh, you know, I'm just, seeing how relevant it is to the neighborhood and I guess I'll have to listen further to see Thank if, you. if 
feedback from the neighborhood as well. Got it. And I think the, the uh, it's it's not visible from the street, correct? That's correct. It's not visible from the street. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. With with uh, and I know you're going to ask me, so let me offer. BPDA's recommendation is approval with proviso that plans be submitted to BPDA for design review approval, head house to be eliminated, access to roof to be provided via hatch. Uh, with that, let me take public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Colin Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Our office held a Butters meeting in March 2022. Uh, no Butters were in attendance. The association, um, the, excuse me, the applicant met with the, the Gove Street Citizens Association multiple times to discuss the roof deck. Ultimately, they voted to be in support of the proposal uh, with 60 members in support, not in opposition. Uh, they stated that they were okay with the roof deck, but did not appreciate that, that it was already built without proper permits. Uh, They would like to see, okay. sorry, I'm just kind of parsing through, but also mentioned they would not like to see the current owner being penalized for this era. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of this board. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there any other testimony? I have no additional hands. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Motion for Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, the chair votes yes, and just to confirm, that's without a head house, correct, Mr. Small? No, it's with the head house. Yeah, the, the head house is, is already in so. Oh, it's already there. I see. Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, well, with that, we'll, motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Have a good day. It's been a long one. Yes, it has. Okay, Alrighty. Next, all right, next we have BOA 1327786 for 107 Marion Street. Um, they're seeking to change occupancy from three to four family with a new basement unit. Um, they're renovating the existing building, erecting a new three-story rear deck. Um, their violations include extension of a non-conforming use, uh, non-conforming use change, uh, off-street parking insufficient. Uh, the use in the basement unit are both forbidden, uh, East Boston iPod applicability, uh, roof structure restrictions, floor area ratio excessive, Height is excessive with stories and, and feet. Uh, side yard insufficient. And the applicant is Dario Carvajal. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street here on uh, behalf of Dario Carvajal. And we also have David Choi, who's the architect uh, on the proposal. Uh, as was uh, mentioned, the, we're seeking to change the occupancy and we're looking at the existing conditions of the building from a three unit building to a four unit um, and to create a basement a ground level space. And you can see that that's raised above um, on the front. So that's exposed with a very steep grade um, change as you go back. Uh, the, uh, this will also include renovations to the exterior of the property, which should badly needs and then uh, decks in the back are really small decks that are also going to be used as uh, egress stairs as well. Uh, currently all the units do have a uh, second means of egress. This would be an additional means of egress as well. And this building will also be fully sprinklered and brought up to life safety standards as well. Um, the lot size is 3,000 square feet and um, just this is if you go to the next slide please uh, this is just an aerial view for precedent, so it's a multi-family uh, all around us. Uh, there are some twos, but you can see the new building off to the rear. Um, and then uh, my client has the parking lot that is used for the tenant, so all of those spaces um, are used solely for this building, uh, for parking, for off-street parking. 
the uh, just the layout. If we go to the next slide, sorry. Uh, next slide after this, Jessica. Thanks. Sorry. And one, one more. Um, so we get into the plans uh, again. Uh, three of the units uh, are existing, but this ground level we're calling Unit Four uh, would be a 983 square foot two bedroom two bath. It has eight foot ceiling heights, floor to ceiling height. Uh, two full means of egress, one through the front of the building and then one to the side, and it also will contain egress windows as well. Um, we go up to the first floor that houses our main entrance um, It houses unit one, which is a 926 square foot existing two bed, one bath, and that would have the rear deck and egress. Uh, next slides, please. We then go up to the second floor, which is a thousand square foot, three bedroom, one bath that's existing with the deck and stairwell in the rear. And then the third floor would be a 1000 square foot, same three bedroom, one bath with the rear stairwell and deck. <clears throat> Just to go over the, the violations that were mentioned. So many of these are pre-existing, but obviously use. Um, so going to that fourth basement unit, uh, we would need uh, use variances, um, FAR, which is a pre-existing uh, uh, violation, but because we're adding in on the space at that basement level, that would increase the FAR to 1.5. Uh, nothing changes on the side yard or the height. Um, and again, we, would be, we have the lot for parking, um, so that would also have plenty of space for the new unit. Uh, inside as well. Um, we were uh, mistakenly cited for roof structure restriction, so there's nothing changing to the roof. There's no roof deck proposed, uh, no level being added. The only addition would be those rear decks and the stairwells in the back. Um, around us, just for context, there's new building seven units on Lexington Street. Uh, that's right to the side of us, there's four units at 87 Lexington, four to six on Princeton, uh, 127 Marion's, the Barnes uh, large scale condo complex uh, directly adjacent across the street. Uh, I can pause for any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Mr. Drago. Are there questions from the board? Yes, Madam Chair, I just want to sort of understand, you know, make sure that roof uh, structure restriction, you know, is a mistake. Do you have a roof plan we could see? Was there something shown? Yep, yep. That well, if you, uh, if you go to um, one, two, three, six, seven, we get, if you keep going down, uh, Jessica, we'll get into elevations. And then you'll just see the top of the building. One more slide. So right here. Okay. Maybe it's. Maybe so we it's aren't proposing. Position. Yeah. It's, so we're not proposing any um, any structure at all. Well, are you extending the roof line it, it, uh, uh, to that the stairway? It could be from the deck in the rear, um, the top yeah. floor deck that they reference. That that could be it. Okay. No. Let's, yeah. Maybe some. But nothing. No head house. No uh, roof um, structure on top or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? It's a long day. Um, okay. Well, uh, let me read BPDA's recommendation and then open it up for testimony. <clears throat> BPDA recommends approval with proviso that plans be submitted to BPDA for design review with special attention to the proposed rear deck. Uh, with that, may I, uh, may I have testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information in the community process. Our office hosts an abutters meeting uh, in May of 2022, uh, two abutters joined the meeting um, and voiced concerns regarding uh, what they perceived as privacy concerns around the rear decks, uh, with the applicant promising to work with them on looking into materials that would address some of those concerns. Uh, the applicant then went on to the association, the civic group for that area, which is the Eagle Hill Civic Association, 
uh, meeting with them twice, and the group voted to support this proposal in September of 2022. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of this board. Um, I'm sorry, we did receive one letter of opposition, which uh, I believe we forwarded over to you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Jessica, any other raised hands? I have no raised hands at the moment. Okay. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with uh, the proviso that um, BPDA design review with attention to the rear deck. I have a second? So I second. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Okay, final of the day. Last but not least, we have BOA 139263, uh, 437 Chelsea Street, applicant uh, Rakia Azravi. Um, they are seeking to raise the existing structure, erect a four unit residential dwelling with a roof deck. The violations include the height being excessive, the rear yard insufficient, for area ratio excessive, off street parking insufficient, and the East Boston iPod applicability. Um, good you. afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. And, uh, yes, it's been a long day, so I will try to be as brief but as thorough as possible. Uh, for the record, it's Richard Lenz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner uh, with respect to the property at 437 Chelsea. If we could jump ahead, uh, perhaps, to uh, slide, this is probably a good place to start. Uh, so, Madam Chair, what we're proposing, um, as you can see here, actually, we're identifying 439 Chelsea Street as the last building on Chelsea Street as you head out of East Boston towards Chelsea. Our building is one building in from that. And the reason why 439 is identified is that the board uh, had recently approved uh, a similar project, almost like the exact same uh, layout and size of a four story, four unit building at that site at 439. We're back before the board simply because uh, this should have went at the same time. However, we had to re-notice this uh, for some uh, issues in the public notice, so we are here uh, on, on a re-hearing. Um, so if we jump over to uh, slide uh, nine, uh, that'll show us probably the context of what we're proposing with what has already been approved uh, at, uh, at the site. So that should be slide nine. Thank you. Here we go, perfect. Okay, so uh, on the left side, you do see 439 uh, Chelsea, and then the, our proposed building at 437 is being rendered as well. Uh, and with us with Eric, is Eric Zacherson, who's the project architect. Uh, this property is located in the neighborhood shopping district, even though you do see a number of residential units. And this is somewhat of a transitional area because the site immediately to our left, uh, to the left of 439, is a maritime economic reserve district. Uh, you do see a large vacant lot there. The zoning actually permits heights of up to 55 feet uh, and higher density uh, for that, uh, that uh, lot adjoining our lot. Uh, our lot, uh, being in the neighborhood shopping district, actually permits a multifamily use. So the four units we are proposing is allowed currently under Article 53. There is no minimum lot size, although we do have 1,626 square feet. It is relatively consistent with most of the lots in that area. Uh, we do have a lot width of 25 feet. Again. Uh, no specific requirement for any uh, lot width or side yard setback. We do set our building back uh, on the left-hand side for three and a half feet, which allows for unprotected openings and windows. Uh, we do set our property at the lot line on the right side. Uh, we did have conversations with the abutter to our right. There, as you can see in the picture here, uh, there is some conversation and plans for him to redevelop his site as well. Uh, that building that sits on the line 435 Chelsea Street uh, is in need of uh, a little bit of TLC, and he is looking at an option as well. So we had actually worked out uh, the understanding that we would set our building at the lot line and certainly support any efforts he may have in the future to set his building at the lot line as well to the left side. Uh, we do have uh, our modal setback, which is consistent with what we have uh, on that section of Chelsea Street, uh, and we do have um, a Fleurier ratio of 3.35 uh, which right now, currently out of the neighborhood shopping district, is a 1.0 allowance. Uh, I would point out that it is consistent with the approved project to our left. There is an also additional approved project on Saratoga Street to our rear, 
Uh, there's also four stories uh, and four unit residential building as well. Uh, with respect to parking, um, this site does not propose to have any parking. The immediate vicinity around uh, this section of Eagle Square uh, does not have a huge parking uh, issue. There's generally plenty of on-street parking in this area. There are not a lot of residential uses as you go beyond our site as you advance down Chelsea Street. Uh, it's simply the uh, industrial uses that we see with the fuel tanks uh, and those uh, other industrial facilities that have their own off-street parking. The height of our building is proposed at the general height of the building is at 42 feet. You do see a headhouse that is proposed, and I'll let Eric Zacherson discuss uh, why we are incorporating that. Uh, so the height of that is actually 52 feet, but the bulk of our building uh, sits at 42 and is in line with the building uh, immediately to its left, uh, which is previously approved. Um, other than that, uh, with respect to the layout, if we want to jump ahead on the slides, uh, we can go to slide 12, which shows the floor plans. Uh, we are proposing this to be slab on grade. Um, there is no basement that's being proposed. Uh, however, we do show uh, our first level, uh, which would be accessible uh, as a uh, approximately 800 some odd square feet, a little over 880 square feet. These are all two bedrooms. Uh, the upper level units uh, are a little bit larger with the top level unit being about 1,006 square feet uh, and also uh, being a two bedroom. Uh, Eric, if you want to talk a little bit about why we had proposed the head house the way we did with respect to the roof deck, I think that would be helpful since we typically don't incorporate a head house. Yeah, uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, understanding that, that um, the head house is not uh, I, the ideal situation in most cases, um, the proj this project is on a relatively short lot, and therefore the back stair uh, was something that we, we realized we wanted to enclose or need to enclose because it's only three feet from the rear property line. And in looking at how to create a little bit of open space for that top unit, we uh, contemplated either extending the front stair, which is very close to the front of the building, or the rear stair. Um, and in order to do, in doing that, we'd be able to kind of keep these, um, these two bedrooms uh, function. As you can see, there isn't a, a ton of extra space in there to squeeze a different staircase in. And so we were left with a decision to uh, either extend the front stair and have a hatch very close to the front of the property, or extend the rear stair um, but the rear stair is enclosed um, because it's so close to the, the property lines on the right and on the, on the rear. So in this case, we, we elected to, to extend the, the rear stair up rather than have something more visible on the front of the pro project and still have, be able to have that, um, that roof deck space, some open space for the project. Thank you, Eric. Um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't take more time than necessary. Uh, nope, thank you, and you answered to some of my questions, so I will see if anyone else has, from the board has any questions. Uh, Madam okay. Chair, uh, did yes, BPDA provide a recommendation? They did not. Okay. Um, uh, Eric, did you design 439? Yes, correct, for the same client. You did. Did yeah. it have a um, penthouse as well? It so its its site is a little bit longer, so it has an open rear stair to the top of to the roof deck. Okay. And there's ten feet of space behind that building, but there's just, there's only three feet behind this one. Okay, just because you used it as a reference. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, the buildings are very similar, other than enclosing the rear stair. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I I would like to ask. Jeff Hampton some questions, but he's not he's not here in, in regards to uh, this neighborhood. And um, and so if it was up to me, I would say or I would recommend to uh, defer to allow for BPDA to review the project, but to get on the next you know, the next uh, month um, hearing just because I think that some of my concerns are, um, uh, you know, in, in terms of like development, it, if if we have already a corner precedent that is four story, we we approve this project, you know, again with um, very similar 
char character of the one that just previously got approved. I don't have any reference to that project. Do you, does that then allow the same type of um, leeway to do four stories moving forward? You know, so I just I just would love to get a little bit more context from BPDA because we're looking only specifically at this project. Um, but I, I need to kind of just because you began to re reference the building next to it, so I you know it 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 allows for that kind of conversation. Um, Madam Chief, I'm sorry. Yeah, so that I'm just talking out loud to in conversation with my board members. Yeah, there's no there's no vote yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So so that's my opinion, but you you guys can put forward but, motions as well. Yeah. So. Madam Chair, if I may. Mr. Linz, also just add to that. Uh, remind sure. us why you're here for the rediscussion. Sure. So, in, and thank you, Madam Chair. In, in response to this better Barraza, it's very, very good point about you know the BPDA not having um, uh, their recommendation. Um, we originally presented uh, 439, which is the building immediately to our left. I believe that was in November, um, and we were anticipating because we had these on the same track to have this presented. Uh, at the same time, uh, obviously, for, for purposes of you know demonstrating to the board uh, that this were these were similar sites or similar projects, the BPDA did recommend approval uh, on the 439 project. I believe that is in your records. Um, I don't know why they did make a, a recommendation on this project. However, I don't believe I think they review it once, and I'm not necessarily sure they'll go back and review it again. So my only concern is uh, if we request that the BPDA go back and review this again. They may not They may not do that. I'm, I'm not sure of their policy. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that, that's, why, um, I, that's why I would put a forward motion to defer to provide BPDA to review the project. Yeah. Unless Tom can also give me, Tom, can you provide me with a decision for 439 in terms of provisos that we'll put on the project? Um, yes, Ms. Barraza, let me just look it up real quick. So why don't we continue with any other yep, questions. questions as Tom looks it up? I, I did have one other point, Madam Chair, if I may, and I, yes. and I know we're late in the day. Um, as part of Planning Boston, I believe this is uh, NR, or targeted to NR4 because it is uh, Boulevard or uh, squares uh, with, with some of the recommendations that are being put forth for new zoning in East Boston, and that does recognize increased height uh, and increased density, so four stories is, from what I understand, the norm, and that's one of the reasons why uh, the recommendation was made uh, for 439 Chelsea uh, to allow for the four story. That's one of the reasons why we're, you know, I think, but for the fact that we were, you know, delayed because of the notice issue, uh, we would have heard these in tandem at the same time, and perhaps that recommendation would have, you know, shed some light on this project as well. So I just want to make sure I make that clear for the record. Thank you. We can also see, hopefully see if uh, ONS uh, can shed some light on the, on the uh, public process, the community process. Are there other questions from the board? Ms. Barraza, this is Tom. Uh, the board approved 439 with a proviso to go to the BPDA to uh, you know, provide access to the roof deck via a hatch rather than a penthouse. That was the only proviso. And that was a, and the BPDA provided a recommendation for approval of four story for that project, correct? Uh, it's possible. I'd have to look at the actual physical file, which I don't okay. have. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, okay, I'm just looking at the. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. I'm just looking at the Google map, the sat satellite picture, and it seems that part of the neighborhood is residential, but also across the project, there are oil tanks. There is also a highway in the area. So um, I don't think that the impact that this project will create on the neighborhood will be as big as the oil, ta oil tanks in the highway that, that is right behind that block. Just Thank looking you. at the context, because we didn't have like a better site plan showing yep. the abolers. So I was just looking at that, and that is what I was thinking. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful context. Yeah. And through, and through the chair, this is located directly across from an industrial site, which is a fish processing facility, um, which is right. you know, located diagonally across the square as well. So it's a relatively industrial area that is uh, seeing some renewed interest for residential or new residential. 
And, and right. these are your rate housing? That, that is correct. Thank you. Yes, this area looks fairly sparse and industrial from where I'm looking. Um, uh, may I take public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to this board. Some background information on the community process. So our office held a Butters meeting on August of 2022. Uh, no Butters uh, were in attendance. Uh, as you heard from the applicants, the area is quite industrial. Um, the applicant went on to meet with the local neighborhood association, the Eagle Hill Civic Association, meeting with them twice. Uh, the association voted to oppose uh, with 10 residents in opposition and eight in favor. Uh, the association asked the developer to commit to planting trees in front of the property if possible uh, in the event that they are approved. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no hands raised at the moment. Okay. Any other questions before we entertain a motion? Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Mr. Valencia, yes. would you like Madam to Chair, Yes, I make a, a motion to approve with provision that plan, the plan should be submitted to a BPA for the same review. May I have a second? I'll second. Ms. Benavraza? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Stembridge? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Uh, the, the chair votes yes, motion carries. Uh, may I ask uh, the board members to stay for a few minutes? Thank you very much, and thank you for your time today. Thank you. Um, Sherry, just a heads up, um, there is someone who needs to occupy the room um, where some of the board members are, are at 4 o'clock. Okay, so, um, it, this will be quick. Driving. This will be quick. Okay, perfect. Super duper fast. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Maggie recognize me, but I, I wanted to let you all know I spoke with uh, Madam Chair. And recording then, stopped. Well. The recording has stopped. Moving on <laughs> to a, a different role with the city. Um, starting you know, next week, but there will be, I'll still be around. Uh, no, don't tell don't me that. Um, come on, can you wait? The new person. No. I, I already tried it, I already tried it. Uh, we, we just physically met you. <laughs> I know, I know. Wait, can I make a motion to deny? I oppose. I oppose. <laughs> yes, yes, I Sorry. oppose as well. I, I think we're all opposing, uh, Tom. The motion carries. Does that mean the motion to retain Tom? <laughs> I second. Mm -hmm. But I want to know everyone else. Uh, but Where I are you going? Know, I'm going to City Hall to be a government oh, services attorney for the city. Um, so I'll still be working for the city, just in a different role, representing other conditions. We've caused them too much headache in our short time. <laughs> <laughs>